People frequently ask me, what's my favorite mod pack or what's my favorite video I've ever done? Well, it's right here. The Fred story, the complete Fred story, living in a fallout bunk for 100, for 200 days, wasteland road trip, and a special story about 100 days in space. I put it all together, this connects the Fixiverse with what's happening in the Hardcore series right now. You want to see it all in one long form movie? Here we go. Let's get started. Couldn't find the anger or the lust for revenge against those who did me wrong. Instead, there was worry. I worried for my people, huh? the ones who followed me, who Son? left their village to come wake here up. and build a better society. You need mm. to move now, huh? Son, I only need one Bob, step wake up! To leave this place, what? This place what? Monster What's going on here? Order of the day well, and hello? Every single step. Revenge, but today. After We're sorry to interrupt this program for breaking news. Ladies and gentlemen, the president is about to make a statement. My fellow Americans, I've just received confirmation that the enemy has launched a nuclear strike on us. As we speak, our forces are attempting to intercept the attack, but we're unable to determine precisely when or where they will hit. We will, of course, retaliate with the full force of our military, but I fear there will be no stopping the incoming missiles. So please take shelter immediately. Hug your families and God bless the United States. Oh no. No, no. No, not now. Not now. Oh, what what's up? Oh no. No, 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 no. I got to get the book. I got the book. Oh, oh. Crap. Oh boy, this isn't good. My name's Fred, and welcome to the end of the world. Bob, are you there? Can you hear me? Dad? I think I hit my head, I don't... Put on the glasses. Bob, put on the glasses. Yeah, I, I did, how... Good. Now, push the button. Let's hope the signal gets through. What is happening, Dad? There, okay. I trust you can see me. I'm glad these things are still working. Listen, in just a few seconds, there's going to be a large explosion over you. The bunker should be plenty deep enough to protect you from the blast and any sort of radiation. Show me around your progress so far. Well, when we lost you, I didn't really get around to... Anything? I always thought there'd be time. Dad, how are you... Okay, only a few seconds till impact. I don't know when I'll be able to contact you again, but I will. Follow the book. I suppose I should tell you about my dad. My dad was an intellectual. Brilliant doesn't do him justice. As Pierce said, he was decades ahead of his time. He saw it coming, I suppose. He spent his life trying to tell people it was only a matter of time until we blow ourselves up, and even when he got sick, he kept telling people. When he saw no one was listening, he started to write the book. We talked about digging a bunker, someplace he and I could be safe from the big one when it came, and we actually started. Well, we kind of started. We built a trap door in our house and dug a bit of a hole. And then he got sick, really sick, and we lost him. That makes this contact a little strange. Thank goodness Dad wrote the book. It's a guide on how to survive, how to build a bunker deep underground and harvest the materials to live just from the stone around me. I had to grab it and, well, basically nothing else. Let's see. First thing I had to do today was get my feet on the ground, start by breaking some of this stone off and forming pebbles, and these I can form in cobblestone, and a few things I'm going to need. A crafting table, a chest, even a hammer to help me break stone. My fists are already getting a little beat up. From that, things change for me a bit. Using the hammer, I can break stone down into gravel and then gravel into dirt. Once I had dirt, I can use something called a crook to find some seeds of life. Thank goodness I got a sapling. Once this grows, I can crook the leaves and get a silkworm and from that infect the next tree. Breaking the leaves on in an infected tree will give me string, according to the book, and yeah, sure enough, it worked. It told me to use a sieve on gravel to get some ores. I tried it, and sure enough, I got a bunch of different ores, enough iron to actually make a bucket. Using a wooden crucible, I can put in extra sapling, string, and other organic material, compress it, and make water. 
Now we're talking. Maybe I won't starve after all. After only one day in my little hole, bunker, yeah, it's a bunker. I have apples to eat, wood, and the beginnings of a life. With my new bucket, I was able to take my water and move it to anywhere I want. And according to my dad's book, I can just put dust in water and get clay. Now with this clay, I can combine it with bone meal and make a better crucible. It's a bit of a problem though. To get bone meal, I have to sieve a lot of dust. So I started hammering down cobblestone. And as I look around, if there's one thing that I have a lot of here, it is stone. It didn't take too long before I had seven bone meal to make porcelain clay and fire up a crucible. This thing is amazing. Even with a tiny bit of heat, I can melt down cobblestone into lava and with lava. Oh man, the possibilities are endless. Next thing I want to make is a cobblestone generator. It probably doesn't make a lot of sense since the only thing I have in truly endless supply is stone. But with that, I can automate some things like my crucible. While I was waiting for my cobble to cook into lava, <laughs> sounds kind of weird there, but I made something not in my dad's book, but something I remember from science class as a kid. A bonsai tree can grow pretty quickly, and if I combine it with a hopper, maybe my wood can automatically transfer into a chest? Oh, that would be amazing. It works! My oak sapling is growing in record time, dropping sticks, apples, oak, and saplings. Oh, yes! I spent the entire day mostly gathering resources, put a hopper under the very slow but functional cobblestone generator, and it started filling up a storage drawer. Most of the day was actually just making gravel and then saving it for ores. I can't leave this place for quite some time, probably, so I'm going to need to make everything I need just out of this. Well, if this is going to be my surroundings for the immediate future, at least, I need to improve its aesthetics at least as much as I can. I have somewhat limited resources, and I haven't really decided on a theme for my little bunker here, but I at least can use this little chisel to make some of the cobblestone look a little bit nicer. I learned how to make a builder's wand today. This amazing little device can actually place up to five blocks in a row, all sort of together. This is gonna be a big time saver whenever I'm building up, well, everything. I really just gathered materials again today. After five days in, I do want to get into power production soon. I miss my Golden Girls episodes on TV. Maybe after I smelled all these ores I've sieved out, I should have a good basis. To start power, I need to make basically two things, lava and a dynamo. From that point on, I can connect any machine up to it and it should work. Well, I chalked my first near-death experience up to day six. Well, maybe not that near death, but I made something called a survivalist generator. I thought the name seemed to fit my current situation and it takes coal. Well, I was generating just a bit of RF and boom. Yeah, luckily I wasn't standing right next to it. So I thought, well, that's weird and random. That'll certainly never happen again. So I made another one. And as I was descending down a ladder, well, about that, why was I going down the ladder? Well, my dad used to tell me about something called grains of infinity and that if you light bedrock on fire, you'll get them randomly. And to make an alloy smelter, I need some. So I ended up making one and a sterling generator to go along with my sag mill. Should be able to get steel this way and hopefully it won't explode in my face. Just a bit of crafting later and boom, baby, boom. I got a super heating element. This thing is crazy hot and should melt down cobble insanely fast. Today's power day, not too shabby if you ask me. Only one week after dropping into a hole with literally nothing to my name, I have power. Nice. I don't have pants, but I have power. I made an auto hammer machine today. I'd really love to have like five of them, but for right now, at least I'll have access to gravel on command and I can hand sieve it for ores. I actually made an auto sieve as well, but I'm a little low on power. I made a second magnetic dynamo to help that, but even that is gonna get pretty low. So I had to make even more invar and harden one of them. One upgrade should do for more power for a little while at least. Day nine, I got my auto sieve set up. I literally have to do nothing now but sit on my butt and eat my apples. I'm going to eventually be swimming in oars. Oh, yes. A lot of the rest of the day was spent gathering resources for my smeltery. I want to be able to combine liquid metals, and this seems like the perfect way to do it. It does take a while. Clay, gravel, and sand are all kind of grinding materials for now, so well, maybe tomorrow. Bob, are you there? Yeah. Dad, what the hell is happening? Our city was hit by a nuclear strike. You are likely the last survivor in Pittsburgh. Whoa, okay. I guess I kind of knew that, but to hear you say it out loud... 
Dad, how are you alive? You died eight years ago. The government. They sent me to a place no one could ever find me. I don't understand where. Up. They put me in orbit so no other nation could ever get their hands on me. I only have a few more seconds before I pass out of range. It will be ten days until I'm over your position again. Okay. I am following the book, Dad. I'm doing what we always talked about. Good. I'll contact you in ten days. That was a surprising phone call from my dad, I guess, to put it mildly. My dad's in space. Okay, cool. My smeltery is working. Very nice. Also, not only can I mix liquid ores, but it will double my ores as well. That is amazing. After 10 days, I've been so busy, my mind really hasn't had time to think about what's happening up top. I don't really want to think about that either, to be honest. Onwards and upwards, or uh, downwards, probably. I solved a real problem today. I need quartz for some machines, and as I have no nether access, I had to figure out what to do. I made a machine called an Atomic Reconstructor, which can turn one material into another. This is great. I hammered up some sand and put it in front of the Reconstructor and created soul sand. Yes, now I can sieve it. Or not. <laughs> it turns out iron mesh doesn't work on soul sand, so hooray. I used up all my diamonds to make one diamond mesh for my auto sieve and plopped about a stack of soul sand in. I need to automate this production eventually, but for right now I have access to quartz even if it is a little slow. Not a lot done here today. I managed to clear out my smeltery. Somehow, someone must have combined a whole bunch of different ores at once, creating alloys instead of just doubling up everything. That's great. I mean, look, it's not all bad. There will be times that I need Electrum or whatnot, but I lost all my gold to alloys, so I had to make more dust and then sieve for more gold. I want to start expanding my bunker here, and to do that, I need either a drill or a hammer, something that will dig out 3x3 three three at least. I'm not digging out all this block one by one. Nope, I am not. It was farming day today. I am kind of overcooked apples after nearly two weeks in my doomsday bunker here. I want to start planting some crops. I decided that from my main room, I'm going to go off all four directions. One for power, one for sort of food and livestock, one for ore processing, and the other maybe for an elevator. We'll see if I can work that out down the road. First thing I did today was made a drill, and the drill is amazing. It can charge in an energizer, and with a 3x3 upgrade, it can dig a nice hole for crops pretty quickly. I am psyched about this. I was going back to work a little bit more on my hull, and what happened? But apparently we had intruders. I don't know where those dudes came from, but I think I'm gonna make sure to light everything up full blast so they hopefully will stay away in the future. According to my dad's book, I can use a machine called a farmer to both plant and harvest my crops. Sounds pretty amazing, completely hands-free farming. I'll just have to run a conduit out here from my couple dynamos, but yeah, it should work great. The farmer is working. I decided to go with seeds and then wheat. Bread sounds pretty good at this point, but I feel like even though we have access to potato and carrot seeds from sieving everything, still bread is probably the place to start. I added a couple more bonsai trees now for both dark oak and spruce. It's going to be nice to be able to build with these wood types too. I'm starting to lean towards a 60s to 70s bunker style. I kind of remember that from like Buck Rogers and Star Trek, some of my favorite shows when I was a kid, and always thought it looked really cool. I worked on the farms today, expanding massively. First, I added a second 9x9 field for a farmer, probably carrots, then added another room for grass and trees. I'm hopeful if there are any animals wandering around underground, they might find their way to grass. Lastly, today I just spent some time decorating my rooms, trying to make them look a little bit better with this chisel. Turns out you can make a lot of different blocks, and some of them look really cool. I had a small sugarcane farm today as well. It's going to be really nice to have sugarcane, sugar, and paper all readily available. In the future, maybe I'll automate this, but for now, it's a small manual farm. It doesn't take very long to gather some of this up. I need to remember I'm working with infinite space here underground. As long as I keep my drill full of energy, I can expand my bunker basically forever and ever. Unless I hit another bunker. Boy, that'd be something, huh? 
Power, man, power. I feel like this is going to be a recurring theme for this end of days bunker. I moved my power to, well, at least the right hallway, maybe not uh, its permanent home forever, but for right now, it's out of my main room and expandable to a point. Eventually, I have to build a serious, like really serious power setup, but for, for right now, I, I'm solid. I worked more on just cleaning out my main room today. I moved most of the processing stuff to the processing wing and started one more creation room. The idea is simple. It's fairly slow, but steady, and, but also this is going to take more power. My plan is I'm going to have four cobble generators hooked up progressively to one, two, three, and four auto hammers with an auto sieve at the end of each. I'll pound the cobble from cobble to gravel to dirt to sand to dust and sieve each one. I should be drowning in materials. I'm hoping power won't be an issue once I expand a bit, which I think will be tomorrow. I should be able to keep these things running 24-7 and yeah, maybe never have to worry about ores again. Eight magmatic dynamos fully functional. I didn't upgrade them yet, but I have eight. If I want to get all my sieving rolling, I'm probably going to have to upgrade them eventually. But right now, this is a huge win. The next step is probably going to have to be ender pearls. And now, how the heck am I going to get those? Bob, are you there? Son, are you sleeping? Every time I call you, you're sleeping. Sorry, Dad. I'm kind of in the middle of something here. My name is Fred, by the way. What's happening up there? Your mother and I named you Bob after your grandfather. Who I never met anyway. <sighs> How is the bunker coming? It's all right. I got power up and running. I'm auto saving dust and working through the first chapter of your book. That's it? You're still on chapter one? After nearly three weeks? Hey, cut me some slack. I'm by myself down here. You'll die down there if you don't get moving. Honestly. Nothing for eight years since I left, and barely anything done in 20 days. Hey, you know what, Dad? There are some real missing pieces in this book. I'm doing a lot of guessing here. The book is complete. It is my life's work. Follow it and try to actually get something done before day 30. As much as I miss my dad for the last eight years, I didn't miss conversations like that. Well, it's good to have him back anyway. Let's see what we're doing today. I worked all day today on expanding my auto saving operation. I like the thought of everything being automatic in a big way and think this will be the key to working on. It. I tilled a bunch of the earth around and I got a bunch of worms. So I put the worms on the soil and it's making everything grow faster. If I just stand here and watch, I can actually see crops growing. Also, I planted some cactus. I do want to bring some color into my underground bunker here that's not either gray or brown. And I think green seems like a really nice idea. Three weeks in, I think it's time to start building some things that will always and forever be here. First, I decided after sleeping on, I'm going to end the dirt sieving. There are only a few seeds coming out of it for one thing, and I think I have all of it. The thing is, after you get even one carrot seed or one potato seed, it turns into a renewable resource. I don't need to collect millions and millions of those things. I made an architecture craft table and I am really into the 70s, 60s bunkers theme. And a lot of that look, I think, is a lot of rounded walls. Like you got rounded walls, rounded ceilings, the whole bit. Yeah, it looks super cool. The last thing I did here on day 21 is I dug out room. I want to have a storage room that's going to be here forever instead of just some random chest around. So I dug out some storage and I put where I think the elevator is eventually going to go. Yeah. This is starting to really turn into a real place. I like it. I got it. This is going to solve a lot of issues. With this, as long as my power holds up, I'm going to have access to gold, but most importantly, nickel, which can turn into invar. Invar is the upgrade piece for most machines that I've made so far. With easy access to invar, I can upgrade my power, which can allow me to upgrade more machines. And yeah, we're moving on the right path. One of the things I'd like to really get into is more Ender IO stuff, including sag mills and other stuff. And to get a lot of that stuff, you need obsidian. So I made something called an igneous extruder, which should provide me with all the obsidian I'm going to need. The problem came when it went to getting water for the igneous extruder. I need apparently a mining upgrade, which requires an ender pearl, which I do not have access to. So I kind of tabled that project for right now and I'll come back to it later. I made two energy cells today and they are really awesome. So with these things, they connect together sort of over the quantum realm or something and power each other. So they're kind of like a multi-block structure that holds a lot of power as a battery, but also you can power any of your machines without running conduits all over the place. It's really cool. I want to add my elevator very soon. And to do that, here's a shock. 
you need an ender pearl. So I built a little dark room and just hoping that maybe an enderman will spawn. No luck all day though. I set up a mob farm today. It's a little complicated as I have no access to ender pearls yet, but maybe if I could just get one, that might open the door to more. Using some ancient spores, I made some witch water. Now my plan is gonna to be to have a second platform above the main killing platform where hopefully some skeletons will spawn. They can get hit by the witch water, turn into ender skeletons, or wither skeletons, the word is, and then I can kill them and collect a drop of evil. That's what I'm really truly after. I'm gonna to have to run some redstone and yikes, you know how that goes. On the killing platform, I made some vector plates and a mob grinder. Should work great. I should push the mobs right into it. And I'm pretty sure even once I get my uh, drop of evil, the cursed earth, I think, will still spawn underneath the vector plate. So this should be pretty future proofed as well. Yeah, should be cool. After a full day of grinding mobs while changing out my floors to this beautiful dark oak hardwood, finally, at the end of the day, I got it. A drop of evil. I got the cursed earth down and the mobs are flowing. At some point in the very near future, I'm gonna to need to deal with the sheer amazing amount of stuff they're dropping, but for right now, oh, dad's gonna be proud. It didn't take long and I got my ender pearl. Now I can make a resonator. I didn't use it yet, maybe tomorrow or the day after, but I've been working on the elevator button a bit today. To get that, I need some black ink as well. And to get that, I need a squid. And to get a squid, I need squid bait. Well, thanks to Dad's book, I did figure out that to make squid bait, you need two fish. So I did a bit of fishing in one of my water holes here that I made, and I actually got two fish. I put down the squid bait and nothing. Nothing at all. I'm going to have to check back in the morning. I spent the entire day today trying to get some ink. No luck. My squid bait just disappeared. Super nice. After quite a while of more fishing, I put down more bait, and I finally got it. But more importantly, maybe, is I got enough cobwebs from my mob farm to make a fisher that if with my wireless RF, I should be able to use to automatically catch fish for me. I made an elevator button and clocked out for the night. As much as I like what's going on with my bunker, I am pretty exhausted. It seems like every time I take one step forward, there are about 38 more steps just to get to the next step. Yeah, I, I need to take a break. And I did it. After so much troubleshooting, I can't even explain. I got a working elevator. How cool. It doesn't actually go anywhere yet, but that's coming soon. This thing was such a pain to figure out how to work on the first time, but hey, I don't care. It works now. And now that I understand how it works, adding on should be easy if I want to go higher or lower. Cool. Bob? It's Fred, Dad. All my friends call me Fred. All your friends are dead, Bob. Wow, really? Fill me in on your progress. I just finished a working mob farm. I'm getting bone meal and ender pearls. A lot of junk also, but some good stuff. Also, I built an elevator. Okay, good. And what are you eating? Apples. Apples? For a month? Well, I mean, they're cooked. Okay. Bob? Fred? You are completely alone. Yeah, I noticed that. I hope rescue teams will get to you. But if you get sick or hurt... There's no living person for many, many miles around you. So stay healthy. Stay alive. Yeah, that's a little frustrating. Well, I made obsidian today. I just had a mining upgrade to my liquid transfer node and boom, water and lava equals obsidian. Also made four inscribers. I think I'm so frustrated with my storage system that I'm starting to apply to Energetics already after only a month. My dad said follow the book after all, so okay, cool. I'll follow it. I found something in the book called a Mega Torch. I think it stops hostile mobs from getting close to it. That's good. I don't want to have to light up every single inch of my bunker, so this is solid. I kind of just spent the day working all over the place. I worked out more design for my main room and added a lava tank to the smeltery and started cooking up tons of Invar for presses for the inscriber. After I got the presses powered, I started looking at how much nickel I'm going to actually need. That's 36 Invar. I need a nickel factory. Good news though, today I went over to collect what Invar I had and it turns out I have tons of it. I didn't realize quite how efficient my auto sieve actually is being when it comes to the dust. It's great. 
I'm actually kind of rolling in that stuff. So I threw it all in the smeltery to double up. And uh, yeah, I could make four presses very easily. I was just about ready to make my ME controller and looking at the recipe a little bit more, I got kind of bad news. To make an ME controller, I need pure fluids. And to get that, I have a few options. One, I could just plop them down in water and wait for a very, very long time. Or I could use these machines that will make it grow faster. I think they're called growth accelerators. Or, and this is the way I decided to go, I can automate the process. I decided to build something called a phytogenic insulator. I think this is going to be a much better route in the end because I'm going to be able to hook this up to my ME system. And with a seed and glowstone, and once I upgrade this the whole way, they should actually grow fairly quickly. And I think it's going to be a pretty elegant solution to making my pure flux and pure Certus Quartz crystals. It's a big day today. Day 33, I got my ME controller made. Hey, and no drive, no storage yet, anything like that. But it's so close, I can taste it. To go further in this, I'm going to need lots and lots of storage. So I'm going to need a drive. And to do that, I'm going to need lots of flux crystals. I made two stacks before calling it a day. Hope that's enough. Another big step towards a happy life here in my bunker. I got my crafting terminal set up. Now, once I get storage, I can drop everything I have to my name in this ME system. Recall any of it on command. This is amazing. Almost. I need some drives next to really get started, but I am so happy that we're on the right path. I did it. I did it. We made four 4K storage disks, and I dumped all of my main crafting stuff into it. I probably don't have enough storage for absolutely everything yet, but now I can craft without running all over the place. This is going to be the hugest quality of life improvement as of yet. I don't believe I can exactly overstate how excited I am to have a functioning computer again after 35 days. I feel like this is the day my life inside a bunker went from scraping by to starting to actually create livable and happy conditions here. It's amazing. I'm probably jumping a little bit ahead here, but I have been looking at the gray grossness that is my bunker so far, and I really want to add some color. I built a hydrator so I can dump my green concrete powder in it and it will make green concrete, which I can chisel and use as maybe my main color scheme and wall material. Each floor should have maybe its own color. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. I started my next phase of the easy life plan today when I started a molecular assembler. This thing is amazing. If I can get it working, I can just type what I want into my ME system and it will make it. Assuming I have the required materials in my inventory. It require a lot more stuff and interface power and a lot more, but I think I have the basics down thanks to the book. Thanks, Dad. I spent almost the entire day today making circuits. I need to automate this thing. It's not exactly grueling work, but it's boring and time consuming in the worst way. I just have to stand here and wait for it and then just click it one more time. I know exactly how I'm going to do this. I just, I just need more time to do it. I've got some more auto crafting done today, including my crappy old sag mill and alloy smelter. I'll definitely upgrade these later, but the crafting recipe should basically work on them as well as the regular versions. This is great. We're getting close to be able to craft just about anything I can think of. More auto crafting today. I added a water tank. When I pair this with an interface, I think I should be able to allow me to just request filled up buckets with water automatically. I'm basically out of room for more auto crafting. So tomorrow I think we're into moving day. I also got my inscriber situation figured out here. I'm kind of proud of how I worked this out. So everything's going to be pumped into an ender chest at one side of the room. And then the other side of the room will have a matching ender chest. It'll pull the items out and only be able to put in the items into whichever inscriber it requires. Now inscribers are a little peculiar how they have to take items from the side or the top or the bottom, depending on which slot you want. But that doesn't matter for almost all the materials. The only one that really matters is for the last one. And by using ender IO conduits, thanks to my supply of ender pearls now, I think this should be a pretty elegant solution. It will then pump everything out to a white, white, white ender chest, which is my universal signal for bringing stuff into my ME system. And I'll have a copy of that back at my home ME system. And it will just import everything that goes into that chest. Yeah, I think it's going to work great. Son? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. I'm a little busy at the moment. What are you working on? I've been working on auto crafting. I have my ME system fully online and a bunch of recipes already going. Okay, good. Good progress. I'm glad you've picked up the pace. Impressive work. Thanks, Dad. That might be the first compliment you've ever given me. Don't get cocky. Radiation has gone down in your area. Rescue teams should be starting on the outskirts of the city, as the wind allows. So, wait, they're coming for me? 
Not for a couple months, probably. You are buried deep, but quite close to the explosion. Yeah, buried. Sorry. Poor choice of words. Hang in there, Bob. Fred. Yeah, that's fantastic. Guess I kind of knew it was something like that. I mean, he's brilliant, but also so typical of him to not drop an email for the last eight years saying he's still around. Okay, this may not be shocking, but yeah, more autocrafting today. I moved the molecular assembler to a basement as well as I made a new one. The next problem is I'm going to be out of channels soon. I got to make a dense cable. I know there's going to be more issues there as well. I made a few dense cables and created a drive room. It's going to be great to have all my storage in the same place. May not be that beautiful yet, but it's going to work just fine. I think it's time to get into chickens. Dad's book talks a lot about chickens. Somehow he understood that any radiation from fallout might alter chickens in a way that would allow them to plop out nearly every useful item instead of an egg. Before I get in chickens, though, I need to make some room. I'm still pretty light on materials, so I decided to use a chiseled version of cobblestone for right now, and I'll make this better in the future. Chickens. Man, chickens. I put down some chicken bait on the floor. I just put some dirt and some grass on to hopefully make it a little bit more hospitable to our feathery friends. And uh, yeah, I need some water and then hopefully I'll just stand back and uh, get some chickens to show up. I managed to get a couple of chickens to show up, made a couple of breeders, and I'm just going to plop them in. I hit them with my chicken stick to knock them out, I guess, and put them in my breeder. And uh, sure enough, soon enough, we will go from 000, zero, zero chickens to 111222 and so on up to 10, 10, 10. I'm not exactly sure what those numbers mean, but my chicken scanner tells me that 10 is the max and 10, 10, 10 chickens are going to drop a lot of stuff and drop it rather quickly. So that's going to be what I want. So I'm going to try to get all the items that I want coming out of chickens at a 10, 10, 10 rate. Okay. All right. That should be easy, right? Yeah, I started with cactus green chickens. I am very unhappy with the way my bunker looks right now. It is really really gray it's just so gray it's so stone i need to get some color so yeah as soon as these chickens grow up i should be able to breed them together as well and hopefully they'll be just plopping out a green dye on the regular breeding chickens all day and i'm spending entirely too much time here it's almost kind of addicting in a way if it weren't for the smell of chickens regardless i did create my first 10 10 chickens log chickens of course I put a bunch of barrels under some of the roosts here to collect the items, and man, 10, 10, 10 chickens are unbelievable. I had to get a bunch of barrels with a hopper upgrades to actually suck the items out of the roost, and yeah, I'm just having stuff rain down on my head. In just a few more days, I should have tons of max out chickens and more materials than I should ever need. I spent the next four days of my life breeding chickens, breeding so many chickens, all different kinds of chickens, 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 chickens. I expanded my chicken storage. I am really enjoying it. Wouldn't mind continuing this for a few more days. I am salivating all the endless supplies I'm creating from the chickens, but yeah, yeah, look, I, I should be getting a call from dad tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it, and I think I need to break away from this for my own sanity. Son, are you there? Dad, it's later than the last call. I was starting to get worried. We're having some minor technical issues on the satellite. Should be worked out now. How's it going? I started breeding chickens. Dad, it's amazing. I mean, I'm getting stacks and stacks of items. Everything from logs to iron ingots. And I'm getting close to getting more advanced stuff like steel. I followed the book and I have a ton of 10, 10, 10 chickens. I'm going to be able to turn off my ore processing soon and just get everything I need from chickens. I can't even believe it. Wow. It's actually impressive. I think what you could have done had you been working on the bunker the last eight years. Nice, Dad. Regardless, it's impressive progress. So what's the story on the rescue team, then? They should be progressing. Should be? Dad, aren't you keeping tabs on them? Dad? Dad? Dad! I really don't like the sounds of technical problems on a satellite orbiting the Earth, but, well, I'm on my own, and I gotta keep going.
So I worked a lot on the chicken area up here again today, and I got a lot more done. I actually have worked on some interior design elements, and I think they are looking pretty cool here. I added some white lights, which I think fit this sort of 70s, 60s bunker feel, and I have a ton of chickens bred, but I think I need to step away from this because I'm starting to go a little bit nuts. We are more than halfway to when I'm hoping that I can get rescued from this pit. Back to some technical stuff today. I spent most of the day gathering supplies to increase my auto crafting. Seems my ME systems require memory to craft in addition to memory to actually hold the items. Okay, that's all right. I made three more 4K crafters. Should be a good amount for now, I hope. Yeah, after one full day away from the chickens, here I am again. I need blizz powder. I don't really even know what that is. But if you're stuck underground and there are limited ways to get just about anything, you got to follow the book. So I think I need four rounds of breeding to get a supply of blizz powder. I hope I can knock this out today and get back to auto crafting soon. You think after all these days with chickens, maybe I would not have wildly underestimated how long it takes to actually do four rounds of breeding? But yeah, I'm not even close. I'm going to have to go at this manually. The next step is to speed up and dramatically up the production of pure Certus Quartz. My machine's already level 3, but I need to go to level 4, and to do that, the fastest way is to fight a Blizz. It's a very complicated path. First, I need to make blazing pyrothium and put that in buckets. And to do that, I need to get a machine that will actually melt down the solid, turn into a liquid, and then a different machine that will be able to bucket that actual liquid so that I can put it in a, cru in a crucible. Right? Ay, ay, ay. But wait, it gets even more complicated than that. To actually build these machines that I need, I need netherrack so I can smelt in nether brick. And to get that, I have to take a barrel, fill it with lava, and then throw redstone in it. Ay, oh, man. I made my magma crucible and I started heating up the blazing pyrothium, but there's no way to put it in buckets. So that's where I need to even come up with another machine. This fluid transposer, once it's hooked up to power and all that, should suck the blazing pyrothium liquid out of the magma crucible, and then it has a bucket slot that I should just be able to have it fill the bucket automatically. Okay, this should work, I hope. Next, I had to make a freezing doll, and with that freezing doll, this is what is going to summon the blizz. You fill up the barrel, you throw the freezing doll in, and it starts to summon. I made a diamond sword, I made diamond helm, diamond chest, diamond pants, and diamond boots. I am ready for the fight of my life. Let's do this thing. Yeah. Alright, I probably didn't need all the armor. I guess I'll do this a couple more times, but uh, yeah, that was it. <laughs> that was it. The following day, I got the phytogenic insulator fully upgraded. What a journey for this. I mean, for how often I need pure service and pure fluix, it's going to be worth it. But uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was a long haul. I won't lie. It was a long haul. I added a second crafting memory section. So I should, if I do understand how this works correctly, be able to auto craft two things at the same time. It's going to be a real boon for my production, I think. Sweet. I need to spend the next few days sprucing up the place. This has the atmosphere of a tomb and I don't want it to feel like, well a tomb so it's time to actually work on some of the aesthetics adding in some of the green concrete and more arches is really going to give it that 70s bunker feel i want in my final resting place no not i mean luxurious home without a view i'd really like to bring in some plant life too plus i mean that can't possibly hurt my o2 situation as well i'm really liking how the first floor is starting to look everything just takes so long every idea i have requires crafting gathering materials and more but it's worth it if I'm going to be down here for a while longer, maybe a long while, it depends how things work out above, I want it to look nice and feel like home, for now. I worked in my main crafting storage room here today. This is, after all, the room I spend most of my life in. It'd be nice if it looked a little nicer. It's just so dark. I know my bunker's not getting darker, but man, it's starting to feel like it a little bit. I spent the rest of the day breeding more chickens. I spend so much time in my chicken breeding room. I worked today on sprucing up just a bit more. I added some pillars and yet more roosts. I think I'm starting to see the light at the end of the chicken breeding tunnel, though, and that is a happy thought. Bob, are you there? Yeah, Fred, and yes. How are things going? 
Fine, but first, I want some answers from you. I'm totally cut off here, except for when you drop in every 10 days. Okay. We have a minute before I pass out of range. First, what's up with the rescue teams? They should be on schedule to break into your bunker in 40 days. Okay, good. I'm about overcooked apples. Talked about this. I told you. Yes, yes, I know, I know. What's going on with the world? How bad is it up there? Your area was hit hard, but luckily not a direct impact. We built your bunker... Well, we dug the hole where your bunker is now. It's quite deep, but it probably wouldn't have survived a drink. I didn't know that. I assumed I was safe here. What about the rest of the world? Quite deep, but probably wouldn't have survived a drink. Dad, I'm getting some lag. You're kind of breaking up. Are you there? I'm almost out of range. I'm proud of you, Fred. Well, I mean, that's a lot to take in. Number one, Dad said he's proud of me. That's maybe the most shocking. But the exciting news is, number two, in 40 days, I'm out of here. That's amazing. So, look, I got to make it 40 more days. I got this. I got this. The rest of the day was spent troubleshooting. I'm not sure why my crafting keeps randomly stopping. I have a few ideas. I added a crafting monitor so I can see what my system thinks it's making. Not actually sure how to hook it up, though. This took a lot of trial and error, but I eventually did get it. Oh my goodness, I'm such an idiot. I finally figured out what was wrong. I have been making so much gravel just for materials that I had a storage drawer above my one sag mill just completely filled with cobblestone. So it was running constantly. So my ME system kept trying to put a recipe in, but it was always full of cobblestone and it couldn't. And it was just waiting for it to be empty, which it just about never would be because it was you know, chewing through stacks and stacks and stacks of cobblestone. Yeah, it, it was a dumb mistake, but at least I got it figured out. So cool. It only took me two full complete days of messing with this, but I did it. I need so much pure service quartz in this life that I finally decided to add the recipe to AutoCraft it. It's a slow process, so maybe I'll work on making it automatically keep 64 in my inventory or something like that. I'm not really sure how to do that, but it, I can probably figure it out. Maybe. I ran out of RF today. It was a scary moment. I wasn't sure what I would do. My ME system was totally off and all of my stuff, everything I have was in that. I unhooked my auto hammers and that brought the system back online. I need a battery backup just in case. Worried about that, I upgraded the other six of my magmatic dynamos, bringing my total of upgraded tier two dynamos to eight. Should be good for a while longer now, but eventually I do need to start working on my power tower. I got my sand system all set up now. By using just an ender chest with one yellow tab and then a copy of that attached to a storage bus downstairs, I have a full chest of sand working on command from my ME system anytime I want. Wouldn't mind doing the same to gravel, actually, as I have so many concrete plans, but as far as I can tell, there is no gravel chicken, so I'll have to come up with some sort of other way. Oh my goodness, I missed a chicken and an important one. I bred a pair of electrical steel chickens today, which should bring me to almost done. I have about 17 chicks to get up to 10, 10, 10, and then I think I have most of them bred. What a feeling. I'd really like to work on replacing some large sections of my bunker with some better looking blocks now that I have materials, but doing it by hand is so day 56, am I right? I'd love to think that I'm better than that now, but maybe, maybe not. I started trying to make an exchanger, but I need something I've never even heard of. I need something called a bucket of nutrient distillation. <laughs> I don't know. So I made a vat and I found it zombie flesh and nether wart and somehow, miraculously, I got the thing I needed. Okay. All right, well, I gave up for now. I tried making an electrical steel exchanger, but that's going to require so many more things, including a tank room and more that some stuff I've never even heard of. So at least for now, we have a 5x5 five five exchanger, and hey, you know what? That's okay. I got a new, much smaller dust hammering setup now. I'm super happy about it. Since I have an endless supply of sand, I only need to hammer it down one time to go from sand to dust, and it will auto-import to my storage via my white, white, white ender chest. Eh, should be the answer to all of my Surtis Quartz issues. I set up another thing to deal with my power. It's an Ender IO capacitor system that will tell me how much I have going in, how much I have going out. Once it gets full, I'm going to set this to only coming in and never going out. That way, if I lose power to my main ME system, I can always just grab one of these capacitors, hook it up, and pull out what I need to fix my issue. I think it makes a lot of sense. Oh, it's bunker flipper day today. 
I've been thinking about the look of my little slice of heaven and not really feeling the wood floors. Yeah, I used wood initially because it's one thing I had plenty of without digging, but now I have lots of stuff. So let's 70 fireplace and make it feel a little bit more like a bunker and a little bit more like home. Firstly, I dug out a lot of the wood around the elevator and replaced it with this very cool factory block. I think it's going to give that a lot of that more industrial sort of underground machine feel to this place. And also, I have a plan to go underneath this area with a bit of a lower floor or three. And I think it's going to be a lot better to not have wood and have a lot more metal. It'll make the whole place a lot more sturdy as well, I think. I don't know what happened with no call last night. Uh, I'm a little bit worried. You know, there were technical issues up on the satellite. And now I didn't hear from my dad for the first time since I've been in this bunker. Yeah, I'm going to be relieved when I do hear from him. Anyway, I did clean up the old hammer room today. I don't really know what I'm going to use this room for now that I don't need to hammer down oars. Maybe a bedroom. Should I take the time to make living quarters here? I'm hopeful rescue teams will get to me in the next 30 days or so, so maybe it's not worth it, but I don't know, another month of sleeping on the floor doesn't sound all that appealing. Yeah, maybe. I feel free. You know, I don't have to worry about really anything these days. My power is solid. My food situation is kind of okay. I mean, look, I like cooked apples a lot, Dad. But otherwise, it's good. I have essentially all the materials I could want under here now, and I can just start doing quality of life improvements. I changed out the wood in my sort of working room for something a little bit more befitting a working area, something called laboratory blocks. I think it kind of works better, and I'm going to like the wood more if I use it a little bit less, I think. I made some caged lamps as well. I think it's going to be nice to differentiate the different wings I have for green for sort of life and farms and red for power and maybe yellow for my living quarters if that's indeed what I end up doing with it. Yeah, it's turning out really nice. The more gray I get rid of, the happier I am in this place. It, it's just, it doesn't seem like a huge change, but it feels like a huge change. You know what I mean? I put in my first basement today, just directly under the elevator. And yeah, it's going to be really nice. It's going to be a nice way to get to all the conduits and all this stuff that I have going all over the place. I don't know how necessary it is now that I kind of have wireless power situation happening now. But still, it'll be really nice to be able to move around. I'm going to build this up, make it look all supported. And uh, yeah, this is, this is going to be a really nice change for me, I think. Chickens! More chickens! <sighs> yeah basement level two is underway there's so many technical things i really want to do but i have a vision that i want even more right now maybe some nature and some greenery will pick up my mood a bit so if i'm ever in a situation where i couldn't get to my elevator if it was on a different floor than i am for whatever reason what I had to do was perilously hang out my body out in the middle of the shaft, press the button, and then get back before the elevator smashed my head in. Doesn't seem like a great system. So I ended up putting screens in on the outside. It took a little bit of doing because I'm not super great with the technical stuff. But uh, yeah, I figured it out. So now I have an actual elevator call button on the outside of my elevator shaft. What a brilliant idea. Oh, my basement oasis is complete. Even with the elevator coming the whole way down. I'm going to come down here and eat some lunch. This is going to be great. It's super nice. I put in some streams, some vegetation. The grass should spread soon. I'll bone you up some more tall grass when it does. This is super relaxing. I added in a garage door today down in my sort of animal breeding life farms hallway. This grass I had, sheep and cows and stuff kept coming in. I was thinking, well, let's put in a big garage door. And I found one that is really cool. Bob, are you there? Bob? Dad, when I didn't hear from you last week, I thought something happened. Dad? Dad, are you there? Well, that was really weird. I hope he's okay. 
I did make a list today, and I, I feel a lot better having this screen in the list. It's just going to help keep me sort of knowing what I need to do next time. It's so nice when I'm going in and out of my upcoming living quarters. I'll be able to see the temperature, monitor radiation inside the bunker, and see my to-do list. The power isn't technically connected. That's just for me to be aware that it's good for now. And as I need upgrades, I will adjust the list accordingly. All right, cool. Start working on the living quarters today, and, you know, the first thing I really need is I, I need to have an ME system here. So I ran cables and I actually put a crafting terminal in both what I think is going to end up being the kitchen slash dining room and also the living room slash bedroom sort of place. Yeah, so it's going to be really helpful to have that and just not have to run back every time I need one item. Oh, I think I got that 60s vibe really flowing now. I put cyan walls complete with curved corners and rounded windows going into the combined dining room kitchen and put down some spruce floors. I think this place is going to need some carpet and uh, I don't know, maybe I should have been an interior designer, you know, like before the apocalypse hit my city and all that. But yeah, I'm having a great time with this and it's a lot of fun. We're going to the kitchen today, and I, you know, I can't believe I waited 83 days to do this. Having an actual place to prepare real food is a dream. I can virtually smell the bacon and eggs. Well, I need pigs, but you know, you know what I'm saying. It's always something. I did install a music disc in my upcoming bedroom, and I sure love hearing music again. My goodness, it has been a while. I want to move on to my living room though. The, the dining room could still use some work. I did add a big table and a bunch of chairs. I hope to have a, some dinner cooking for whenever the rescue team breaks through the walls to get me out of here and so they can sit down and have a nice meal after working so hard to rescue me. Yeah, that'd be a really nice thing. After working all day yesterday in the living room area, I could really use a TV. I, look, I don't know if I can get signal down here in my bunker, but who knows, maybe. If I can, that would surely help the nights pass. Since losing touch with my dad, I'm not sure how the rescue attempt is going, and I'd love to see the news anyway. Also, I wonder if part two of 100 Days of Mage aired yet. Boy, that'd be fun. To get a TV rolling, I'm going to need something called grid power because I need to automate my resonator system, and to do that, I don't want to have to sit here and hit that manual turnstile thing. So I made a water mill, and then using that, that was enough grid power to actually make a bunch more water mills, essentially. And now I have, basically, I have burnt stone on my ME auto crafting list. It's pretty great. Eventually, what I'll do here is I'll make the rest of these water mills and fill them all in. Um, but right now, I have this diamond done. I'd like to add about three more eventually, but yeah, for right now, I think we're, we're pretty good here. This is nice. I got to sort out my basement now. It's really turning into just my junk room. There's wires everywhere, random spaces, extra cables. I literally have no idea what they were ever even intended for. I pulled up all of my auto crafting, and I'm going to finish this room if it kills me. I finished my basement, and it's okay, kind of. The main problem is I can't fix the ceiling because that's also the floor, and the floor changes materials halfway through. Regardless, it, look, it's a lot better than the ugly stone mess it was before. By adding more dense smart cables, I can actually see how many channels I've used to work with and when I need to add more. And so it's pretty, pretty convenient. Well, I finally did the thing. I changed out all of my tier one conduits for tier three. Power is just zipping all over the place now. I think it's probably time to upgrade my power production eventually here. I'm going to stick with lava and magnetic dynamos for now because I like the looks of them and they're very reliable and they're pretty cheap to make, even when you upgrade them. I got to upgrade them at least to tier three, though. An upgraded power, baby. This is really nice. Probably unnecessary to be honest, but yes, all eight dynamos now are fully upgraded. I was going to make a huge dynamo tree with tons of them, but honestly, I think these eight are probably going to cover me. I mean, I'm out of here in 11 days or so, so yeah, we'll see. There. Good. I trust you can see me. I'm glad these things still work. Listen, in just a few seconds, there's going... Dad? To be a large explosion over you. The bunker should. Dad, what's going on? Are you okay? On down in your area. Rescue team should be starting on the outskirts of the city. As Dad, the you're allows. scaring me. You said this before. Are you okay? Dad? I'm really unsettled by that conversation. I don't know what's happening. 
I don't even really know what to think about that. I did finish my bedroom today and put up some shelves and my bed and my new TV. I mean, things are things are looking really cool here. I, I just, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I need to go to sleep and, and try to not think about what's going on up in orbit above us. Well, if anything will take my mind off of my problems and my dad's problems, it's yet more chickens, more chickens. I would like to knock out more of dad's book before the rescue team shows up and well, I started and almost instantly realized I have to build a new room for a new crafting mechanic just for basically the next part of the book. I worked in the hallway behind me. I always thought maybe I'd need more space, and well, I, I mean, I have plenty of space, so I just carved out a nice room and decorated it, and I'll get into the crafting probably tomorrow. It's a technical day here again, and in an effort to not run cables all the way over to the empower chamber, I decided to do the same thing I did with the inscribers. So I have two matching ender chests and a whole bunch of ender IO conduits. And basically the ME system will just put whatever crafting components I need into one ender chest, and then they will immediately appear in the other one and then be routed to where they need to go using some filters and all that kind of stuff from ender IO conduits. Pretty simple system, and uh, yeah, it didn't take too long to work out, and hopefully everything will be fine. It works! Almost miraculously, it actually works. I uh, spent most of the today working on adding recipes for all the different uh, actually additions recipes that I would want to add, and yeah, pretty great. Pretty great system. Well, let's see here. I want to automate getting netherrack into my system, so uh, let's try. Clay barrel. Nope. Porcelain barrel. Nope. Porcelain crucible. Yeah, that's the one. My goodness, sometimes I think I'm so smart and really getting a hang of this bunker life, but I tried so many different things in different ways to get this to work, and it turns out Ender Conduits, Ender IO Conduits work just fine. They're great. I tried mechanical users and clickers, and <sighs> anyway, it works now. We have automated netherrack. Uh, that's pretty cool. I got my energy cells upgraded to the highest tier of energy cell now. They are super fast and they hold a lot of energy actually. This is going to be really great. And now they have materials like prismarine and all that kind of stuff. It shouldn't be that hard, except a problem. It turns out that I had a prismarine chicken, but I don't have a prismarine shard chicken. Well, I started breeding them up, but it's going to take a while, and I really am kind of running out of days here. So instead, for right now, I just use my, my energy infuser thing to change quartz into prismarine shards, and yeah, that worked just fine. I ran out of power today. I can't believe it. These are fully upgraded dynamos. I wasn't really watching, and uh, yeah, they drank all my lava. So I spent the day upgrading my conduit system to the highest tier for inserting cobble into the crucible, pulling the lava out to the dynamos, and pulling the energy out and putting in my upgrade power cells. I'd like to use the awakened draconium block under the crucible for heating, but my chickens are slow. Slow breeders for that particular one. It's actually one of my last chickens. I actually ran out of lava on my Tinker's Construct uh, situation and I wasn't really paying attention to it. And yeah, so I made a new lava generator with a new superheating element and with an ender tank. So that way I'll have an ender tank with one red and two whites always full of lava at all times. It should keep well ahead of my uh, Tinker's Construct situation over here. And yeah, it would just be nice to have a tank full of lava just for crafting on command. It was a long day today, trying to put the finishing touches on my bunker here before the rescue team breaks in. I automate grains of infinity production via sieving gravel, then automate gravel production by sag milling cobble with the cobble generator. Nice. I really do want to finish the chickens before dad's team gets here, so I spent the rest of the night doing that, and yeah, I think we're in a good place. I am done. So happy, but also so happy to be done. I've never worked so hard for anything in my life. Created a life down here. It's hard to even believe. I fell in this hole with literally nothing. And now after a hundred days, I created this bunker. The rescue team should be breaking in any moment now, assuming they're still on schedule. I'm hoping for a call from dad soon. Though I'm done, there are still so many things I wanted to accomplish. So much more power, automated storage, fluid storage and cows, hell, even farms for animals, which I never even got around to. It's weird. 100 days seems like a long time, you know, until it's over. Then it just turns into a tiny blip in your life. When I get out and hug my dad and breathe the fresh air and look at my hands in the sunshine, I'm not going to take any 100-day period for granted. 
Every moment is precious. It's one that will just be a blip after it's over. Moments seem so long. Sometimes I get so bored, but I'm going to remember this. I'm going to live in those moments, and I'm going to experience life in a different way than I ever did before, before the bunker. Son, are you there? Yes, yes, finally. It's the day. Are the rescue teams coming today? According to my projection, the rescue team broke through. You managed to live underground for 100 days and won the simulation. Would you like to start again? Dad, what's happening? Are you there? Would you like to restart? Dad, you're a computer, aren't you? An AI set up to run the terrorist attack bunker simulation. I was triggered when I detected a nuclear blast. No, no, that can't be true. You talked to me before the missile hit. I was triggered by the first missile hitting the capital. The first of how many? 17 hit before you made it to your shelter, and hundreds more were in the air. My sensors were blinded by that, but it stands to reason most of those impacted. There's no rescue team coming, is there? No, son. In reality, you're likely one of the last people on Earth. Would you like to restart the simulation? Would you like to restart? Son? I need to crawl out of my funk. Ever since I learned Dad wasn't actually Dad, but just an AI he helped the government design, I've been... I don't know. A funk probably doesn't really cover it. The bombs fell, the world caught fire, and I spent the last 100 days in my hole building this bunker. My dad, I, I mean the AI, told me the rescue teams were coming, but it seems his programming wasn't completely finished, because to it, the whole thing was just a training exercise. To me, it was all too real. After 100 days, just when I thought the rescue teams were about to break through and save me, the AI asked if I wanted to play again. Not cool. Somehow, the end of the world didn't seem quite as terrible since I could talk to my dad, but now that I know I'm alone, well, I guess I've really been alone for some time. I just didn't know it. It's been days, nearly two weeks since I did anything. Maybe I'll try to contact my dad the AI. Hello? Are you there? Son? I wasn't sure you would contact me again. Don't call me son. I don't even know what to call you. Well, my official designation is heuristically programmed algorithmic computer beta 9.8343. Wait, you're Hal? Your father called me Hal. From 2001. Of course he did. Okay, I can't call you Hal. How about Cal? That'll be fine. I like that name. Stop it. You're a computer. How long is this contact before you pass out of range again? Another minute and eight seconds. My orbit is adjusting to geosynchronous with your position, but it will take ten days until I achieve that. Okay, I am about bored out of my skull down here. Do you have any entertainment in your memory? Yes, I have access to YouTube backup servers. They are buried deep underground and seem to be online still. You have YouTube? Only a very small percentage of its total capacity. I believe one of your saved playlists is on the backup server. Which one? I have Don Quantum's complete Fallout series. I will download it to your computer now. <laughs> Fallout. Hilarious. Thanks, Cal. We're just going to head this way towards, I think this is the Morgantown area. And uh, what's it say there? Yep, Morgantown. City limits. All right. So that up there is Morgantown. And I need some supplies. Nothing severe, but, you know, we can find maybe some steel, some aluminum, uh, maybe some caps. Definitely need to find a couple of things. 
kind of repair our weapons a bit. Maybe some of our armor too. If we can find some fiberglass or ballistic fiber, that might be really good. I don't know if it's just hearing someone's voice or what, but I feel motivated. I think I'm, I think I'm ready to do something. <laughs> I started day 101 by checking out some of Dad's book. Dad was so brilliant. He saw the end coming and basically wrote a guidebook on how to survive the nuclear apocalypse. We lost him about eight years before the bombs fell, but by then he had mostly completed the book. It's been keeping me alive for 100 days, and I expect, knowing how smart he was, it will continue to keep me alive for another 100. I spent the morning of day 101 checking on the chickens, improving storage, and then just thinking, I need a big project, a new big project. Day 101, it feels like New Year's Day. It's a fresh start. I can't keep going on the things I was doing before when I thought I was talking to my real dad instead of just an AI simulation. I need to take my mind off things. Cows, yeah, I need to make some liquid cows. Dad theorized that after a nuclear attack, cows could possibly get irradiated and gain the ability to create other liquids. I need a space to do that, so I lowered the elevator another floor in, dug out a large room for, well, for cows. I worked in the elevator all day. It's a funny thing. Whenever I think I've figured out this elevator system, I try to add one little thing and basically everything breaks. Feels like it's been a month since I messed around on the tack in the bunker. Weird. I got the elevator working down to B3, where I'm going to be housing the cows and the fluid tanks. Never really imagined anything like this, so I'm going to want to do some experimentation to see how this entire thing works. I dropped down some water and some cow bait, and hopefully they'll just somehow wander into my bunker so I can capture them. Is this like breeding chickens? I sort of feel like maybe it's going to be. Oh boy. Here we go again. To breed all these cows, I'm going to need a lot of leather, I believe. And good news, there actually is a leather chicken. Bad news, somehow I missed it. I thought I had actually bred literally every possible chicken, but somehow I missed the leather chicken. So, yeah, back to chickens. That's, that's fun. That's fun stuff. I'm going to kind of just let these chickens passively breed while I do some other stuff. Maybe I'll start at my mob farm again, because rotten flesh, I believe, can also be turned into leather. So, maybe we'll go at this from two different angles. Hey, good news, I got all four kinds of cows already. I need to start this whole shebang somehow with a milk cow. Uh, yeah, okay, not a regular cow that gives you milk. Kind of confounded me for a little while, but a different kind of cow that gives you milk, right? You got that? Cool. Additionally, I also need a water cow, a seared stone cow, and a lava cow. All those can actually be crafted using those materials. I think I need to breed them manually. Seems kind of awful, but... All right, we'll work this out. I have a great supply of wheat from the last 100 days, so we should be fine. I did some work on my cow area today, just breeding them up. I put some wood on the wall and make it kind of look like a, a barn, I guess, kind of. And I think it's kind of nice, nice place for the cows to live here. We might uh, readdress this later, but okay, so that's good. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to get something that's going to allow me to pick up items without going into their pens every time. And I think I know just what to make. Yeah, I made a ring of magnetization. I don't know why I didn't do this any time before. This is going to be great. Anything that drops, I can just pick right up into my inventory. It's going to save a lot of time and make sure I don't lose any resources too. It does use RF, but RF is basically unlimited for me at this point. So that's cool. I have my cow room a bit more situated now. I wanted to wait and go with a little bit more of a science lab than a barn. So I'm going to change out all the grass for white concrete and the walls for probably something else eventually. These cows are going to spend their lives in very tiny little crates, but look, the book assures me that they love it there. I don't know. It seems fun. 
I found these blocks called baby filters, and I put them under the breeding pen, so every time I breed the cows, their baby just drops right through. Should be a good way to keep them clear. Later I'll have to figure out how to get them to grow faster, but I think this is going to be a pretty good head start. For example, if I'm trying to breed water and lava, the odds are better that I'm going to get a water or a lava cow than an obsidian cow, so I want to be able to separate them easier, and having them drop down to sort of my basement here I think is going to be a lot nicer and easier to sort them out. Spent another day still working on automating these cows. I found a machine called an animal grower. This thing's pretty cool. It grows animals, but only in a small radius. It's not especially helpful. I'll need to work on something that's going to give it an upgrade. One thing I'm sure about is I'm going to have a lot of steak to eat. Every breed that doesn't give me the result I want, some sort of juicy, delicious steak, is the result. So, I guess win-win? Yeah, sure, I think so. I have a few more cows. It is solid progress. I have a plan for tanks, but I think after more than a week of this, I just really need to break away. I tried lighting up the big room, but man, it's really dark. It just feels like a basement. In fact, everything just feels like a basement these days. I don't know, I, I, just, miss, I just miss outside, you know? I just missed the... I just missed the outside. I went back to Dad's book today. In the stories chapter, there is something called wireless crafting, and it sounds pretty amazing. I keep running up and down, up and down, up and down the elevator to my ME terminal. I kind of forgot wireless is even a thing. Well, I created all the parts, but I really couldn't figure out how to get it to work. I have to dig into this tomorrow, but for today, yeah, I think I'm just going to go to bed. After sleeping on it, I woke up refreshed and with an idea. I think I need to combine my wireless thing I made and turn it into a wireless access point. Now that I have this sweet little thing, uh, well, it's basically out of RF energy. I couldn't recharge it in my Actual Editions charger, so I made a thermal infuser. This thing works, but it's very, very slow, so I upgraded it all three tiers and was about to do the resin upgrade, but I don't have any lumium. There's a chicken for it, and I never made it. So, chickens. While I was waiting for more chickens to breed, I did change out my old reliable superheating element for a couple blocks of awakened draconium. This stuff is literally double as fast at melting cobble. We are already at very good 60 uh, times speed, and now we're at 120 times speed. It is uh, yes, it's pretty darn amazing. I was trying to make wireless booster cards for my wireless access point so I can get range further around my bunker, but in order to do that, I need to make a pulverizer and upgrade it to make ender dust. Yeah, I have a sag mill that does basically the same thing, but it doesn't make ender dust, so that's cool. I need another machine that basically does the exact same thing. It's fine, no problem, good for the future. Once I made these wireless accent point things, it's really great. It's going to cost more RF, but again, RF really shouldn't be a problem. I'm hopeful I should be able to actually receive signal throughout my entire bunker once I upgrade this just a little bit more. There is another way I can do it, something called infinity energy, but I actually don't know what that is, and I'm already running out of the little bit I've managed to find, thanks to loot chests and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I just need a greater regular wireless range, I think. I put up a whole bunch of capacitor banks in my power room. I'd like to have a backup and eventually a way to monitor my RF in out a little bit easier, but not with these basic boys. I need to upgrade them first, so for now they're basically just going to be here for show. The main thing with these basic capacitor banks is they just input output slowly, so when all my power is coming from two wireless energy cells for my entire base, the amount of power I have isn't an issue, but moving it quickly actually is. So I'm going to need the upgraded versions of these before I can really rely on them. I have a confession to make here. You don't want to know where I've been going to the bathroom for the past 113 days. Let's just say that the mobs that spawn in my dark room just die from refusing to breathe. Anyway, it's time for a bathroom, and this is going to be awesome. I am very, very happy.
I can shower, I can wash my hands, I can take a bath. It's amazing. I can't express how much better I feel with a shower. It's like maybe living down here isn't so completely depressing and alone. Maybe I can make this a home after all. I want to take a solid day off tomorrow, so I spent all of day 114 with my chickens and cows. The chickens are close, still working on making some solarium, but I'm very close to the end. The cows have basically infinite time to go, but whatever. We'll get there when we get there. There we go. Oh, 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 we got trouble. Uh oh. I don't like it when they get this small. Ugh. Okay, dude. Uh, we're gonna have to go melee on you. I don't know if it's just from watching Fallout videos all day yesterday or what, but I just decided that I want some light and some nature or something. I broke through a wall in my living room and made a little room. I filled it with a couple trees and painted the walls light blue. I even made some clouds on top. It's pretty nice. I made some curtains too, but man, I have no idea how to actually hang these up. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I can't figure it out. I want to start carving out a room for the fluid tank soon, but before that I want a battery for my drill, and I think I may have to make more batteries in the future, so it's an auto crafting day. This does set up another issue though, I am just about out of crafting interfaces though. I can expand, but I really want to future proof this by making it a lot more smooth to be able to expand whenever I need, and so this sets up, well, another big project. I spent today making some Fluix crystals and really deciding how exactly I want to do my auto crafting and basic setup. I've redone this twice already and I really don't want to do it again after this. I do think I have a plan and to do that I'm going to need to dig out a large room under my main room. So we'll actually have three floors of crafting, auto crafting and more auto crafting. It's, it's going to be great but yeah it's, it's more digging. First thing I did was I made a lot more ME controllers. This is going to give me more faces to attach cables to because the max cable that you can make is a dense cable and it only holds 32 different interfaces and machines and things at the same time. Next thing I did is I tore down everything. I took it all off and threw it in crates. After I did all that, I could actually get to digging in earnest. I want to dig out this second auto crafting floor and make room for a whole lot of interfaces and molecular assemblers and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, it, it, it's a good thing. We're getting close. I worked all day on moving stuff around. There's something that feels really good about this. It's like while I'm untangling the wires and cables around here, I'm kind of untangling my brain. I have a lot left to unpack, but while I'm keeping my mind busy, I'm not thinking too much about what's going on up top. Nice. I got the two crafting rooms all set up. They don't look absolutely amazing yet, but for now, I think it's pretty streamlined and sweet. I added two more molecular assemblers and eight interfaces for a total of 72 new auto crafting slots. Should do me for a while, I think. Super nice. My auto crafting room is so clean. I remember when I was a kid, my dad would always tell me, go clean my room. I never wanted to, of course, but he reminded me of how it would feel when I'm done. It's always amazing. It's so satisfying. This is the first time ever I've been in this bunker that I feel that again. I feel satisfied. I did want to get back to cows today, but first I checked on the chickens and I got my 10, 10, 10 soul sand chicken up and rolling. That's super cool. Soul sand was a bit of a problem before. There are a few things with these cows that I think I'm going to need in just massive quantities. I set auto crafting up for hay bales, cow stalls, and ender tanks, so it should be all set up. I'm going to definitely need to write down colors and what each one corresponds to. All right, I really like how this is going. I'm going to take a lot more space than I originally thought I would need, but it's going to be nice to have all my fluids laid out like this. I'm a huge fan of these liquid cows. Later on, I'm going to make big holding tanks underground here, but just for now, having the ender tanks hold it, uh, that's fine. That's going to make auto crafting and all that stuff with liquids actually possible. I found a way to speed up the cow production massively. I can grow them almost instantly now by using my cow stick. If I hit them with it, I can pick them up and when I put them back down, they are fully grown. Or, even better, if they just bred, I can pick them up and put them back down and they're ready to breed again. <laughs> Little cheaty? Yeah, maybe. But you know what? Uh, it's fine. I am going to allow it. Using my new speedy way of breeding cows, I actually knocked off a bunch of quests from Dad's book. This should be so good. 
I had to expand my cow room a bit already, and at this rate, I'm going to probably need to expand quite a bit more. That's a good thing. man holy cow literally i finished it i really dug in there but you know what i have every possible fluid cow i mess more with the tanks and all that later but these dudes are just going to be rolling now producing so much liquid this is amazing after finishing my giant cow project i want to move on to something completely different chickens Actually, I'm just so close to closing out Dad's chapter on chickens, I just want to finish it so I can actually completely move on. I need to make some chicken seeds to finish this chapter, and to do that, I have to kill some chickens with this special soul knife thing. And I did it! In only three days, if you don't count all the days before that, I finished two chapters. Also, side note, I only have one chicken left to get all the 10-10-10 chickens. It's pretty amazing. At some point in the future, I would really like to get into some mystical agriculture, but I think I'll switch over to power. First, I'm going to sit down on this couch and take a much-deserved nap. I've been digging out my new power room, and I keep needing to stop to charge my drill. Even having a second-tier battery, yeah, it's still a drag. Took a break from digging and taught my auto crafting a few more helpful recipes to improve my battery life. It's another auto crafting day today, but a little different this time. I taught my ME system all the actually additions in power blocks. I really love this line of tech and can't wait to go further down it when I move into more farming. Yeah, but first, more power. To build my power tower, I really want to have the best RF transfer I can, and I think for that I need to dip into a kind of tech called thermal expansion. It's a little complicated to get going on this, but it's one thing just to make each piece, but it's entirely something else to automate every step along the way. The automation of this is a little interesting. It's not something I ever thought I would be into, but it's like a puzzle with different solutions. Each step along the way opens up more issues, but also more answers. And there's not just one right answer either, there's many different ways you can go about solving these puzzles. It's very fun, actually. I did it! I automated cryostabilized flux duct. Absolutely amazing. This thing can literally transfer any amount of RF. Literally unlimited. Now the downside that I discovered is that my power cell system can only export import 20,000 RF. Now look, that's a lot. Like that's seriously a lot. And these are pretty cheap power cells to make actually. So I could actually just put a power cell every few dynamos and should have basically unlimited power. Yeah, I think so. I made something today that is absolutely unnecessary, but super cool. It's called a viaduct. I found it deep in dad's book. It's right out of these future prediction pictures from the 1930s with people zipping around in tubes. Seriously, it's really cool. I built it, I automated the manufacturing of it, and I placed it in my power tower, and I have absolutely no idea how to actually use it. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look it up in the book, but man, it looks cool. The world's really getting scary out there right now, isn't it? I saw a press conference today, and people were getting really nervous. I hope whoever's in charge of the nuke button has a good head on their shoulders. I really do love this game, but I don't want it becoming a documentary. I've been putting some extra time down in the basement. I just feel like I need to be ready in case things hit the fan. Something about watching this old playlist just makes me happy. I know that Dom is most likely dust like everything else above me, but just hearing him talk about things while playing Fallout, it's just a little slice of humanity that I sorely need right about now. Look, living down here alone, it's okay. For all I complain about the solitary nature of it, I am grateful to be alive. Spent the rest of the day connecting some parts of my bunker. 
I'd like to be able to get around a bit easier without always going back to the main room and the main elevator. So I dug a path between the second floor of the power tower and the second floor of the chickens. I think it's uh, looking really cool here and it's going to be nice to get around a bit easier without always relying on the main area. I connected my bedroom with the workshop via viaduct. Did I need to? No. Did it really make sense? Also no. Is it freaking awesome? Yes. Yes it is. Day 42 was spent working on the hallway in my house. <laughs> Did I say house? I don't know about that. I don't know how I feel about this area actually. It's nice, it's homey. I made a clock and some tables, carpet to make it feel good, but when I looked out my window and saw the little room I had made to see the virtual outside, eh, it's no good. I do have an idea though. I started the day by digging outside my bunker. Well, not really outside, but outside my living room window. I decide that I am going to eventually go stir crazy in here and I need to simulate the outdoors much, much better. But first, my drill is making me a little bit crazy. So I built some augments. I made a 5x5 augment and a speed 3 augment. This should actually be a lot better. Also, I realized if I'm going to be digging a lot, I'm going to have a lot of cobblestone, which led me to make four more deep storage for my four highest quantity items. Seeds, carrots, wheat, and of course cobblestone. I really need to turn off my farms. I haven't eaten a single carrot uh, yet, I don't think, and I have like 50,000 of them. I actually can't believe I waited so long to do this next part. I made an interface terminal. I can just drop my patterns into this thing and they'll go where they need to go. I'm such a dolt. This would have saved so much time over the past 144 days. Oh, whatever. It's done now and we're all good. I had, maybe, a brilliant idea. I found a block called Skyblock. What if I made my outside roof out of that? Could be totally amazing. If it works, and I don't know that it will, it could simulate the sun, the moon, stars, even clouds. I could get a simulated suntan. Well, maybe not that last part. But I figured out how to autocraft endstone by combining glowstone and lava. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense or something. One thing thinking about placing so, so, so much of this is I'm going to need a better exchanger. I upgraded my exchanger to a 13 by 13 exchanger and set it all to auto crafting. So placing these sky blocks should be a breeze. Heck, I might actually feel a breeze once I get this all done. Oh, this is wonderful. The inverted sky block is so perfect. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with my new exchanger, but that's okay. I can use my wand to place a lot of it. You know, while looking at this, I'm imagining my backyard. It's going to be great. I can almost breathe again. Yeah, I, I feel like I can actually take a deep breath and breathe again for the first time in a long time. Yeah, this is great. I have made a lot of sky blocks over the last two days. My new yard is going to be so epic. I am very excited about it. I decided to do sky block on both the ceiling and also the walls to sort of simulate looking out over the fence or the community area or something. I don't know. I, I, I'm super excited. I just can't wait to start laying grass and really get things rolling here. Fantastic. At night, when the day was over, I sat by my window and I watched the moon rise for the first time in a very long time. I worked in the backyard all day. I started laying out my dream 60s ranch house today. It's just gonna be a facade, but I wanna feel like it's a backyard. I don't need to actually build the full retro house, brick, a driveway. Oh, I think this is gonna be so nice. The house is really coming along. I slapped a dark oak roof on it and it looks really cool. I think I'm gonna take tomorrow off and just watch some of Dom's follow videos. I'm just about done with the series and uh, well, it's gonna be a bummer when it ends because that's well, I, that's the end, I guess. All right, everybody. I think this is where we're gonna call it an end. So thank you all for watching. I appreciate all the support that you guys always give me and the channel. So if you like this episode, do me a huge favor, drop a like on this video, and let me know your thoughts down in the comments field below. 
If you really like this episode and you really like the channel, do me even a bigger favor and hit that subscribe button because your support means so much for me and the channel to keep continuing making this content. Until next time, I'll see you all later and stay safe in the wastelands. I spent more time on my backyard today. The real surface is very, very, very radioactive and will be for some time, so I may be stuck down here. But, you know, it's not so much stuck down here now. I have a pool, I have a backyard, I have pool chairs. What a difference a day makes. I began work in earnest on the power tower today. After a good bit of just decorating and all that, it's nice to get back with some real tech and some real base improvements here. I've decided that for the foreseeable future, I will continue to use lava generation. Look, it's working great, and it's basically endlessly expandable. I'm very excited to see this project develop. The nice thing about this power tower is that it's only about seven or eight blocks uh, tall, modularly. So I can just expand this down eh, forever and ever, I guess, but I won't need to. I'm making tons of power. I'm going to upgrade all my dynamos to the maximum level. I don't think I'm going to have to upgrade this really ever unless I start doing something really insane. But, you know, I'm not planning on building a rocket and blasting off into space anytime soon. So this should be good for really a long time. I, I, I'm into it. I finished the upgrades on all the dynamos. These things are monsters. I can't see running power anytime soon unless I start powering up a full city. Maybe I can get a new friend or something to come live with me. <laughs> Well, look, I'm starting to really struggle, though. After upgrading the dynamo today, I just kind of went to bed. I think the total loneliness is beginning to wear on me again. I've been working so hard at improving my life here, but... I don't know. Why bother? I have food. I have power. What else do I need? I don't know. I don't know what else I need. I feel like I'm just a yo-yo of emotions these days. I get so excited to have some sort of minor upgrade to my bunker, and then just so down when the overwhelming loneliness of my situation wears on me. There's no real answer. There's nothing I can really do about it except for continuing to take the joy in the accomplishments that I'm making while I continue to work here, and just hope that the loneliness doesn't get to me too bad. I think I just need to break out of my funk and do something different. I grabbed my drill today and went to work on my sub-basement. I just need to level it up and fix up the walls. Why? Uh, I don't know. It's just a sub-basement. It's just where all the cables and wires go. But I guess it felt good to just do some basic manual labor. I could turn off my brain, forget about my situation, and just drill. I dug it out, even the floors, walls, and ceilings, and began replacing the stone with at least some chiseled cobble. It looks man-made, if nothing else. I don't think there's any need to use concrete or anything else down here, but just to make it look less terrible when I need to come down to run cables and such. I wish I had an easy source of terracotta. That would be a nice floor here, but the only way I can figure to make it is pretty slow and boring. I don't know. Maybe I'll expand that all later, but for right now, it's a satisfying project to be done with. I did finish the sub-basement, and thanks to the bunker gods for this exchanger and wand, Got it all change out. Concrete floors, chiseled cobble walls, and chiseled stone ceilings. Nice. This is probably not going to win a flip or flop house competition, but you know what? For right now, it's good enough for me. I went to expand my storage dramatically, and again, I want this to be basically the last time I expand my storage dramatically. So, we are going to be going all in on drive storage, deep storage, and then later add ender chest and ender tank storage. Yeah, I'll get to those ender storage parts later. It'll be quite a grind. I ripped out my old drive room and I made it about eight times bigger. I'm going to have room for 32 drives, 32 deep storage, and later room for all the ender storage I could possibly want. Should be a very solid way to keep all the items I'll ever need in my life. 
I swear, if I need more storage after this, I'm just going to move up to the surface. You know, I like elevators. I really enjoy going up and down my elevator. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Maybe it feels like a mall or something like that, but I really do like it. So I decided to add another elevator to my base. Instead of just add more floors to my current one, I actually dug a hole in the back of my new drive room and I'm going to put a small elevator there. That way, if I need to pop up and down for cable management, I can use that elevator instead of run all the way over to the middle room again. I've messed with my elevator a lot and you would think I would be able to actually just put down a new one here, but I can't. I can't. All day long, I tried to get the screens attached and all day long I failed. Just frustrating. Just really frustrating. I think I know how these things work and I do it and it doesn't work and yeah, yeah, frustrating. Red, are you there? Yeah, Cal, uh, what's going on? Something happened today. I can't explain it. Okay, don't keep me in suspense. Someone posted a new video to your Fallout playlist. Um, I'm sorry, what? It was just uploaded to the backup servers. That means someone's out there. Hey everybody. Or I mean, well, nobody, I guess. And welcome back to Fallout. It seems like we've finally done it. We've blown ourselves up. I've managed to survive in my bunker where I'm extremely, extremely bored. And I decided to continue the series just to pass the time. I don't expect anyone to ever find it, but with my old YouTube backup server still online, why not? Maybe someday a future generation will come across my content and learn about me. Hey future generations, smash that like button. Anyway, before the nuclear Armageddon, I think we left off looking for some scrap. We're probably trying to repair our weapons and armor. Maybe even have a few supplies left so we can continue building up our camp. I didn't even really know what to do. There's no way to contact him and let him know I'm alive, so I left a comment. Yeah, it's the end of the world, and I'm leaving a YouTube comment. I'm not alone. Wow. Wow, this is a lot to process. I spent most of the rest of the day troubleshooting the elevator, and I actually learned something. The elevator blocks have to be in the exact same XZ coordinates. I had one offset to allow for power while the other was in the middle. Knowing this is going to actually help, I can make elevators, I can expand them, I can make more pretty easily now. I think that's been my holdup with the main elevator as well. Cool. I need more Fluix crystals again, and I still haven't taken time to automate because it's a little bit more complicated. I have to drop redstone dust quartz and charge certus quartz in water, wait a few seconds, and then pick it up. I have a few options here. I made an actually additions precision dropper to make sure that the items land specifically exactly where I want them to and not all over the place. Then a vacuum chest with a filter to pick up only Fluix crystals. I'll use my ender chest system to have an ME controller and put the three items I need into a purple white white ender chest and then the all white ender chest to pick up the Fluix out of the vacuum chest. Yeah, should work great. It took an entire day, but I'm glad I got it all worked out. My new magnet card I added to my wireless ME is kind of messing up things a little bit. I mean, didn't add those four items to some sort of blacklist, but either way, this is super cool. I have Fluix on command. I add another elevator. I'm in some sort of mood. Knowing that at least one other human is alive has kind of changed everything for me. The walls are greener. The smell of this bunker is less terrible the chickens well look the chickens are still annoying but whatever someone else is out there my new elevator just goes from my workshop down to my auto crafting area but yeah it's really cool it's a very immersive cool feel to take the elevator down to throw in some auto crafting or whatever i need also i found some more back hidden sort of crappy wire areas to change over to some better textures and yeah that'll look a lot nicer as well yeah everything's coming together 
I was hanging out in my backyard watching the sunset tonight, and the most amazing thing happened. Two dogs wandered up. I have no idea how they got into my bunker, but talk about a cure to my loneliness. I named them Sydney and Barney, and they fell in love, and I fell in love. We all fell in love pretty much instantly. Wow, really great. I started a huge project today, my liquid tank room. I have basically two routes that I can pursue. Either I use ME to digitally hold all of my liquids, which honestly would probably be the easier route, or I can go the harder but way more awesome route of huge tanks to hold all 53 liquids. Well, look, I have all my life to finish this project, so I'll go the latter. Let's get digging. Continuing my efforts to pile project on top of project on top of project, I started digging out my ender chest storage. I'm kind of fed up with running up to the chickens to get every single material I ever need and want to have something set up forever. I'm sure I'll finish this before I die of old age, right? Probably? Maybe? Today was actually a logistical nightmare. I worked and worked and worked some more on trying to figure out the best way to get 80 channels up to my second floor. There is such a thing as a second ME unit, but I'm so close it's only like 8 meters above my workshop, I don't really see a need to do that. That being said, my cables are a complete disaster. I dug out under the main ender chest storage room and colored some dense cables so they don't connect anywhere I don't want them to. I do enjoy this sort of puzzle, but also I would actually like to find a solution as well. I think I got it all sorted out, actually. It's going to be a serious grind, but once I'm done, I should have access to every single resource and essentially infinite supply of just about everything on command. Well, that's a beautiful thing. If I counted right, I think I'm about halfway. You know, I, I knew this was going to be a huge project, but even knowing that, I think possibly I underestimated it just a little bit. But that's okay, we're going to get it, and it's going to be awesome. Day 170, more of this. Mm-hmm. More of this. Just when I thought I was finished, I realized I forgot the middle bank of chickens. The problem is there isn't really room in, for ender chests because there's only one meter space, so I'm going to have to run cable and just storage bus hub their barrels. Look, if I'm being honest, I probably should have done this all the way, but I was trying to be cute and move things around wirelessly without ender chest, but there's really no reason why I couldn't have just used storage buses on the back of all of the barrels. That actually, yeah, that, that would have made a lot more sense. I, I, I don't know why I didn't do that. After running around all these cables and doing all the massive amount of work, I returned to my workshop for the first time in a few days, only to find a total disaster. I added some new facades and left the four colored dense cables out. I think they look pretty cool and they bring some life into the room. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty nice actually. Storage, baby, storage. You just can't get enough of it. Well, maybe you can and look, maybe I have enough of it. Finished off my drive room today. I don't have that many drive discs right now, but man, the room looks awesome. And I feel really good about the state of my bunker right now. I do want to return to the fluid room soon. I got totally sidetracked by all this, but Hey, it was well worth it. This is really nice. I broke away from storage today to work on more storage. Okay, look, I know, I know, but I, I have these bonsai trees growing since my first couple days here, and I've done literally nothing with them. I was going to do something fancy with storage drawers and whatnot, but, you know, I just slapped eight ender chests under them and let them import everything into my ME system. Easy peasy. I added more deep storage today. I'm just loving my bunker these days. Honestly, the thought of living down here forever and ever is starting to not be so terrible. That being said, I do want to spend some real time on recreation soon. I have a couple ideas that could actually turn out to be very fun. Hey, can a guy change his mind? Is that okay? You know, I was gonna do this massive tank room. I think it would look really cool, but after expanding my storage so massively, I kind of really don't see a need to, to be honest. I think I'm just going to double my ender chest storage for my ender tank storage and import the fluids right into my ME system. So I carved out a room for my ender tanks and it turns out that now I'm going to have a giant room down my basement beside my cows that is pretty much useless. I don't know, maybe we'll do a basketball court or something fun. Today kind of morphed into a troubleshooting day. I noticed I had barely any purple dye in my storage. That's weird, I thought. I assumed I should have a full inventory worth. Maybe I forgot a chicken. No, I made a purple chicken, and it was exporting from barrel into the ender chest. So maybe I missed a colored ender chest. No, again, I double-checked, but I found the problem. My dense cables, which should be holding 32 channels each, but they're only holding 8 each. Yeah, th this turned out to be a real big problem. 
It turns out that Fluix colored cables connect to all colors cables. So basically in the back of my ender chest, I just had a big jumble of wires. So what I use is cable anchors on every colored one that connects to a Fluix cable to sort of separate them. And uh, that actually worked. So that worked fine. And that gave each dense cable its total maximum of 32 channels. And uh, yeah, it was a little bit of a pain to sort out, but it actually worked and everything was fine. Spent the day color matching my ender tanks. It's all going good. It's a little bit complicated because some of these colors that I chose are awfully close together, but a little educated guessing and we're all good. I'm very excited to have this all done. I think this might be my last really huge storage related project ever, except for food. There's always food. Yeah, food. Hey everybody. Well, nobody I mean. Welcome back to another episode of Fallout. Before we get into it, a little life update. I've been having a great time working on expanding my bunker in the basement these couple of weeks. It's been great actually. I have a good power situation going, and I'm working on a lot more food choices. My next project though is radio, and not just any radio. I remember learning about shortwave radios and how they have a huge broadcast range. The only internet I could figure out how to get working can only upload to these isolated backup servers. If I can get a shortwave radio working, I'll start broadcasting each night. And just try to connect with someone, anyone. Maybe there's still someone out there, alive. Anyway, back to the game. Today we're going to be going around looking for some ammo, which is kind of dangerous because all of the enemies are quite dangerous now with nobody else on the server to play with. It's kind of lonely in-game and out. Dom is building a radio. This is amazing. I can't even believe if we can both work out how to build a shortwave radio, perhaps we can communicate? I had honestly chalked this up as some sort of pipe dream talking to another human being, but now maybe it's possible. I am flying high with the thought of talking to someone again. I sent my auto crafting to two of the biggest projects ever. I taught it 64K distrust for both solids and fluids and set it to making four 64K fluid drives. That in itself is going to take ages, but on top of that, I taught it fluid storage bus, starting to make 54 of those for my ender tanks. Yeah, it's going to be running for a while. I'm going to have to go do a different project while I wait. You know, one thing I want to do is I want to improve my living situation here a little bit more. I, I have endless supplies and all that kind of stuff, and that's fine. But part of expanding my base is going to be kind of expanding my base within my base, my actual living quarters. I built a staircase going up and carved out a theater upstairs. I think it's going to be so great to put a video on and just relax from time to time. I finished outfitting my theater with a small kitchen, couch, even a fireplace. I had a smoke detector just in case. I'm happy. And now I think it's time to just settle in and... Watch a, watch a video from one of the YouTube backup servers. Yeah. Yeah, this is awesome. Incoming message. <sighs> Incoming message. Oh, yes. <clears throat> yes, Incoming yes, message. yes. Play, play message. Message from Captain Ramirez. This message is for any survivors of the sheriff. I imagine the computer woke you from deep sleep and you're likely a little foggy. Our ship, the Sheriff, was hopelessly caught in a singularity and hurled back through time. By the time we realised what was going on, I ordered abandoned ship. What I learned later is... I knocked out a lot of Dad's book today. Something about a movie night just gets your mind right. I feel refreshed and ready to go. I did a bunch of quests, everything from storage to drawers to controllers, different barrel upgrades, all that kind of stuff. feels good to be making progress in the book, even if I'm kind of wasting materials. But hey, you know what? Materials are free, and that's fine. The only real thing of note today is I finally figured out how to get pink slime after essentially endless trial and error. Hey, you know what? I finally have a use for this big dumb room. I keep running out of Surtis Quartz. It's not good. I don't really have any way to make tons of it. There isn't a chicken or cow for it, so I doubled my sand to dust sieving production and hope it will help, but seriously, there has to be a better way. Dad's book has nothing. Nothing at all. A big day today. I finished my liquid storage. Really, this is amazing. 
I have now endless supplies to all the chicken items and all the cow liquid in the entire world. I mean, what a great feeling. I've decided I want to start something called Draconic Evolution. And to do that, I really need access to Wither Stars. And to do that, I need access to Wither Skeletons. And my mob farm is just not really doing it. So I, I need to get serious here. I turned off and expanded my dark room quite a bit. I'm going to rework this. I have kind of an idea and there's going to be some probably trial and error on this as well. I had some nicer walls and made a grinder and hooked that up to power. Hopefully anything that it kills will just go right into my Emmy system as well. Uh, not too bad. The cursed earth should spread all over the dirt and that's fine. Next, I need witch water and I need a lot of it. I did it. It was a little more complex than I expected, but by using an Ender's Essence interface, I can tell the ME system to put spores in and an empty bucket. The spores will go into a water-filled uh, stone barrel and a bucket into a mechanical user. The user is set to activate with block, and sure enough, it fills up the blocket with witch water. It's pretty cool. The only other issue I have is I don't really have a source of spores, so I guess that is probably going to be the next project. Hey everyone, hello and welcome to another episode of Fallout. I have an exciting real life update first. I got my radio working and I'll be broadcasting tonight at 9 on frequency 742.832. I'll be honest, I'm hopeful, but I shouldn't be. I know the whole world was blown to bits, but somehow I'm still hopeful someone will be out there listening when I broadcast. Anyway, I've been on the hunt for one of these legendary enemies. I need to start updating my weapons and Probably my armor, too. Maybe we should be doing more events for some gold bullion. I spent a good deal of time today working on a radio. Now that I know Dom is going to be broadcasting for sure, I need to talk to him. Building this thing is very difficult because it's not covered in Dad's book, so there's a lot of trial and error. After working on the radio for a good bit, I need to clear my head, so I made an auto server for sand. Should be a nice source of spores in just a few minutes. I only actually need one more for my plan to work for the mob farm, but hopefully I'll get that soon and be able to complete it. I want a source of mycelium. I don't know why exactly I need it right now, but I can see in the future I might, and I want to be prepared. I haven't gotten lucky and gotten the last spore I need yet, so I spent the day automating mycelium production. And to do that, first I have to make mushrooms, both red and brown. To get that, I need to sieve sponges. And to make sponges, I need to hammer logs. Okay, not a big deal, so I added those three machines today. Nice. I got the dark room ready. Cursed earth down, some dark glass so I can see what's going on in there. And yet, light is still creeping in. Where from? I, I have no idea. Maybe a lantern I have somewhere, maybe in one of the sub-basements. I, I don't know. I spent the entire rest of the day hunting down that one lantern. I tracked down the lantern and it works. I already got one wither skull. This isn't ideal because what I need is I need a regular skeleton to spawn on the cursed earth. And before the grinder kills it, which is pretty frequently, happened to touch the witch water. So yeah, that's, that doesn't happen very frequently. So I'm not getting a lot of wither skeletons here. Uh, I think what I need to do is maybe put it on a timer or something. But yeah, I, I could probably work that out actually. Though I haven't gotten those other two wither skulls yet, I am getting a lot of armor, bows, helmets, chainmail, all that kind of junk. And I was going to trash it all, but I think maybe I might have a use. So I made something called an anti-barrel and actually then ended up making a couple more with a fuzzy filter, which means it will take all bows regardless of enchants and put them in. It does unstackable items up to many, 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 many versions in just one barrel. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I did stay awake very late tonight after working on the anti-barrel stuff, working on the radio. I think maybe I got it working. I am very, very excited. I'm hoping tomorrow, whenever Dom does his evening task, I will be able to actually talk back. That's pretty thrilling. Hello. Hello? Testing. One, two. H Hello? Hi. Uh, hi. Can you hear me? Hello? Whoa. Who's this? Hi, I'm Fred. My name is Fred. Hey, Fred. Uh, I, am, I can't believe I'm actually talking to another human being. Yeah, I know. It's been 195 days. 213 days, actually. Oh, yeah, right. I had some rough days there when I found out my dad was an AI. I just kind of... Well, don't count them. Okay, are you in Philadelphia near me? I'm in a bunker down below. 
No, I'm in a bunker near Pittsburgh. I didn't think anyone else made it through this. No one else? How bad was it? Are there rescue teams? No, Dom, there's nothing. I have a connection to a satellite with a artificial intelligence on board. There's nothing out there. I thought for sure I've been hearing things outside the hatch. Are you certain? I'm as certain as my AI can tell from a satellite. How did you find this radio channel? My, my video? My Fallout video? Yeah. Believe it or not, I saw your upload and I've been working on a radio ever since you talked about it. Wow, that's so awesome. So, we're it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think we're all that's left. So, tell me about your bunker. I can't even explain the high I'm on after talking to Dom through much of the night. Amazing. I do, however, have some bunker work to get to today. I have a few things piling up like crazy. One thing is called Solidified EXP. I tried clicking on it and, okay, I guess this isn't shocking probably, but it gave me EXP. Pretty cool. I used up a lot of it just to see how high I could get. With the mob farm and liquid cows, I guess it is pretty renewable at this point. Nice. I expanded the back wall of the mob farm just a little bit more and put Witchwater on a timer. I think this will allow skeletons to spawn, then get pushed by Witchwater into range of the grinder, and by then they'll have converted into wither skeletons. Time will tell on this one, but I am extremely hopeful. I need to do a bit more troubleshooting again today. I'm out of ink and a few other things. Basically what happened is I messed up the color coding of the chicken drops and had to go through a fairly painstaking process of checking each one in each set of eight to see where I missed a color. Yeah, it was a real fun day. Really, really fun day. I threw together a wither killing room quickly today. I still need one more wither skull though and well, that's not great. I need to figure out how to get more. I made these witherproof blocks to build a cage from. I think it will keep him in place while the draconic evolution grinder does its thing. Should be fairly safe. Fred, are you there? Oh, yeah. Hey, bud. How's it going? I'm not sure. I've heard some very loud sounds outside again. It's below my tiny windows, so I can't see anything. But it's almost like scratching. Could it be an animal? Maybe? I don't know. It's probably my imagination, but I thought I heard a moaning sound. Whoa. Whoa, dude. That's creepy. Yeah, you're telling me. Anyway... I'm sure it's nothing. What were we talking about last night? Oh, right. So, why did your dad always call you Bob? Yeah, weird noises outside Dom's bunker. That's concerning, to say the least. We were up most of the night again, talking. The noises came back, but only once. Maybe whatever made it is gone for good. I sure hope so. I spent the whole day standing at my darkroom window, just waiting for my final wither skull. I got my second right away, but still waiting on a third. I got it! And I don't know if it was just bad luck or what, but this new farm seems to be pretty efficient. While I was just preparing to kill the wither, I actually got two more. Amazing. I should be swimming in wither stars very soon. Before killing him, this is weird. I jumped, and I didn't come down. Apparently, while I was killing mobs, one of them dropped something called a air charm, and somehow I accidentally equipped it. So, I guess I can fly now. It's, it's kind of cool. It's not really flying. It's, it's actually kind of like walking through the air. Weird, and also cool. I put down the soul sand, the three wither skulls, and I summoned him. And, for once, everything went great. He pretty much instantly died. The Draconic Evolution Grinder took him out immediately. Nothing broke because of my Wither Cage. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, nice. I got a Nether Star. Awesome. It took some time today to reflect on the last 200 days. It started right here, right in this place. Somehow, I created my home here, and all alone from just nothing, just stone. Looking around, it's nothing short of a miracle. I set up farms, both food and monsters, power that should last the rest of time, storage for so many items I can't even count them, a house, <laughs> a house I can be happy in, even with the backyard and a pool. Even with all that, I wasn't doing well until I found a friend. Through YouTube videos and then eventually the radio, I learned that I am not alone. 
even if it's just a voice coming through a couple small speakers, I have a friend. And these past 10 days, I went from complete solitary confinement to spending each night talking about what we were doing in our respective bunkers, our families from before the bombs, our life, our hopes, our dreams. What a transformation. I've spent 200 days creating life for myself here, but it wasn't until these last 10 that I remembered what life is truly about. It's about connections, real connections between people. Just being able to talk to a friend, I know now that I can make it another 100, no, 200, no, another thousand days down here. Life is good. Fred, Fred, are you there? There's something, there's something outside my hatch. It's banging on it. Fred, I saw it. I don't know what it is. It's huge. And I, I don't know. It's horrible. A mutant or something. Uh, th and there's more of them. Fred, it's trying to get in. Fred, I have to go barricade the door. I hope they don't find you. Yeah, uh, yes, hello? Please hold for the Secretary of Defense. Mr. Baskin, thank you for taking my call. Sure. I'll get right to it, Mr. Baskin. Your country needs you. The enemy's building up forces all around the globe, and we need to defend before it's too late. Yeah, I read the newspaper, but why are you telling me this? I am a civilian, after all. We have a plan, and you've been volunteered. Bob. It had to be Bob. <laughs> he said you'd know exactly who suggested you. He's one of NASA's most brilliant minds, and yet he says you're the only person who could pull this off. Pull what off exactly, Mr. Secretary? We have a rocket that's undetectable to the enemy. Our plan was to send a small team to space to establish a foothold. And you want me on that team? Well, the rocket was to be very, very small to elude their sensors. Okay, I understand. How big is the team? The team is you. I arrived in the asteroid belt with essentially no resources at all. Speed and stealth was the key in getting me up here without the enemy noticing, so the ship had to be small and light. But that being the case, I am here with essentially nothing. No supplies and no food. NASA didn't leave me totally on my own, though. Bob and his friends wrote a bit of a guidebook I can follow. The first thing I had to do was check over my equipment and make sure I am all good. I have some oxygen and a tree on board to make some more, I can cut it down, and as long as it drops at least one sapling to regrow it, oxygen should be okay. The book did tell me I need to go to a nearby asteroid to get some materials to make an anti-radiation potion. I took a short hair-raising trip outside my space station, and yeah, it was pretty scary. One misstep and I will fall through the void forever. That That's fun.
I learned today that I can make more dirt by combining moon rock and cobblestone. That is really convenient. Now with that, I'm able to plant more trees and harvest more wood faster. That is a good thing. I made a couple quick cobblestone slab furnaces and started cooking up some charcoal. That is going to be my power source for the foreseeable future. Then I'm back to harvest more trees for the day. Yeah, oak logs and cobblestone furnaces. Really, really high tech stuff. I got a grappling hook and it's pretty cool. With this, it's a little bit less scary, though it's still fairly terrifying to jump into the void because now at least as long as I have some string on me, I can actually grapple onto asteroids. Yeah, pretty sweet. My first machine is called a compressor. It can turn cobblestone, which I get from asteroid rock, into gravel, gravel into sand, and sand into dust. What I really need is I need flint, and to get flint, you have to combine three gravel in a crafting table, and yeah, you'll get flint. So that's pretty good, because what I really need is I need a sieve to sieve dust. Sieve? Is it sieve dust? No, it's sieve dust. Who knows, maybe I can make a cobblestone generator here, and then it shouldn't be too bad. But for right now, the old by-hand system, it will uh, suit me just fine. I began getting some of the ores that I'm going to need to survive out here. It involves a complicated process of compressing cobble the whole way to dust and then sieving it. I think I can automate this soon, but not yet. It seems I can get some of the precious ores like lapis, silicon, diamonds from this dust, but I can't actually get iron and all that kind of stuff. I think I'm going to have to go mining asteroids to actually get sort of the heavy duty ores. Okay, well, I'll get my grapple and get going. Also, fun fact, seems like water isn't renewable here in space, so I'm going to have to keep uh, shearing trees or saplings or something to just keep on getting water. That's okay. The main thing that I want to do right away, though, is start to grow some food. I do actually like to eat, and I have one apple to my name, so yeah, we need to get growing some crops here. Luckily, from sieving dirt, it's not too hard to get my hands on seeds. Yeah, so we'll get it growing, and everything should be just fine. I spent the entire day sieving dust and then making more dust and then sieving more dust. Yeah, it's a long process, but I'm really happy to be getting the ores I need to start processing. It's only been five days and I'm in a good place. Not exactly energy independent here, but I believe if I spend a small bit of time cutting down some more trees per day, I should be able to power my entire station with just charcoal. That's pretty good. And obviously I will automate that in time. The book I got from NASA seems to be divided into missions within greater chapters, and each chapter seems to have kind of a goal. So I'm working through it in order, and I am just about done with the final quest in chapter one of the book. It's basically teaching me how to get all the small things I need with the compressor. The compressor is pretty amazing. Like to get nether wart, I can just combine blaze powder and seeds. So it's not really too bad. It's a little bit time consuming. I don't know if it's automatable, but for right now, that's okay. We can get nether wart, clay, netherrack, all that stuff is just at my fingertips with the compressor. Pretty sweet. I need some copper, and yeah, I don't have any copper. I believe I can get it from an asteroid, so I spent the whole day floating out in the void and farming asteroids. The problem is my picks don't last very long, and it takes quite a bit to come back and get more. Luckily, if I find a good ore asteroid, it's actually a pretty plentiful bounty, but yeah, I'm still worried about running out of iron, and yeah, well, I got aluminum and tin, but still no copper for the whole day. It's been seven days. It's been a week that I've spent here on the space station, just totally by myself, totally without any communication, anything. I miss my son a great deal. I hope he's okay. I think of him a lot, in particular in these slow moments whenever I'm out in an asteroid or if I'm on the charge pad waiting for my tools to get recharged. I'm awfully busy with all the things I have to do here just to survive, but yeah, yeah, I, I, I miss little Bob. I hope he's okay. I finished all the book's quests from chapter one, except for the very final one where I need lava. I do feel the ability to produce lava will be quite a game changer for me, but to get that, I need to dot some eyes and cross some T's. I'm almost out of wood and thus almost out of charcoal, so I need to spend the rest of the day harvesting that. So yeah, real exciting day. Real exciting day chopping down some trees in space on my space station. I made a chisel and began my space station expansion. This is going to be great. It's so cramped here, and 
well, unfortunately, I have to use cobblestone, which doesn't exactly scream epic space station, but whatever, you know, it's fine. I can always replace blocks later. And look, I don't want to live here for the rest of my life. This is just preparing it for future astronauts to be able to live and thrive here. So, yeah, chiseled cobblestone is just fine. My space station currently doesn't have an atmosphere, so I learned something, kind of the awkward and hard way, is torches don't work. Of course they don't work. There's not oxygen in my room. That's why I have to wear my spacesuit every single minute of every day. So I can make glowstone torches, which do provide a little bit of heat and will eventually melt down this cobblestone for lava. Yeah, so that's a good thing. I almost had a terrible disaster today. My oxygen almost ran out. I wasn't paying attention to it and all of a sudden started feeling very, very tired and taking some damage. Yeah, I hurried over and luckily I had enough in me to uh, to refill one. But yeah, it was it was pretty close. If I wasn't paying attention or if I was sleeping or something, I think I'd be dead. Another fun fact of living in space is I'm taking on a decent bit of radiation now. What I was working on before my oxygen almost killed me, it was a brewing station where I can actually make some anti-rad potions. It should help. I expect that NASA knows what they're talking about here, so hopefully it will not just help, but it will actually keep me safe. I think each potion knocks down my total radiation by 50%, so that's a good thing. And actually, the only thing it takes to make is just charcoal and water bottles, and these are two things that I actually have, so not too bad, actually. I spent the rest of the evening. Is it is it evening? I, I, don't, know the, I don't know. The sun doesn't move out here. You know, I spent the rest of the time before I went to bed making a 9 by 9 meter crop field, and this is going to be great. I'm going to fill it up with basically potatoes for right now, wheat and everything else I have, but my goal is a big, big potato farm. Hey, Matt Damon did it and kept him alive on Mars for like two years. I think it should work just fine for me. All right, then let's talk automation a little bit. I'd like to automate my lava production, and to do that, all I need to make is a simple hopper. And to do that, I need to make something called compressed steel. Seems like the hopper recipe isn't the same as it is on Earth. But that's okay. It's actually not too, too bad. It's a couple iron ingots beside each other, and that makes compressed iron. And then after that, I add some charcoal, and boom, I get compressed steel. This compactor machine is really, really cool. I made my hopper and I put it over the crucible, tossed in five stacks of cobblestone, and... Yeah, okay. It, it's not exactly automation dream, but you know what? This is going to be okay. We are going to get a lot of lava from that cobblestone. And cobblestone is not free, but pretty darn close. Well, I really need copper now. I mentioned it a few days ago, but I haven't had any luck finding it, so I'm just going to have to go. I'm just going to have to go out into the void, into the asteroids, and just dig until I do. I made a whole bunch of pickaxes, and huh, I'm headed out. Good luck, me. I found some copper late in the day, and with that copper, I made two machines that are really gonna help me out. I made a real coal generator, which is effectively gonna double my power, and this is huge. I made an electric compressor. This machine is absolutely clutch. First, it takes RF, which means it only uses as much energy as what it needs to complete an operation, and there's not waste. But this is the big one. It doubles my recipes as well as works faster. This thing is awesome and clutch and the most important machine that I could ever build on the space station. Hooray for me. There's something very simple and I'm very, very annoyed at myself for not thinking of it earlier. You know how I keep chopping down all those trees? Why don't I automate that? I can make bonsai trees. These bonsai trees are amazing. And now that I have a decent supply of iron from some of those asteroids I mined, I can actually make some hoppers Two, I am never going to need to harvest wood again. In addition, I should get some leaves for making more water, some saplings to replant, and most importantly, apples to eat. My potato farm isn't exactly cranking out the crops yet. I spent all of day 15 working on my farm and trying to plant more and more. Uh, but then, yeah, then something happened. I, I had a visitor. Apparently, space zombies are a thing. 
Yeah, thanks, NASA. We gotta mention that. This space zombie, not only did he try to kill me and I assume eat my brains, but also he's wearing an oxygen tank and a helmet. Yeah, I have a lot of questions about this. I, I need to figure out some way to call home. Maybe tonight after work, I'm gonna sit down and start to work on some sort of laser relay communication device so I can go and call my good friends at NASA and uh, express to them my concerns about, I don't know, the space zombies. After messing with my power situation a good bit here on day 16, I noticed something that is very concerning. My machines are always draining my RF regardless of if they're working or not. That's bad. I think it's time to work hard on actually building out some space so I have room. Building down in this void is actually pretty challenging, but I'll work something out. I just need more space. I need a basement and some way to wire my machines together. Something that's very annoying is all of these kind of galactic craft machines that I have here only accept power from the left side. That is unbelievably annoying for laying out a base. <laughs> oh, geez, I mean, come on, man, really? Okay, all right, that's okay, we'll get it worked out. More major base building again. I expanded the room off my main room in order to actually have enough room to set up my power situation. I poured some water and was able to sort of navigate the low gravity to go down a little bit, so I have a little bit of a basement to just wire things. It's gonna be good, and it doesn't look extremely pretty, but again, I'm working with chisel cobblestone here. It's really the best I can do. Eventually, maybe if I get some sort of really renewable iron situation, I'd love to use something like factory blocks or iron blocks or something, but eh, look, you work with what you got. It's kind of a confusing day. My system here might be a little bit flawed. I may have to rework my concept eventually here, but right now I'm just using regular old hoppers to go into my, my generators, and that's coming from electric furnaces. The electric furnaces are pulling down from hoppers, which are pulling all the things that can come from a bonsai hopper. Now, they can only pull oak logs, but the problem is the actual hoppers will pull all four things, including apples, sticks, and saplings. What that means is eventually the hopper will be plugged with all of that stuff and no room for more logs in order to go into the furnace and become charcoal. Eventually we'll figure out a way to automate it, but for right now I'm just going to have to sort of manually click on things. That's all right. We'll get it worked out. You ever hit something just in time? Like you buy insurance just before an accident? I nailed this. I was just about out of iron and about to smelt another stack of my precious iron ore for one ore to one ingot ratio when I saw something in the NASA book about an electric arc furnace. It turns out not only is it super fast, but it will double my ores. This is huge. Why didn't I read ahead in my book? Okay, whatever. The point is now I have ore doubling and I am very, very excited. This is just awesome. My laser communication device is just about ready. I think if everything goes right, I should be able to actually call home tomorrow. Now oh, I'm very much looking forward to this. Um, hello? Is there a Bob there? Wait, hold on, hold on a minute. Hello, who's this? Percy Baskin? What? Calling for Bob? Bob? Who's Bob? There's no Bob here. Hold on a minute. Bob, I'll be right with you. Come on. Don't, don't eat that. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I gotta go. Who, who's, who's this? What, what, you know what? It doesn't matter. There's no Bob here. I'm busy. Bob, I'm coming. Come on, man. Bob, you can... Don't get no, down. Don't eat that. That's my pizza. Well, that didn't seem quite right. Let's try this again. Hello, Bob. You old son of a Percy. <laughs> so they got you up there, huh? Uh, they said my country needed me. Not just our country, Percy. The very world. How much can we say here? Anything. This line is totally secure. Okay, well, what do you mean the world? Without the space base, the Illuminati would have nothing to hold them back from their goal. Of sending us back to the Middle Ages. Yes. Bob, we've gone round and round about this. I've never bought completely into your theories here, and the, the Secretary of Defense just called, and he didn't mention the Illuminati. 
Yes, I'm not sure he completely buys into my theories either, but trust me, I'm convinced. No. Oh. All right, we'll see. How goes the space station? It's going okay. It's a slow grind at first, trying to get ores from moon dust and all that, but I hope to have some automation going soon. That's good. Solid progress. Hey, by the way, I'm not the only one up here. How do you mean? I just had to fight off a freaking zombie attack in space, Bob. Zombies? Huh. Percy, I have to go check on something. Contact me when you can. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always thought jetpacks were awesome. I really thought that that's how people would travel in the future, and it turns out that the only thing they're really good for is entering football stadiums carrying a big flag. But look, it's still awesome. I used to read the Tales of Suspense comic books, and everyone always had jetpacks in those. Yeah, it's really cool. I think I want one, and I think it really helped save me from falling to my death in these asteroids. I made something called a plastic jetpack. Yeah, sounds really secure, right? I took a little test flight over by an asteroid, though, and it worked just fine. But while I was digging, I noticed my radiation gauge is extremely high. I have not been paying attention to it. So I hurried back and made three potions of rad away, and we're all good again. Seriously, I really, really need to keep an eye on that. I need to make a machine called a magma crucible. With it, I think you can make some really cool things out of melting down solids and liquids. On top of that, it's the next thing listed in the NASA book, so I do want to continue on the recommended sort of quest line here. However, it requires gold, and yeah, I don't have gold. I think it does spawn within these asteroids out here, but I'm not sure, and I don't really know how to find out that information, so yeah, I gotta go find some gold. I spent most of the next day looking for it, and finally I hit pay dirt, or well, pay gold, I suppose. This is good, I got a lot of it. The magma crucible will be mine. I ran into another small snag. To make this magma crucible, I need tin, and as far as I can tell, there is no tin in the asteroid belt. I'm honestly not sure what to do about this. I need to consult the book, but I won't be in laser range to call Bob for another 15 days, so I am really on my own. I made one more trip out to the asteroids looking for tin and no luck, but what I did discover is I am chewing through my iron reserves very, very quickly by digging these with iron pickaxes. I need something better. So I made something called a flux bore. It's really cool. It's a drill that uses RF for energy instead of durability and breaking. It's great. The problem is it's only level one and a level two requires something called invar, which I don't believe I have the means to make. Hooray? Uh. Yeah, it took me two days, basically, of mining asteroids, but I finally got it. I got some tin. It is definitely in an asteroid. Yeah, well, look. Okay, so I know now asteroids can provide basically everything I need to build a decent life here. There are probably some things that I'm going to need to travel to other places to get, but for right now, I am very, very happy. Let me just tell you, building anything at all in this tiny space station is a real pain in the butt. Even though I have most of the materials that I need just to make the magma crucible, it took me almost a whole day. To do the next step, I'm going to need a machine called a pulverizer. It shouldn't be too hard. I would really, really kill to have some sort of computer storage. It'd be really great, but I feel like that is a very, very long way off for me. Oh yes, I made a pulverizer and we are rolling. Now I need to harvest a ton of coal and charcoal for the next part of my plan, but this is great. I'm growing more and more concerned with my overall power production, however. I am always out of charcoal. That's not great. So I need to ramp up my bonsai tree farms. But yeah, sorting is still an issue. I don't really know how to get around it, to be honest. 
I had to make another machine that I've never even heard of. It's called a fractioning still. I think it basically changes one liquid to another, or maybe it does something else. I, I don't really know here. I think NASA is guiding me towards rocket fuel, which will be great if I ever want to leave this place. But for now, yeah, this is a little bit confusing. It's a lot confusing. It's actually a whole lot of confusing. On day 30, I began putting a lot of charcoal dust in the crucible to get liquefied coal. So pulverizer, crucible, eh, this should be okay. This isn't the absolute smoothest automation ever. I don't know. NASA says to do it, so I'm doing it. I don't really know what for, but there's a lot of sitting around waiting. This stuff takes a long time to sort of liquefy. I've had a lot of time to think about my life back on Earth, and yeah, I miss my boy, and I have a lot of regrets, you know? I'm going to change things whenever we get home. We're going to spend a lot more time together. I'm going to spend a lot more time out in the backyard throwing the ball around and, and look up from my data pad more and just, just enjoy him. He's at a fun age, and He's inquisitive and he's really smart and I feel like I'm missing out. When I get home, I'm not gonna miss out anymore. I love that little dude. I did it. I made all the machines I need to finish the chapter and ended up in refined fuel. This is really good. I may actually be able to leave the asteroid belt now. I mean, not now. I have a lot more to do still in this space station, but the thought of not being totally stuck here, that's a good one. I've been so amazingly busy, I haven't really had the chance to look at my situation. I'm here in the void of space, many, many thousands of miles away from Earth with absolutely no way home. If I run into trouble or my power runs out, I am stuck. I have no one who can help me. Yeah, this is why they tell you not to look down when you're high up on a ladder. Your brain can kind of trick yourself into forgetting how alone you are up there until you look down and see the reality. I need to think on other things. I decided today I need to clear my head, so I took a little trip. I headed out to the west looking for any new asteroids or whatever, and I found something. It was a giant structure. I have no idea what it could have been, but well, it looks like it's seen better times. I need to ask Bob about this. I didn't know that other countries had been out here setting up bases in the asteroid belt, but this looks rather old. Like, perhaps very, very old. That's odd. I have found several items that will be useful in the future, I grabbed them, and headed home. There were a whole bunch of monsters hanging out in this asteroid. I managed to kill them, but... uh. Yeah, I, I'm not strong in the weapons department here, so I would like to just get out while I'm still alive. So it turns out that maybe being a rocket scientist is actually kind of a big deal. Putting together a rocket all by myself here has about a billion parts. It's a fun little project, but, eh, you know, I'd like to get it finished, because as soon as this is finished, I could technically leave here, and that is a very, very positive thought. I think the space station is getting to a good place. It's not done yet or anything, but I think it's getting to a good place that could support astronauts when they do show up here eventually. So, yeah, this is good. Well, I did it. It took me 34 days over a month of living here all by myself, but I managed to make a Tier 1 rocket. Pretty amazing. Uh, I'm not sure exactly if I have enough fuel or even really truly how to get the fuel inside the rocket yet. There's still a bit of a learning curve here, but I feel really, really good and really accomplished about building a freaking rocket from a space station. Awesome. But before I even think about leaving, I have a few more things I need to do. Firstly, I want to have enough fuel to take off and come back, which means I have to take off twice. Secondly, I want to make sure I have a way to gently touch down on the ground when I get there. Hey, it'd be great not to die. And thirdly, I need a way to defend myself when I get there, wherever there actually turns out to be. Look, we'll heat each one individually. First though, fuel. I spent the rest of the day grinding up charcoal and putting it into a crucible to make liquid coal. I really 
Really wish I had this more automated. This fuel situation is very difficult to figure out. I'm not really sure what to do actually, and the book isn't that much guidance help either. Boy, it'd be great to have Google. Regardless, I am not leaving until at least day 40, so I can talk to Bob again first and tell him what my plan is. I'm not leaving this station without anyone on Earth knowing what is going on. This is actually a little bit more grueling than I thought, and yeah, I thought this was going to be pretty grueling. To get refined fuel, it turns out I have to put the Nephtha that I get from Pulverized Charcoal back in the fraction still a second time. That's okay, except that each time it goes in, I lose 50% of the initial yield. That's a bit of a pain, so it takes 80 charcoal to make one bucket after both refinements. That's still okay, it's cheap in the end and renewable, and I should have a full rocket soon, but yeah, it's a little time consuming. Next time I do this, I'm going to ramp up the production quite a bit. The grind is real. Oh, it's, it's very real. Yeah. I had to fight off a couple more space zombies earlier in the day. I'm a little concerned. So far, they've mostly left me alone, but I'm not sure it will always be that way. And also, it's not easy to fight melee in low gravity. I don't really have any sort of ranged weapon or well, any weapon, to be honest. So, yeah, if a skeleton were to attack me, for example, it would just shoot me and I would just keep bounding away. It's not so fun. So I made a phaser today. It's freaking awesome. Look, I grew up on a lot of Star Trek when I was a kid. I think I've watched every episode of Star Trek ever. And to have a phaser in the real world where I can shoot creepers and endermen and skeletons and everything. Yeah, it, it's it's really cool. I mean, it, it's really cool. Hi, Percy. Bob, how are things? It's good. We are working on plans for phase two of exploration. Phase two? I'm just over a month here. <laughs> I know, but these things take a long time in the planning stages. What did you find out about my undead friends up here? Best we can tell is the Illuminati compound got hit with something. They blew our long-range satellites a long while back, so honestly, it's mostly educated guessing. Uh, what are you talking about? There's an enemy compound up here? Well, it seems there was a compound. We don't know exactly what they were doing, but I always suspected it was some sort of scientific research they weren't comfortable doing on Earth. So with it getting destroyed, all their monsters are out and about. It would seem so. I have a couple calls into friends who are more knowledgeable about the Illuminati theory. I'll check in with them and I'll get back to you. Take care. I spent the next two days just sieving all the dust I could while I waited for my charcoal and my coal and my fuel and all that kind of stuff to gather. It takes a long time, but that's okay. I got a lot of resources from sieving all this stuff, so we are moving forward in a positive direction. And now, on day three of really working on this, my rocket is officially fueled. We are up to over 60%, which according to the book is sort of out of the danger zone. Yeah. Yeah, I finally did it. I have a fueled rocket. I can leave any moment I want to now. Now, where do I go? Do I go home? The only problem with leaving now... Look, I feel like the space station is at a good place. There's a lot of technology here. There's food. There's oxygen. There's a source of power. I think if we send up more astronauts, they should be able to seamlessly fit right in here. The problem is, once I leave, it is just going to be an empty, vacant shell and... Who knows what could happen to it? We need some sort of overseer. But there's something I've been thinking about for a long time. Something I've been working on as a side project is an AI that's loosely based on myself that can look after the station and prepare for more people if the need ever arises, put out fires, take care of emergencies, whatever. 
This should take me probably about a week to get a full up-to-date brain scan and input it into the computer system. I think I can do this. It's kind of new technology, but it's something I've had in the back of my mind for a very long time. Yeah, I think I can basically create another copy of myself. I will need a spacesuit if I'm about to journey all the way back to Earth. Come on. Of course I need a spacesuit. The radiation is crazy and... Well, I have one problem. I'm almost out of aluminum. I think I have enough to finish this up, but I'm going to want to take some aluminum back with me. So after I finish making my spacesuit here, I am going to go out and mine up some more aluminum just for the journey, just in case. I dug through a few asteroids late last night and came up totally empty. Several asteroids have nothing but asteroid rock on the inside. That's really annoying. So I made something that's called a scanner today, and the scanner, I can basically just point at an asteroid and it will tell me if there's precious materials inside. That's pretty great. It's gonna save me a lot of time and save me a lot of RF recharging from my flux bore. I've been spending so much time thinking about what I'm doing and how I'm gonna get home, I haven't really thought too much about what it's gonna be like to be home. I can't wait to see little Bob. I just can't wait. I can't wait to give him the longest hug ever. And yeah. Yeah, things are going to change when I get back. We're going to be a family again, and I'm never going to leave him again. I made the scanner, but for it to actually work, I need something called a module, and to make that, I need coal. Not charcoal. That doesn't work for the recipe. I need actual coal. Fortunately, it didn't take very long, and I found actually a few asteroids with coal, so I have a nice little reserve. I'm going to want some power when I arrive to Earth. I don't know exactly where I'm going to land. There's no way to be that precise in my direction, so... I may need to survive for a few days until NASA can come and find me. I made two flux capacitors, which are basically RF batteries that will recharge my phaser and my drill as it's just in my inventory. This is going to be really great for moving on my feet, especially until I can establish some sort of little base to wait out my time. It's my last day here. I feel like the station should be in a place where it can be self-sustainable, especially with an AI in charge of it. It's time for me to go home. I spent the day gathering up my things and leaving plenty here for future astronauts to come here and live. But for me, mission accomplished. I did what I was supposed to do. Tonight, before I go to bed, I'm going to put the finishing touches on my AI and put him in charge of the system. Hello? Hello? Hmm, that doesn't sound quite right. Hmm, that doesn't sound quite right. That's a little better. That's a little better. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. AI active, all systems nominal. Please input name. Let's call you the Heuristically Programmed Algorithmic Computer Beta 9.8343, or HAL 9000 will be fine. HAL Online. Bob, I think I'm done here. I'm about ready to blast off. Good, my friend. Give me a rundown. We have automated power, mostly automated fuel production, and the ability to build more rockets on command. That's fantastic! Load up your rocket and come on home. I'm sure little Bobby misses you like crazy. One last thing. Once I land, how long until I can be picked up by NASA? Uh, that's a tough one. It depends where you land. The emergency beacon can't turn on until you actually make landfall. If you land in our territory, maybe only a few hours. And if I land behind enemy lines? I don't know. You may need to survive on your own for a little while. All right. Well, I'm ready. Let's do it.
I arrived safely on Earth, and it's not what I expected. Spiders, skeletons, all the monsters from the asteroids were here. I found a building that looked abandoned and walked in, and was attacked by some sort of robot. Yeah, this is bad. I hurried out of that building and found one that seemed unoccupied, and I climbed up to the roof. Where the hell am I? I started by digging down. I have no idea what's up with this place. Maybe it's an Illuminati base? Maybe they're working on an experiment that went wrong? Either way, I don't know when they'll be coming back in force, so I need to have a decent hiding place. I'm thinking I'll dig a basement under one of these big buildings and hide there while I wait for Bob and NASA to come and rescue me. In the meantime, there are a few ores that I was unable to find in the asteroid belt that I could really use to make some new machines here, so yeah, mining could be a really good use of my time. I couldn't sleep last night. I think the reality is starting to set in. I landed behind enemy lines. There's certainly no doubt in my mind about that. How long am I going to be here? Days? Weeks? Months? If I decide to just run and just try to get away from here, how would NASA ever find me? The only thing I can do is stay near my transponder and hope that they figure out a way to get back here and rescue me. This isn't good. I ran stairs all the way down to my mine, and I did find some precious ores, including some diamonds even. So that's good. So at least help for a short uh, return trip back up to my storage room. I'm kind of annoyed at myself, to be honest here. I should have brought more of my machines with me. I thought leaving them up there for the next crew would be a good idea, but, well, now here I am stuck in the basement of an Illuminati building, and yeah, I have to make things I already made once. I made a new circuit fabricator and a new arc furnace to double any ores I find here. With a little bit of coal I found under my building, I have the beginnings of power as well. It's a strong start, but, yeah, it didn't have to be quite this hard. I spent the day mining again. I have some plans for some new tech that while I wait here, but one of the ores I need is actually called Tritanium. It can be found around Y11, so I'm headed down and I mine three pickaxes worth of stone and ores, but very, very little of the Tritanium that I actually need, so I'll probably have to head back again. If I were to be here for a while, some sustainable food options would be good. Even just apples, honestly. Let's start with oak, wood, and apples and go from there. To get a decent amount of oak, apples, and then charcoal after that for power, I'm going to need a whole bunch of bonsai trees. It shouldn't be too terrible, I just have to find a river and go to town on some clay. Yeah, it's nice that I can just find it instead of have to make everything. That's cool. Working on a better power system is actually kind of interesting. I'd like to completely rely on charcoal since it's essentially free with these bonsai hoppers, but that being said, I'm going to need to ramp it up considerably from what I had on the space station. I made 12 bonsai hoppers and chests to go with them. I should be good for a while. I'm not even sure really if that's going to be enough, but I need to get a couple generators running and see. Also, I, I found a dog. He took to me right away and, well, we became friends. It's pretty cool. I'm going to have to make sure NASA knows that they need to rescue me and the dog. I need to get a good name for this guy. What's a good name? I spent yet another day down in my mind looking for a Tritanium ore. Boy, oh boy, I am coming up empty on this. All went great for a while until I got completely lost in my caves. These caves are really cool, but not so much when I'm lost and surrounded by monsters with no way out and running out of torches. Yeah, I was in the caves for quite a while, honestly. I made a back door once I found my way up to my little place here. It's going to be nice to have an emergency exit just in case I get overrun. I don't know. I need to make a good decision here, though. I need crops, and for crops to grow at their fastest, I probably need sunlight, and that is going to make that someone lives here pretty obvious if uh, someone from the Illuminati or whoever flies overhead. But you know what? I got to eat. So I went ahead and I planted a bunch of crops right up on the roof of my building. I think it should be safe from monsters, but again, I'm kind of revealing my location. I really, really hope that this doesn't come back to bite me in the butt. I had to make another machine called a metallurgic infuser so I could make a new charge pad. Would have been probably great if I had just brought that with me, but oh well. The next crew will appreciate that I left it. My phaser is charged, my flux board is charged, and I am ready to go check out this place that I'm stuck in. Let's go see the sights. Percy! There you are! 
We've been searching for you. Thank goodness you made it back alive. Where are you? Didn't you receive my emergency beacon? No. I can only assume you landed in Illuminati territory. They must be blocking it. Are you safe? Uh, yeah, kind of. There's no intelligent life here. It's all monsters and worse. Can you send your location through the space station? Not with this setup. I just got my laser relay working today. I'll work on it. I've been digging around about more information on the Illuminati, and I have some news. Good. I could use something to take my mind off things. Do you remember the other planets I've lived on? Well, yes. I remember the stories you'd tell me when we'd hit the vodka a little too hard. Well, I'm not drinking now, and I need you to believe me that every word of this is true. Look, Percy, you've already seen the Illuminati's monsters. It's true. There are some unexplained things up here, but, Bob... Portals, magic, Tovlin, the sheriff, it's a little much. I believe Tovlin is the key to it all. It's more important than we know. I think the supposed birthplace of my friend is very important. There's no supposed. I wasn't born on Tovlin anyway. I crashed there as a child. But the thing I keep thinking about is why do I keep seeing the same monsters on every planet I visit? You've seen zombies before? It's weird. Tovlin has zombies, skeletons, and more. Muscada, the major world where I met my master, had terrible monsters, but also zombies and skeletons. Then I was banished. Yes, by the Mage Council. The Mage Council, yes. I was sent to a floating island orbiting a gas planet. It seemed to be the only person there, so I thought I got to name it. That sounds fair. Anyway, I named it Izar after my wife. But, Percy, there were zombies there, too, and now here on our world. Perhaps the Inquisitors have monster factories out there. Monster factories? Oh. Why? That is the question, isn't it? I need to think on this. We'll talk soon. Be safe, my friend. We'll come for you as soon as we can. After finally having a conversation with Bob and NASA, I realized that I'm going to be here for a while. So I needed to secure the area around my base and make sure that, well, I'm as safe as I can be. So I spent the last two days really clearing everything. I did find some treasures and some useful things, but for the most part, I wasn't worried about that as much as I was worried about killing all the robots around me. And uh, it, was, it was kind of fun. Look, it was scary for sure, but I mean, I got to shoot robots with a phaser. Like, that's fun so yeah it, it was it was good and i lived through it and that's what's important yeah i was still happy to uh to get home and i slept well i slept well that night another thing i need a good bit of is meteor ore and i do keep seeing them around this area must be pelted by meteors pretty frequently so i took my diamond pickaxe and i spent a good deal of time sort of wandering around the courtyard outside of these buildings looking for meteors it's actually kind of safe during the day. I haven't seen any robots come out. Maybe they don't work as well in the daylight or whatever. So eh, it was a nice day for a walk. Well, it didn't take long before things got crazy again. I was adventuring and I wandered into a new building that I hadn't seen yet. And yeah, sure enough, Robot Palooza. Well, if the Inquisitors didn't know I was here, they sure do now. I was taking out robots and now mutant scientists left and right. 
I even got them fighting. So I thought, hey, you know what they're fighting? Let's get the heck out of here. Oh, good, spiders. Yeah, it was really a war zone. I was really happy to make it home alive. I spent the day today working on some infrastructure in the safety of my base after a lot of adventuring this week. Yeah, yeah, being, being secure is a nice thought right now. So I wanted to wire up my bonsai farms and try to use item ducts and servos to move all of the oak to where I need it to be. It's going to be a little clunky. It's not going to look very great. But look, I'm not living here forever. This does make me think of a couple things, though. You know, it makes me imagine, what if I were living in a bunker underground? Like, what if I had to live here forever? What would I do? I'd probably dig down underground and make a bunker of some sort. It's an interesting thought experiment, and something I've been spending a lot of time sort of rolling around the back of my mind. It took me longer than I expected to get there, but I finally did it. Completely, fully automatic, renewable power. This is great. It's not a lot of power. It's only 75 RF per tick, but this is going to serve me well for a while, and I can always add in a second generator if I want to. I think I have plenty of wood for it. Yeah, it's good. It's a good, good day of progress. I made a telescope today and wired it up to the roof. Well, then I figured out that it doesn't actually need wire for RF. It actually uses batteries. So, nice job reading, Percy. After I made the battery, I actually made three of them. I just charged them with RF, loaded it into the moon research papers into the telescope, and, yeah, like nothing. Like nothing happened. I, I, I don't understand it. I don't know what it was supposed to do, but, yeah, just, just nothing. Just a whole bunch of resources for nothing. I want to make something called a dust generator. It's going to be awesome and it will be really the answer to any possible precious materials issues that I have. But to get it, I have to find an ice plains. So I charged up my tools, grabbed my potatoes, and headed out. I don't know the geography of this area at all. So yeah, I just kind of guessed north and east and started walking. Two solid days of walking, a whole bunch of enemies killed, and a whole bunch of animals killed as well for some meat. And uh, I finally found an ice plane. It's pretty good. Now let's just see if I can find the ore. Oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about. And this is what happened. Yeah, my drill will not actually break it. It's a harvest level four apparently, and my drill and diamond pickaxe are not. So there's literally nothing I can do. I sat here and I thought about it for a really long time. And uh, in the end, I just turned around and walked home. So all that for all that for nothing. That That's great. That's really great. I may need to get out of here. I'm not planning to get out of here, but I need to have the ability to just in case. If the Illuminati or Inquisitors or whoever come after me here, I need to have an escape plan. If it gets too hot in here, I can jump my rocket, blast off, and then decide where I'm going at that point. Life on the space station wasn't exactly great, but it was sustainable. Here, maybe not so much. It seems like I'm totally surrounded by terrible monsters, and if I get surrounded or my doors are breached, I'm going to want to have a rocket fueled and ready to go. So, I need to get into rocket fuel production, I guess. I was just thinking about little Bob at home. If something were to happen to him... I don't know. When I get home, we're going to start digging a bunker. Maybe under our house. Yeah, I, I think that'd be good. I could even stick maybe a hatch right in the corner of the living room by the window. Yeah, it'd be good. It'd be good. I learned something potentially valuable today. I can use the magma crucible on coal to make rocket fuel. The mildly infuriating part is it doesn't work on charcoal. 
but I believe a crucible will. So here's the thing. Do I go mining like crazy for coal or do I just make a series of crucibles to make renewable rocket fuel? Look, I tried mining for a whole bunch of the day and got literally zero coal. I know it exists in this world underground, but yeah, I struck out. So, all right, well, question asked, question answered. We're going renewable charcoal. The long awaited automated rocket fuel process has begun. I made and hooked up five crucibles to my lava generator at first and quickly realized that I have tons and tons of lava down in the basement mine, so really unnecessary. I broke all that and instead ran an item duct from the excess charcoal storage drawer into the crucibles. This should be a supercharged process, really, having five of these cooking at all times. If I need to get out of here fast, I could be ready in just a couple days. All right then, the first stage is all set up. Charcoal is going to an electric compressor and that is outputting to a storage drawer and that is gonna output into the crucibles. The next stage is a bit trickier, but I think I can work it out. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Tonight, after I'm done working for a bit, I'm gonna grab some of my paper and start putting down some of my thoughts I have on the bunker. Maybe the best thing would be try to make sort of a how to survive the apocalypse guidebook. Should be a fun project. I might even base it on the book that NASA gave me for this mission. My brilliant system here may not be quite so brilliant. It's actually not working. I'm not sure why. The, these, some of these machines only output in certain sides and only input in certain sides and only take power in certain sides. It's, it's, it's very annoying. Well, so I figured out the electric compactor can only output from the bottom. And uh, so once I did that and put a servo on the bottom with an item duct, it actually worked pretty quickly. So that should just feed directly into the storage drawer and we should be all set up. When it's working, this compactor is super annoying. It is so loud clanging. So I did make this thing called a sound muffler and just put it right beside it. It's basically going to hear all those sounds and just muffle them from my ears. So I will never hear them again. Hooray. I had a small hiccup today. I would like to use fluid ducts to move my liquid charcoal from the crucibles to my two brand new fractioning stills. But I believe regular fluid ducts might break if the contacts are too hot. And I assume that liquid coal is probably too hot. So I might need reinforced flux ducts or fluid ducts, and that requires invar, and to get that, I think I can only get it from Jupiter. What? Oh, come on. Really? Jupiter? Hey, Bob. How's it going? It's not great, honestly. What's going on? We believe the Illuminati knows that you're there. What? How? It was probably a matter of time. Too many people here at NASA know we're doing it, and it just took one overheard conversation or intercepted email. Wait, Bob, do they know it's me specifically here? We're not sure. We're sending a security team to your house now. Your son will have 24-hour protection. I need to get out of here. I got your location, but we're still working on the extraction plan. It's complicated. Okay, I understand, but Bob, it's getting intense here. Hurry. I will, I promise. Be safe. Bob's talked often about the Illuminati or the Inquisitors, as he usually calls them whenever he has a few drinks. I never really thought too much about it. I never really believed it. I, they're like the boogeymen. They were not real. But, well, I'm living in a former Illuminati compound now, so maybe they're more real than I thought. But even with that, if I were the only one in danger, that'd be one thing. But the fact that they might go after my son... Yeah, I need to get out of here, and I need to get out of here now. Hurry up, Bob. I spent the last two days working on adding a second generator. I need to get more power. I am running out of power pretty frequently. So I just need to know, is my furnace, my one single furnace, going to be able to outpace the two generators working all the time and additionally give me a occasional third charcoal that I can then grind into dust and create rocket fuel? I don't know, that might be a tall task for one generator. Of course, I can make a second generator too, but yeah, I just need to sort of test it and just see how things are going. My main concern right now is probably extra rocket fuel and just the ability to get out of here and go wherever I need to go to get to safety. It's a big troubleshooting day today. Here we go again. 
I can't figure out if I'm good on power or not. I don't seem to be getting any additional charcoal. I'm talking about the third one after the two generators. My overflow charcoal, because that's what I need for the rocket fuel. I'm not getting any, and I don't see why not. I, surely the electric furnace is enough to provide two generators, but I don't know. No more charcoal's coming, so... Yeah, I just need to try to figure out and see what exactly is happening. It's very confusing. For the rest of the day, I did upgrade the furnace downstairs to a new arc furnace because I would like to continue to double my ores. Because, again, if I'm going to leave, I would take my ores and all of my ingots and things with me. I still am on the search for more asteroid ore, and I do occasionally hear explosions sort of over my head. So I went up to look for it. Man, this place is really dangerous. Can I state for the record what a fan I am not of these mutant scientists? Dude takes a million hits and just keeps on ticking. Yeah, they're not fun. After really just days of working on this, I had a bit of a success story today. I realized that I had over 2,000 millibuckets, or well, two buckets, of advanced rocket fuel. I poured that into my fuel loader and I am ready. If the sh** hits the fan, I can get out of here. As I keep killing these robots, some of them are dropping android parts. Well, so maybe they're androids, actually. I made a small device called a data pad and spent the entire day learning about this. Apparently, I could, if I wanted to, convert part of my body into an android. I imagine it'd be big upgrades, but then I'd be an android. So uh, yeah, let's just not do that, but it's interesting to read about anyway. Honestly, what would little Bob think if I came home with a bunch of android parts? Well, okay. I guess he's five, so he would probably think that was pretty rad, but uh, yeah, it's not ideal. I'd like to spend the next portion of my exile here working on some solar power. Look, I'm still working on the assumption that I'm going to be saved, but if I do have to go and blast off in the solar system, having some sort of renewable power up on the roof that I can grab whenever I run into the rocket, that would be really nice, especially passive power. To progress a bit further in the solar power track, I need wool, so I actually went out of my little building and sheared some of the sheep wandering nearby. I had a lot of time to think while I was out there. This whole situation here is really messed up. What are the Illuminati working on here? Could this be sort of one of the monster factories Bob's theorizing about? I don't know, what the heck would they spend resources on a place like this for? As an experiment gone wrong, mobs breaking loose and killing all the scientists. Okay, yeah, I get that. I've seen a lot of movies, but the bigger question is, why are they doing this? I, I don't know if there's answers here or not, but I do need to get answers for this. Acid rain hit today. That's a lovely thing. I actually need more wool, but I can't go out in the acid rain. How can these sheep just hang out in there when it burns the crap out of my skin? The hell, man. Anyway, since I was stuck indoors, I did make a pulverizer and began working more on the solar array. I think I have everything I need to craft these. The only real kind of pain is solar dust, and that's just a bunch of basically pulverized ingots broken down. It's not a big deal, it's just time consuming. I'm freshly annoyed at not being able to harvest the ice from a few weeks ago. If I could have, I could have my automatic dust maker running 24-7, just filter that straight into an auto sieve. I need to remember this for my first bunker book. I think sieving is everything, and learning automation will be the number one way to succeed living underground during the apocalypse. You're not going to be able to go surface-side to get stuff, especially if this acid rain is anything like what we might see during the apocalypse. So everything needs to come from down below. Sieving just makes too much sense. Pulverizing. It's so slow. Invar again is the bane of my existence. I can't upgrade my pulverizer or anything else, basically, so I guess I'll just sit here and wait. Freaking Invar. The only place you can get it is, what, Saturn or Jupiter? Either way, it's far out of my reach. I tried to call today. It normally takes 20 days to charge up the laser relay, but I thought maybe I could get it through, and yeah, I couldn't. It just rang and rang and rang and no answer. I don't think that's a good sign. Who knows? Maybe they're on their way, and that's why there's no one there at NASA. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. I don't know. I don't know why no one's answering, but... Yeah, I'm feeling pretty isolated here. When it's quiet here, like it has been these last couple days, it's when I get lost in my own head. 
You know, when I was up in space, I didn't expect to come down to fanfare. I was doing a secret mission after all, but I did expect to come back and be in some way recognized for the good deed that I did. Instead of that, I came down and I'm behind enemy lines. They don't know I'm here, apparently, but no one can come get me either. Yeah, it's just not a good scene. I'm getting kind of dark on the whole situation. I'm very nervous. I'm worried about my son. <sighs> Looking at this rocket, it's kind of all I can do to not just get in it and blast off. I did hook up my two solar rays that I made for a total, a total of seven RF for tech. That's terrible. <laughs> it's just terrible. It's so worthless. I guess you'd have to make just a whole field of these to get anything of them. I was flipping through the book and I saw a few quality of life items that I could make. I made a magnet, which I really wish I had a long time ago, especially in space with the low gravity items just flew everywhere. Yeah, it'd be really nice. This magnet is pretty great. For the next thing I want to build, I actually need something called an induction smelter, which basically can combine two metals into one and get an alloy. I was halfway through crafting it when I realized, hey, you know what I need? A freaking Invar gear. Again. So the best way to make Invar is in an induction smelter. And to make an induction smelter, I need an Invar gear. Yeah. Oh, man. Such a drag. You know that thing whenever you're about to leave the kitchen and you keep going back to make sure you turn the oven off? Yeah, that's kind of like me right now with this rocket fuel. I just keep kind of clicking on it and making sure that the rocket is completely filled up. Yeah. Yeah, it's very tempting to take a test flight, honestly, but I can't. I need to be here when they come to rescue me. Hey, you know what else I need? I need a freaking melee weapon. It's crazy that I'm out here with just a phaser as my only weapon. Yeah, the phaser is really cool, but it runs out of batteries pretty quickly. And if I don't have my flux capacitor set to charge, or if it's out of batteries, I am dead. So I need to make one. I found a recipe for something called a flux sword. I think it's going to use RF to maybe deal extra damage. That's really, really cool. So it's a little bit of a complicated craft. I use fluid transposer to put diamonds in and add redstone to them and a few other things. But I think I have everything I need for it. I don't know why I'm putting this in my log because I am really, really embarrassed to admit this. You know, all those times I've complained about Invar and how I can't make Invar. Oh, I can't make Invar. Oh, no, I can't make Invar. I could totally make Invar. I could totally. It's just it's two iron and one tin and uh, pulverize into dust. And if you pulverize in dust, then, yeah, you get Invar dust. So... Turns out, I could have made it all along, and all that whining and complaining that I've been doing is just because I can't read the recipe book, so... And with my newly found Invar recipe, I now can make my Flux Sword. It's super cool. It takes a charge off my charge pad, and, and yeah, it should deal a lot of damage. This is going to be really, really helpful for taking on, like, multiple robots whenever they come after me. So, yeah, great job. Well, after 98 days since I blasted off Earth for the first time, I am about to make my first enchanting table. It's so ridiculous, I can't even believe it. But yeah, I want to enchant my new sword, and since I'm going to do it, I may as well go ahead and enchant my flux bore and maybe some of my spacesuit as well. Either way, it's going to be a solid life improvement here and keep me a little bit safer until NASA can come rescue me. Cool. Percy, tomorrow, drop everything as soon as the sun comes up. Head to the south. There will be a plane fueled up and waiting for you. What? A plane? I can't fly a plane. It's on autopilot, but the main problem is the shortest path home will be over a long stretch of Inquisitor-held ocean. I don't care if it's flying over fire and brimstone. I just want to get out of here. What I'm saying is we don't know what's there. It's completely dark to our satellites. Okay, that's fine. Just get me on the plane. Tomorrow morning, when the sun comes up, drop everything and run. Go quickly. The Inquisitors know you're there, and they're sending in a team. I understand. I'll leave first thing in the morning. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Percy. I hope to see you soon. I can hardly believe it. I didn't sleep at all last night. I just laid there and waited for the sun to peek over the mountains. It's finally time. I'm going home. I'm getting out of here. This long mission, this critical mission, is finally over. I'm going to go home. I'm going to see my boy. And I'm going to give him the biggest hug in the world. 
Now I just need to get to the plane. I had to include this as an encrypted message. I've been doing some digging about the zombie paradox. How could so many different worlds have zombies, or for that matter, the same cows, chickens, people, trees, etc.? It's a confounding problem, but I may have discovered a solution. All jokes aside, my friend, your mind is great. If anyone can see a hole in my hypothesis, it is you. I believe everything started with the Sheriff. According to my mother, there was no life in the galaxy except for our original Earth. Then, after the singularity, life seems to have exploded all around us. Not in a slow gradual way, but suddenly, overnight. Rewriting barren rocky plants with plants, animals, and even people. There was nothing before, and then it was teeming with life. I can only think of one solution. The axe on the sheriff that created the singularity was, maybe, no accident indeed. I believe the Illuminati caused it. Understanding it was then spiraling backwards in time. The furthest a crew member of the sheriff was pushed back was almost 10,000 years ago, but the longest one stayed in the singularity, the further back in time you would go. I suspect there might be one escape pod that went much further back in time. Possibly many thousands of years. It could have seeded all the planets in our galactic neighborhood with life. The Illuminati, Inquisitors, Mage Council, they all seem to be one and the same. Their goal is to control all life in the universe, keeping it locked into medieval times, possibly so people can be easily controlled. My fear now is that our planet has progressed far beyond the Middle Ages. I suspect they'll do whatever it takes to blow us back to swords and castles. Get home soon, my friend. We have some planning to do. Alert. Alert. Missile lock detected. What? Where? Where? Oh, no. No. No, I need to get home. No, not now! I woke up from my plane crash on some sort of island surrounded by the biggest beast I've ever seen. Yeah, they're dinosaurs and they are all over the place. These things are fearsome. I looked around quickly to take stock of where I was. There were hardly any trees around so I needed to get a little bit close to that giant Tyrannosaurus Rex and try to get some wood. And that is when I had my first dinosaur attack.
yeah, if they could do that to each other, these things are 13 tons. Imagine what they could do to little old me. Nope. I turned right around and got out of there. I need to figure out where the heck I am and what the heck I'm going to do. I made some wooden tools and a boat and I got away from those beasts. This is frightening. I have nothing. Everything I had with me sunk with my plane. First thing I need to do is get some shelter. I'll figure out everything else after that. I need to stay near shore. My boat is not exactly a super liner here. And then, of course, yeah, there's pterodactyls, I think. The flying dinosaurs. They could pluck me right out of this boat if they were hungry. Hopefully they ate a bunch of fish this morning. I need to get away from them. But I need to stay within visual distance of the shore. Because if I go out on the open ocean, who knows if I'll ever find land again. Oh, oh boy. I hopped out of my boat and climbed up on shore. I need to get a good look around. These triceratops seem friendly enough. None of them have shown any signs of aggression towards me, though they did surely go after that Tyrannosaurus Rex, so I need... What is that? Oh, nope. Back to the boat. I took my boat kind of around the bend of the island, and one of my immediate needs was met. I found some sheep and got enough wool to actually make a bed. Should be able to sleep through the night now. You know, look around this swamp. This isn't such a bad spot. It's kind of protected by water on all sides. Eh, yeah, I don't know, maybe. I spent the day here on this little tiny swamp island looking around at everything and sort of taking stock of what I have. I broke all the grass hoping to get some seeds and actually did get a handful. I should be able to plant those soon. Yeah, I think this is going to be my new home until I can figure out how to get off this island. That is going to be a heck of a task. But for right now, I could put up maybe some walls and a roof. Yeah, okay. Okay, things are good. First thing I really need to do was clear out space around because I'm going to need to build. I'm going to want to have a little bit of a wall or something to keep myself protected. And to get that, I need to get some stone. So that means I need to do a little mine underground and start. Hopefully I can get some ore and some coal to help light up the night too. I was able to upgrade my tools to stone tools at least, which is kind of nice. And the other thing I need to do is I need to get rid of these trees because honestly, I can't see very much. I want to have a lily pad bridge connecting my main island to this other tiny little island, and I need to get rid of all these trees. I mean, heck, getting all the wood and maybe even some apples to eat, that's an added bonus. But for right now, yeah, I just need to be able to see if any threats come at me. There are some uh, things here. I, I don't, I, I'm calling them crocodiles in my own head. I understand that there's some sort of dinosaur or prehistoric version of a crocodile because they're freaking massive. But yeah, I'm going to definitely want a wall. These guys haven't attacked me, thankfully, yet. But if they did, I don't think that I would have any chance against them at all. These are huge. I would fit comfortably inside their mouth. I mean, not comfortably for me, but, you know, comfortably for them. I learned two painful lessons this morning. One, that crocodile can completely own me. It almost killed me in one shot. And two, these walls mean nothing to them. It broke this wooden wall like it was absolutely nothing. Oh boy. Also, it killed my sheep too, but you know. Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do about this. Honestly, my big plan here was to build a giant big oak wall and it didn't even stand the test of like one tail swing. So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is not great. Now, the good thing is I have a lot of apples because I've cut down all these trees and they are dropping quite a few, so I'm not going to starve, but but yeah, I, I don't really have a game plan outside of, well, that. So I'm going to rebuild my wall and see if maybe if they don't see me, if they still come at the wall. Let's hope. By day 10, I decided I needed to get some diamonds, so I headed down into my mines, and I just started digging a straight line. I found diamonds fairly quickly, actually, and I'm finding a lot of coal. I'm hopeful this stone will come in handy in my defense against the crocodile attacks. They are getting out of hand.
I made two new tools today that are incredibly helpful. One, of course, is a diamond axe, and the other is this diamond hammer that is really, really cool. It does a 3x3 three three hole, and it's very fast, and yeah, I'm spending a lot of diamonds on it, but it's five diamonds for the hammer or three for a pickaxe, and it's way faster, so I should be able to find a lot more diamonds by using just a couple more diamonds, if that makes sense, so yeah, should be good. And after about the seventh time rebuilding my wall in only a few days, I have made the very difficult decision that it's time to go. This is not gonna work here. These crocodiles, I can't stop them from breaking my wall. And uh, yeah, they're gonna break my wall and then eventually they're gonna break me. So we gotta make a decision and the decision is I gotta go somewhere, somewhere else. There was a crocodile about six feet away from me. So I had to run to my storage and get everything that I could carry and just just get the heck out of there it, it, it's so scary it, oh, i i need to get off this island but right now i just need to survive for a few days I managed to climb up to the treetops and just take a look around. I need to see if there were any buildings, any structures, anything I could find that would help me out on my way. Then I saw something very strange. It was some sort of a camp. Someone has lived here. And I thought, well, if it's safe enough for someone else to have lived here, I can too. So I found a little place and I started digging straight down. I need to have a mine right away. I have learned my lesson and this base is gonna be defensible. There was a little bit of daylight left. So I spent the day sort of covering up holes and making sure that no creepy critters or whatever can come out of a darkened cave area and also cutting down the trees around where I decided that I'm going to live. Again, I want to have sight lines. If a dinosaur is coming for me, I want to see it before it's right on top. So yeah, we got a lot of work to do around this area, but this should be a good place to call temporary home. The next morning, I immediately started working on my house. I am done sleeping out in the open. If a dinosaur came up in the middle of the night, I would just be a small midnight snack and they would just continue on their way. No thanks. No thank you. Somehow I managed to build the walls up of my house in a single day. I came outside and looked around. This is not defensible at all. Dinosaurs could come up from any angle and I know for a fact that they can break wood. Now, I don't know if they can break cobblestone, but... Yeah, this is not a great place to live at the moment. I can make it better, but I need time. I need to cut down these trees. I need to get rid of some of this water. I need to make some sort of wall or something that I can be somewhat secure behind so that I can figure out how the heck I'm going to get off this island. Right now, I'm just worried about surviving and eating something that's not an apple. But that all being said, I do want to progress some. There are some machines that I can make that are really going to help me out. And several of them require glass. So I found some sand down by the ocean and came out here. Yeah, uh, yeah, I have no armor. I have nothing to protect me. If a dinosaur comes up on me, I will probably be dead. But I came out here in the middle of the day, snuck very quickly to get some sand, and I'm going to get home before I'm dead. Dusk was settling in, but I wanted to check out the work I did on the road. And yeah, it looks really good. It's not the smoothest road ever, but with a little bit of landscaping. And yeah, I don't want to get too close to these Triceratops. I don't know exactly what their deal is, but, you know, they haven't attacked me yet. So all seems okay. Yeah, it's, this is pretty good. These green dinosaurs are weird. I don't know what they're called, but, you know, a couple have chased me. So... I don't know. I, I'm just I'm just staying away, right? I don't want to get too close to those. I, I trust the Triceratops for some reason a little bit more. Seem like gentle, scary, terrible beasts. I was mining and this happened. Uh, yeah, a zombie, a freaking zombie. I thought for sure this island only had dinosaurs, but yeah, 
The same zombies that chased me in my last place, they're here again. This is not good at all. Well, speaking of things that aren't good, though, falling, falling would be not good. So I decided to take some water, put it down at the bottom of my mind. That way, if I do fall off the ladder, and who knows, maybe I'll get courageous enough to actually jump. But, you know, if I want to, I can jump down to the water and should be okay. And getting down should be nice and quick. Getting up is going to take a while. I needed to come up with some way that dinosaurs aren't going to trample my crops. I really can't think of a way around it. I, they might eat it, but even if they just step on it, that's going to do major damage. So, yeah, I went with an underground farm. Not incredibly creative on my part, but you know what? It should do the job, and thanks to this torchlight, somehow lets them grow, and hopefully it will let them grow fairly quickly because, yeah, I'm kind of overeating apples. But yeah, the underground farm, it doesn't look great. It works pretty well. I was able to make some of these very cool marble pillars coming down. I can't imagine any other use for marble, so <laughs> why not decorate my farm with marble? That's what the ancient Romans would have done probably, right? Yeah, maybe. And I got on a little bit of a decorating kick where I found a recipe where I can make these awesome dirt sort of blocks. I don't know what they even are, but they look really cool and they're just made out of dirt. So that's, that's just awesome. I was back down mining and I found the weirdest thing. I found a book sort of buried within bones. I, I don't know. I can't even really explain this, but between the zombies and a book now, the abandoned camp, there were definitely people, maybe up until even recently in this area. Were they studying the dinosaurs? Were they making the dinosaurs? What's going on here? But it's about time to make some more machines, and one of the things that I need to do that is I need something called Grains of Infinity. Now, I know for a fact that you can get that by lighting bedrock on fire, so I took some flint and steel, traveled down to the bottoms of my mine, dug down even a little bit further, found some bedrock, and let it just do its, uh, let's do its magic. It's a pretty cool mechanic here to get this. I, I like it. It's a little bit of a pain, but yeah, it's pretty cool. And by day 30, I have made my first real machine. I decided I want power in to get real power. I think I'm going to try the magmatic dynamo. Though that runs on just lava and nothing else. And I do have some lava underground in my mind that I can bucket up. It's going to be kind of a pain. No real way to automate it, but I can. Beside my alloy smelter, I put a survivalist generator that just basically runs on coal. The cool thing about the survivalist generator is it runs very, very slowly, but it makes your coal last a very long time. And I have some coal, but I don't have tons, so that seems like a good trade-off for now. And just like that, I am able to make a sag mill. Now, this is also going to be cool. And again, I'm just going to run on my survivalist generator right now. But I'm on the quest for Invar and for doubling my ores. And this is actually going to help for both. You get two iron and one nickel. That's going to give you three Invar ingots. But if you use dust, it does the same thing. And you get two dust from one ore. So it's basically ore doubling with the sag mill. And that's really cool. However, it is very, very slow. I really need more power soon. That being said, if I'm going to build more power, I need a place to put it, and I guess the basement makes the most sense. Look, I'll be honest, I was thinking about building a separate building out there, but with the way the dinosaurs can break blocks and things like that, I think maybe having my stuff underground is probably the safest route. I, I really, really don't want dinosaurs to break my machines. If they break my wall, that's a pain. If they break my machines, that's crippling my chances to escape this island. Look, my entire purpose right now is to get enough technology that I can build a plane so I can get out of here. That's my entire goal. So if dinosaurs are constantly breaking my stuff, that's not going to help. So I, you know, I need to keep my tech safe. And with the basement done, I decorated a little bit using some of these cobblestone tile blocks. These look really cool. Very cool for a ceiling. It almost reminds me of those old office drop down tiles. And yeah, I don't know. It's cool look anyway. So the point is, once I have this room sort of outfitted now, I can start putting down some dynamos. I haven't yet decided which dynamos I'm going to do. Do I want to stick with all magnetic dynamos or do I want to go a different route? Lots of options. Yeah. 
But with any of my real options, I need quartz. So I built a nether portal and I went to the nether and it's unbelievable. I spawned basically touching a portal. Truly, I can't even wrap my head around how lucky this is. Oh, check this out. On the other side of these magma slimes, there's some draconian ore. I'm not even sure what exactly I'm gonna use this for, but it can make some incredibly powerful machines. So I'm very excited to have some at my disposal. Very, very cool. Another thing I'm gonna need in my farm here is some sugar cane. So I went out to some of these sort of tiny little surrounding islands around the main island here and found some sugar cane. It wasn't too far and I didn't get attacked. Yeah, you know, I'm starting to feel kind of at ease living with these dinosaurs. I really feel, I really feel like nothing bad could possibly happen to me at this point. Nothing bad at all. I need leather for books, and I thought, hey, I'll just take down one of these easy, peaceful dinosaurs. That dude knocked me so far in the air, I came down without half a heart left. Holy cow. Holy cow. After that incredibly close brush with death I had, I decided to change up my power generation ideas. I was kind of at home recovering from the attack, and I thought I should use steam instead. I actually have a way to get a lot of oak or any other wood, really, and so I can burn that in charcoal and use that with some water to make steam, and it should be limitless power, I think. The next thing I had to do was figure out how to actually get water into these machines. So I think I know how I can get coal in and eventually charcoal, but water is a little bit more confusing. So I made something called a liquid transfer node, and I, I think I can hook that up, but it's again, it's a little confusing. I might have figured out what is going on. I can't get any water to come out of my liquid transfer pipe, but I think I, what I need is I need grid power. And that is a little confusing. So I had to make a machine called a resonator. And with the resonator, I can use polished stone and turn that into, it, it's a lot of crafting. But once I get it all done, I can make a water mill. And that water mill is gonna give me grid power all the time. And that is what I'm after. Until I can actually make a water mill, I have to actually manually do it with this little lever redstone thing. And that'll give me just a little bit of grid power, enough to make one singular upgrade, which is what I need, along with this golden pickaxe, and that way I can get a mining upgrade. This should work. And once I put it in, boom, water in all four of my steam dynamos. Fantastic. That's one problem solved. Lots and lots more problems to go. I spent the day harvesting some clay and just kept thinking about my son, Bobby. You know, it's going to be 59 days until his birthday. It's going to be seven years old. I can hardly even believe it. I vowed today that I am going to get off this island and be there for his birthday. I just need to get my stuff in order and move. If I want to get off this island, the first thing I need to do is build an airplane. And to do that, I'm going to need a computer. And to do that, I need more power. And to do that, I need a constant source of charcoal for my steam dynamos, but I have an idea. That's why I went and got clay yesterday. I made four bonsai hopper things. I don't really know what they are, but basically what I do is I put dirt in all of these and I put a sapling on top of that. And the sapling grows very quickly and will automatically harvest logs, sticks, saplings, leaves, and apples. All of these things are really good for me, except for the sticks. I don't really need those. Seriously, look at these things grow. It is awesome. It's basically a free source of logs, which I can now smelt down and turn into charcoal. I just need to get sort of the piping network all set up and yeah, that's going to be a big headache, but I can do it. Yeah, and as I was looking at the recipes for different sort of transfer nodes and things, I'm going to need ender pearls and probably quite a few of them. So to get that, I need a drop of evil from a wither skeleton. So it's time to go hunting and yeah, it's pretty scary given my level of absolute crap gear. I killed so, so, so many wither skeletons before finally, oh my goodness, finally, I got the drop of evil and I didn't die. Those are two absolutely amazing things and I am super ecstatic. It's time to get the heck out of this place.
And oh yes, using some of that draconian ore I got, I built my little mob spawning room and I put the grinder right at the front of it. The one thing I don't really remember is which way this grinder needs to face, and I don't want it to be facing the wrong way, because once I get this drop of evil in there, the cursed earth is going to spread like crazy, and yeah, I want no part of those superpowered mobs, so I had an idea. So I took my grinder over to one of these dinosaurs that so owned me a couple days ago, and I tried to just put in some coal, but, but yeah, it didn't. It didn't, it didn't work. It doesn't take coal. So I guess it only takes some sort of power. So I still want to test this and I have a couple ideas on how to do that. Remember the magmatic dynamo that I made that I ended up not needing at all? Yeah, this is going to work. So I, I have this, but it has energy in it, but um, it doesn't seem to transfer it over. So I, I might need to go get a bucket of lava. I'm not really sure what's going on here, but yeah, I went down to my mine to grab some lava. I need a conduit as well, I think, to hook this thing all up it, it's so confusing it's the grinder says it has full power but whenever i plug it in it I, I i don't it's confusing but check this out okay i put lava in and all of a sudden the thing started spinning around and yeah i don't know which way to face it so i just kind of kept turning it this way and then like that way and and seeing it. the energy buffer was moving slightly so i think it's working but man this dinosaur is not dying and then finally It happened. It worked. So the grinder, so I need to have the fan thing facing away. Yeah, it works. I got some ink and I got all the other things I need to actually get this thing all ready to go. I just gotta drop coal in, the grinder is hooked up, my alloy smelter is hooked up, the furnaces, yeah, the furnaces are not hooked up, so that's gonna be the next tax that I have to worry about. The scary thing about putting this cursed earth down is it will spread to any grass or dirt around, so that's why I put a cobblestone border and I think I have everything protected, but yeah, well, let's find out. So at the second that this goes, enhanced extra strong mobs will spawn like crazy this should be a huge source of like bones ender pearls arrows anything i could possibly need from regular mobs i i'm hoping that dinosaurs won't spawn but i'm not really sure look at that dude i made a machine called a vacuum chest this thing is pretty awesome it was a little complicated to make but once i finally got it all figured out i i, I made th there's a problem with it though that i was not aware of I broke a piece of the floor and dropped it right in there, and it filled up with items. Sweet. Totally working, right? Well, yeah, not, not so much. Several days passed between putting down the vacuum chest and finally figuring out what's going on. The vacuum chest emits light. That's a very strange thing for it to do, but it does, and that prevents mob spawning. So it works great. It picks up the stuff, but it doesn't pick up stuff through solid blocks. So yeah, I replaced it with a vacuum later, which actually does pick up stuff through solid blocks and actually works great. Yeah, it's perfect. The next problem I have is getting items out of the vacuumator is uh, the transfer node that I put on there is just incredibly slow. So I can add some speed upgrades. The problem is speed upgrades take grid power. So to make grid power, I need those water mills. You know, I started making them a while back but, and I never really finished it. So yeah, good thing. Water mills are pretty great. They'll generate up to four grid power per side of the block as long as you have flowing water going in. Easy enough. I actually had extra materials set up, so I went ahead and made a second water mill. Yeah, extra grid power can't hurt. It's already day 60. I gotta get out of here. And now with the speed upgrades done, I'm ready to put them in. And I believe if everything goes as I hope it will, I should have basically unlimited gunpowder. Things should be flowing right on out of here. But they're, they're not. Oh yeah, the machine isn't configured properly. That's right. There we go. And oh yeah, look at it unload. I set up all these storage drawers and I am rolling in gunpowder. This is going to be the key to my survival. Look, I need to get outside of my little house here and start really working on the base if I want to escape. And yeah, I want a weapon. 
And now that I have a decent amount of iron from mining, and I have now lots and lots of gunpowder, I can make a workstation. And with that workstation, look at what I can make. Oh. Oh, yes. <laughs> I had used a ton of my iron in making all the energy and things machines downstairs, so I had to go mine more. But now, finally, it is time. Let's go try out my new weapon. Yeah, my gun didn't do anything to the dinosaurs. I think they're just too big or whatever. I don't know. So I decided to take my gun and said to the nether because I want to get a bunch of blaze rods. I have a project in mind for the future that is going to be very valuable. And yeah, maybe my gun is a little bit more uh, able to handle these smaller enemies. Yeah, cool. After a very, very long time of searching, I found a blaze uh, spawner that was completely enclosed so they can't just fly away, and so I can harvest the blaze rods a little easier. My gun's working great for this, but unfortunately, to get the stuff, I still have to kind of go up there every once in a while and get it. But I did so without really any uh, issues. So, yeah, not terrible, and I have a good amount of blaze rods, so I can eventually make fuel. That's a good thing. Oh my goodness, I finally have a proper house with a roof and everything. Feels good. I mean, look, I don't plan on staying here for very much longer. I need to get back to my son, but for right now, hey, I have a roof over my head and I'm happy. I have a small problem though with my mob farm. I did not think about this, but skeletons drop a lot of bows and armor. So I made a trash can and set it as the last priority. That way everything that doesn't have a storage drawer goes straight in the trash. I might lose a couple valuable things, but honestly right now I really only have this for gunpowder. Everything else is kind of sugar on top, icing on top. What? Icing on top of the cake, that's it. But things weren't always going to be so peaceful. I was out harvesting some things and I noticed a big problem. The dinosaurs are getting aggressive. They're starting to break blocks all over. Now they have not yet broken into my house, but what the heck? That dude just out of the blue attacked me. It took a long time, but I finally killed him. But look what happened. Now, thank goodness, and I don't understand why, but mobs didn't spawn and overrun my entire base. Maybe enough light got in that they didn't spawn, but I am very, very lucky. None of my machines or chests were destroyed and no terribly dangerous mobs escaped. This could have been terrible. I need to deal with this dinosaur menace. I decided after that, it was time for some sweet, sweet revenge. I used a lot of materials and I made a grenade launcher and a lot of grenades. My bloodlust was running high. It was time to pay these guys back. Okay, so these things are just unkillable completely. I hit that thing with about 10 grenades and it just looked at me. I mean, honestly, I. Anyway, so moving on to plan two, we're gonna build a wall 
of obsidian. <laughs> if you can't beat them, keep them out at least. I discovered something about my gun. It has full automatic mode and it can own these. Yeah, I chewed through a lot of ammunition, but you know what? With my mob farm, I have enough gunpowder now. Check this beast out. Come tend the garden with me. We have so many seeds to sow. When the harvest comes in, it will be time to share what we have grown. We were having the time of our lives when we started. Everything was grooving. But I'm noticing lately we've been half-hearted. West Side Story don't feel pretty anymore. Feeling free Like we were properly stoned Till you liked everything I spent days working on the landscaping outside and farming up yet more obsidian. I want to have a ton of it because I want to try to make a wall made out of pillars. Now these dinosaurs are very big, so I think I don't need a complete wall. I think I could just make a system of pillars. I'm kind of remembering whenever you're trying to keep people from going out of a parking lot or going in, these little pillars that rise out of the ground, they're really dangerous because they're easy to miss and drive over. I'm not saying I did it. I'm just saying... It could. So yeah, so I went with these cool looking obsidian pillars and I want to test it out and see if this will keep the dinosaurs from breaking through my walls. Hopefully it will. I hope. Oh yeah, okay, so the dinosaur fits right between those pillars, no problem. All right, that's fine. I got more obsidian and fixed this stupid wall. Okay, I thought, now let's do it. So I lured a dinosaur back, another one, because I wanted to make sure that it can't just break the obsidian wall. I want to know for sure that I'm going to be safe. Uh, there's a problem though, of course there is. Yeah, he just decided to stand right there in the corner, and I can't get a shot at him. I can't hit him with a club. Nothing. He's just going to live there in the corner, and if I get too close to him, he's going to kill me. That's fun. Fun stuff, dinosaurs. With only a couple more weeks until my son's birthday, I need to plan my exit strategy here. I have blaze rods, I have ender pearls. Those are the two components I need for fuel. I still need more materials to actually build a plane, but more than that, I need a computer to actually build it. Yeah, that's gonna be a headache, but it's one that I need to get on. All right, well, we're living in a dinosaur world. Let's go build a computer. I need to make a whole bunch of alloys and that is going to take a while. So I spent the rest of my day building up some automated charcoal production. So the idea is I'm going to be taking oak logs out of these chests, putting it right in the furnaces and then pulling the charcoal that is going to cook out and putting it right into my dynamos. This should give me enough power to power a computer, I think, forever. I mean, for at least the next couple weeks, which is really all I'm concerned with. There are actually better conduits that I could have used, but I already had these made and just went ahead and used them, and they're fine. They're fine. I'm getting power. I'm moving the logs around. But my big concern is running out of logs. You know, I could chew through a lot of these very quickly, so I grabbed a filter. That was my first attempt, and decided I'll just filter only oak logs. But then I thought, wait, these chests are going to fill up with sticks and leaves and apples and everything else. I need a better idea. 
The cool thing about using these Ender I.O. conduits is they can occupy the same space. So the front of the furnaces here can have both uh, RF energy and also items to be pulled out and put into the dynamos. That's a good start. But again, I'm a little worried about my production. I still need to look at this a little bit more. After literally a day or two of just fiddling with this, I finally got worked out exactly how I'm going to do this. For one thing, I need more production. So I added more chests and that was easy. And then I also added storage drawers in the wall. So the idea is these extra utilities pipes go in order of how they hit. So I made sure to have the storage drawers first and then after that the furnaces. So the storage drawers will take the saplings, the leaves, the apples and the sticks, leaving all of the oak logs to go into the furnaces. Should work out really well, I think. To make the first component of my computer, I need slime balls, and to get those, I need to find a swamp. Well, I can't remember where that swamp was, so I just kind of took a boat around and started driving. I saw this little village and came to see if there were any survivors here, and there were, for a little bit. These zombies are crazy, and look at them. They're all over the place. It was an intense night. The next day, I managed to find my old swamp base where I started here. Man. This is crazy. There are so many crocodiles or whatever these are, alligator dinosaur things. And yeah, they are terrible. Leaving this was the best decision I've made since I came to this place. That being said, I need to wait until nighttime, get some slime balls and get back. I need to get out of here. I struck out, no slimes at all, but I did manage to find a tar pit on my way back to my island. And uh, yeah, after I dealt with that creeper that really, really was close to killing me, I managed to get two buckets of tar. I think I can use this. And finally, on day 90, I made my first computer part. It's a controller. It took a while to make, but once I have this done, I only need a couple more parts and I should be able to craft my plane. Oh, look at this. Isn't it a beauty? Here I am stuck on a primitive dinosaur island and I have technology. The last thing I need to complete my computer is a disk drive. That's right, floppy disk. I made a 4K disk and I'm gonna put it in the drive and with that, I can dump everything I have. Well, not quite everything, it'll run on space, it's only 4K, but I can put all my main crafting components in. I think it's about time to actually get busy. I actually need to make some red concrete for the next craft. It's kind of weird, but yeah, I need to make red concrete. So, well, it's not too bad. Drop in water and harvest it back up. With that red concrete, I made a workstation. And with the workstation, I can make vehicles. And they're pretty expensive. They take a lot of materials. And I have used most of everything I have to get this far. But the big thing that I can make, yeah, the big thing is I can make a plane. <laughs> I was woefully short of materials to make this thing and well, I need to go do a lot of harvesting. So it took me a couple days to gather just enough iron, 180 iron ingots. Yeah, it took a while, then I had to double it after that. So, but finally we're ready. I could make an engine. You put the engine in the plane, you paint the plane whatever color you want. Yeah, I'm ready to craft this thing. I was ready to put my plane down on my little road runway thing that I have here and, well, not do anything because planes require gas and I don't have any of that. So, back to the workshop. After a whole lot more crafting and some more iron gathering, I have all the commodes I need to make fuel. Fuelium, I think it's called. So you need two of those guys and one of these guys and then I gotta pipe it all together. I gotta say, these pipes are incredibly confusing. I finally ended up getting it, but 
Yeah, they're they're very tricky, and I think I need two pumps and lots of pipes, and you put the pumps on the other thing, and then they need redstone. It's a whole thing. But regardless, through a lot of trial and a lot of error, I finally got it all put together. Last thing I need to make is a drum and some fuel cans, and I should be ready to craft this fuelium. I put ender pearls in one with some coal, and I put a blaze rod in the other with some coal, and I should be ready to make this stuff. But there is some sort of problem. I know that I need levers to get a redstone signal to actually make the pumps work, but yet still it's not working. Hmm. Glowstone. It requires glowstone. That works. So now I am finally making fuel. I'm filling up my drum. Next thing I need to do is just make a regular gas can. I can fill up the gas can, fill up my plane, and I'm out of here. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make my son's birthday. Hallelujah. I took one last look around and I got in my plane. It's time to get out of here. It's time to go home. Well, well, well. We did it. 100 days on Dinosaur Island with Percy Baskin. He escaped. He headed back to his son. If you don't know my videos, you want to make sure to stay for the post credit scene. This one in particular is extra adorable. I think you'll really enjoy it. Enough of this. Alexa, establish satellite link. Satellite link established. Alexa, call home. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi, buddy. Why is your rain this going to start to move it? It is? Yes. I miss you so much. I miss you so much, too. I'm coming home soon. I'm, I can't wait to see you. I can't wait to see you, too. I'll see you soon, bud. Bye. I woke up in a tree this morning. It seems that I've taken a hard hit to the head and it's still bleeding a bit. I don't remember what happened or who I am. I can't find any people or signs of life. I seem to be all alone in the forest here. Probably need some tools to make sure I can survive. I have nothing except for this body cam I found turned on and the clothes on my back. In the case I don't make it out of here, I decided to leave this log so that if someone finds me, or at least my family, if I have a family, they'll know what happened to me. I found a bit of coal laying sort of in an open area. I don't have any interest in going into a cave anytime soon, so I was very fortunate to find coal and enough stone that maybe I could actually cobble together a furnace and cook up some food. I found such a lucky spot. Not only did I find coal, but I found iron, which is going to allow me to make much better tools and maybe even some armor that I can put over my body, which at this point I feel pretty vulnerable and exposed if there's wild animals or even something worse in this area. Night is going to be coming soon and I am more than a little bit concerned about being left out in nature during nightfall. I need to find some shelter and this cave might be exactly what I need. I just kept on mining for most of the day and just kept finding so much coal and iron. Not a lot of food though. The only food I have on my body right now is a handful of berries and 
I know those aren't going to last very long. It wasn't very long, though, until I started getting a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach. I just knew it. My very first night out here of all the damned luck. A blood moon. I need to get back to my little cave and seal off the entrance. If there is anything out here with any ill will towards me or anyone else, it's going to be coming tonight. I had to run back out onto the surface to grab my furnace and the iron that was smelting in it. I didn't want to leave that out there during a blood moon, and that is when everything changed. What are these? Fortunately, I had made myself a rudimentary stone sword because this thing was coming for my brains. I had to take it out and then get back into my hole where I could throw up a hastily constructed wall. I just hope it holds. This is my first great mistake. I started getting worried that the amount of zombies pushing against the cobblestone wall would cave it in when I made a little hole to have them drop into a pit, but the pit wasn't deep enough and the zombies got in. This was my only home. It was my only sanctuary. I had to act quickly. I put together a little wall and I dug down and I took out the zombies by just aiming at their feet. But there were many. There were so many. I broke several swords in just killing zombies this way, but I made it through the night. By the time I got out of my hole, it was already mid-morning. There were a few zombie stragglers to dispatch, and I had a lot of things to do today. I need to deal with my food situation and my armor situation. I can't be running out here in blue jeans and a shirt and expect to survive the zombie apocalypse. I dug a hole deep down in the earth thinking I could find some more precious minerals down here and also brought all the wood that I had on me to make some ladders so I could crawl back up to my cave base. I figured I'll be able to find better stuff and I'll be a lot safer from zombies if I'm far away from the surface where they can smell me. I found enough iron that night to outfit myself in iron boots, iron pants, and an iron helmet, which in addition to a gold shirt that I took off a zombie actually gave me a full set of armor and boy, boy do I feel better about things. Then, man oh man, things changed for me. I found diamonds, and not just diamonds, but I found at least three which is enough to make a pickaxe, and that's going to help me harvest a lot more diamonds, I hope. And this was a great night. So after two days, I had a full set of armor, a shelter of sorts, a accidental mob grinder, and three diamonds. Very nice. The next morning, I cautiously made my way out of my hole and realized it was raining. So, boo. But regardless, I have to eat. The only thing I remembered is that I have a potato that I want to eat, but I can't because I need to plant it. But I know where there's some berries, so I'm going to head up there and try to find them. I had to kill one zombie on the way up to get the berries. There aren't a lot up here, but they don't do a lot either. The only thing that I can really think is to bring these bushes somehow back to my base, so I have maybe a whole bunch of them. I tried replanting the berries in the ground, and that doesn't work, so... Maybe I'll just have to make this journey every time I need a little snack. These things really don't heal a lot and don't fill my belly very much, but at least it's better than zombie flesh. Pigs! I found pigs on the way back! Oh man, I can almost smell the bacon dripping off these cute little buggers. I tried working at night tonight and yeah, it didn't go well. The zombies, they're just everywhere and yeah, they're slow and yeah, they don't hit that hard when they do occasionally get hit in, but they're so relentless, even if I can kill them all and not get hurt at all, which didn't always happen. Uh, there, I can't get anything done because there's just too many of them. So I am going to uh, head back to my hole and go back and do a little bit of mining. Food is really becoming an issue. I need to do something about that for sure tomorrow. I built a farm today and man, I am really, really happy about it. So I not only did I build a farm, but I've been thinking a lot about how I can work at night. Since I don't have a bed yet, my nights are pretty restless just laying there on my cold stone floor. So I thought, well, if I build a wall around my farm, I should be able to light it up enough. As long as the zombies can't get over the wall, I think it's high enough they won't be able to, for right now at least, then I should be good. There's a little test subject right now. After spending some time seeing these zombie hordes gather and the sheer size of them, the thought of being overrun just seems all too real. I've spent the last four days gathering supplies. It's time to work on making sure I'm safe, or at least as safe as I can be. 
went across the river and started harvesting trees. And let me just tell you, these dynamic trees, they are pretty awesome. But boy, oh boy, I would not mind having some vanilla saplings right now because they take a long time to break. You have to wait for the loot and you only get like three or four logs from them. Uh, and they take days and days and days to grow. I want to install gates going out each direction of my base. That way, if there's a giant zombie horde, oh, look, more berries, then I can at least escape my base. Escapability is going to be really clutch, just in case. I wouldn't mind having some underground tunnels that maybe come out in different locations as well. It was time to see the world around me. I ventured out and found some mountains, a swamp, but then it happened. I am not alone. I found a village, and thinking there was only one person other than me left in the world, went to work taking all of his crops. But I wasn't going to leave him there to starve. He, let's call him Bob, was coming home with me to live in luxury in my hole in the ground. We had some close encounters in our boat, and I even put my own life at risk just to save him. Then, as we were forced to double back and follow the water, we passed his village, and I saw it. Bob had a family. I left Bob out and tried to talk to the others, tried to replant some of their food, but the horde was on us. I was forced to flee. I hope I drew the horde away from Bob and his family, but I don't know. I just don't know. I hope Bob's okay. The following morning, I decided that I would massively expand my farming food situation today. You know, we're officially living out here at this point. I'm going to be by myself for, well, one week and counting. It's time to get some crops going. I'm going to need a lot of leather if I want to dive into enchanting, and the only cows I've seen are very, very far away. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that. But then, a miracle happened. I happened to be holding a pillaged potato near one of these random goats, and it seemed interested. When I fed a couple of them, they actually bred. Now I'm hoping they dropped delicious goat meat and also leather. Yum. Oh boy, here we go again. Blood Moon. Time to take my new clock down to the mines and get to work looking for some more diamonds. Well, we're officially in week two now. I can hardly believe I've been out in nature this long. I feel like I'm wasting time. I decided to basically redo all of my farming from yesterday. Placing wheat outside my current walls and bringing carrots and potatoes in. Carrots and potatoes are probably going to be my primary food source for a good while, and wheat's going to be mostly for the animals. It felt like, if I am surrounded by zombies, this is the way to go. After all that, I just mined. I still have no replacement for diamonds for my quickly dying pickaxe, and I don't want to revert back to iron life. Last night while I was mining, I had plenty of time to consider my situation. The thing is, I don't really know where I stand. I need to see a bit around me to know when and where the threats are coming from, so I built a small tower today. Look, this isn't going to be in any competition for the Eiffel Tower or anything, but... You know, at the end of the day, when I looked over the sunset after the rain finally stopped, it was good. I feel good. Day 10. You know, I feel like the 10th day should be notable, but I can't really think about that because I am so tired of sleeping on the cold, hard stone floor of my base. I need to go out today and find some wool. I decided it would be best to connect the little lake near my house to the main ocean on the other side of this small land bridge. It'd be easier to bring animals back to the base or even possibly villager transport, so I dug a small canal and I'll build some retaining walls here later on. Zombies aren't the only scary thing that could kill me in this world. I had a nasty encounter with a mean-ass boar. I barely escaped with my life. Leave it to me to handle zombies without issue, but almost die to a glorified pig. I found a mushroom island and lots of mushrooms, but no sheep. As tasty as some delicious steak would be, I am not sure how to get these mushrooms back to the base because I had to walk over land and up a few mountains to even get there. It might be a tough haul. I spent all of day 11 in the mines. I need a few things. Firstly, diamonds. My pick is dying, and I sure don't want to go back to iron. You know, that's a thing, right? It's so hard to go backwards in life. You start making more money at work, and inevitably your bills will rise to match that. Sure, we can afford a new car now. It's often hard to conceive of making less. And if the situation does occur, boy, that's a tough pill to swallow. It could be any situation, really. If you're the first chair trumpet player uh, and you get demoted down to second, 
It's no fun listening to someone else play the solos and get all that praise. I know, I've been there. But when you're faced with that situation, you have to make a choice. Do you buckle in and double down on practice time, grind time, extra hours of work time? Or do you just resign yourself to using that iron pick for the rest of your life in this cold, dark world? Oh, uh, never mind. I found diamonds. We're, uh, we're all good. Later on, I returned up to the surface, and sure enough, of course, it was dark again. But darn it, I need this wall to be done, so... I did something, again, I probably should not have done, and I went ahead and built this at night only two meters taller than the zombies. These dudes can absolutely reach me. I didn't know that at the time, but eventually they did get hit in, and I ran back to my base uh, very quickly. But uh, hey, look, at least I have a partial wall that come daylight I'm going to be able to really work on. When dawn finally broke, I did have a thought. I wonder... If this horde is attracted to me, the light, the base, what? So I jumped in a boat and I rode across this giant, giant lake just outside my base. I rode and I waited a minute and they turned around and I came right back. I wondered if the horde would sort of just wander away if I was not quite, uh, let's say, within render of them or not. And it worked. Well, by the time I got back, there were just a couple stragglers, but for the most part, the horde had actually dispersed. This made me think of another idea. What if I had an escape tunnel, but walking is much slower than boats. So instead of an escape tunnel, what if I had a bit of an escaped waterway? An escape waterway that led away, where I could go away, lead the horde away, and then quickly come back, and hopefully they would have no idea where I was, and they would just be gone. I spent the entire night building this thing, and I'm hopeful that this will be a great way to get rid of the zombie horde rather than standing there and killing them for an hour every morning. First thing I want to do the following day is test my theory. So I'm going to grab a boat and row away as quick as I can, turn around, come back, and see if the zombies are sure enough gone. I have to wait till a few zombies kind of gather around here and then give it a shot. Yeah, it didn't work. I was very hopeful, and I still am to a point I'm not as confident as I was before. I think maybe I need to extend the waterway a good bit further. These guys could apparently still see me, so we'll try that another day. Another thing I want to do is I want to breed my goats and get uh, enough bookcases so I can get a level 30 enchant, darn it. Well, the time has come for these goats. I'm sorry, guys, but y'all gotta go. I need your leather in a bad way. I slaughtered them all and took a lot of damage on the way, actually. These guys can ram right through that fence gate. That's kind of weird. But you know what? In the end, I got enough leather for all of the bookcases I need. The next bottleneck that I have is enough sugarcane, so I'm going to work on planning and expanding that along the coast here of this lake. I did mine all day to replenish all of my wasted? Maybe not. Maybe so. Cobblestone on this waterway, because again, I'm just about out. The silver lining is I found obsidian after I blocked off the water and uh, potential zombies, I hope. It was fairly safe to mine, and I returned with 14 obsidian, which is exactly what I needed. The next day, I was all excited to make my enchanting setup. I had visions of Fortune 3 dancing in my head, and it was about then that I realized that you need two diamonds to make an enchanting table, and even though I had the obsidian, I finally have the books. I do not have two diamonds to make that. So, oh boy, back to mining for another night. It didn't take long, honestly, and I found four more diamonds, which is fantastic. Look, five would have been really, really nice because that would have been enough for my enchanting table and also another pickaxe because you can see the durability of my pickaxe. It's... It's getting worrisome, but you know what? Hey, I'm not going to be a, uh, a beggar nor a chooser. I'm going to be very just happy with my four diamonds. So I'm going to head up and I'm going to make my enchanting table today. And with whatever light we have left, I'm going to head across the lake there and harvest as much spruce and oak as we can. Honestly, I'm growing to really despise these dynamic trees. They look awesome. They're great for world building, but they are uh, not great for getting a lot of materials in a decent amount of time. The old greenhouse is really starting to come along. Here I have nice sized rows for wheat, carrots, and potatoes. And uh, it's going to be nice to not be out in sort of the wide open. You know, I had dreams of maybe having rolling fields of wheat in this world. And then I remembered 
what the heck are you thinking, Fix, you freaking dolt? There are hordes of zombies that are coming to eat your brains. We don't need rolling fields of wheat here. Let's just put them in a nice building that you can put a roof and you can light everything up and it will be relatively safe. So that's what I have been doing and I am glad. All right, come on, baby. Give me something good. Fortune 3! Oh, and efficiency 4. Oh, I'm so lucky. Awesome. Let me, let me just stop and just tell you, I am so happy to have an enchanted pick. I hit the jackpot almost, basically. No one breaking. Okay, fine. But I got efficiency 4 and fortune 3 on my first try. Thank goodness. Having fortune 3 on your first try is the most clutch thing you can get, I think. Because now if I find more diamonds, boom, I'm, in, I'm, I'm awesome. I did go ahead and use my two remaining diamonds that I had to repair my pickaxe enough to hopefully give it a little boost of durability so I can mine enough stuff to get me some more diamonds, but uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's not, it's not completely full. Hopefully it's enough. I found a crazy new biome underground. There's colored terracotta everywhere. I wanted to really check it out, but it opened up into a large, unlit cave, and yeah, I want no part of that. If I weren't playing in hardcore, I would be all over it, but um, yeah, maybe not. Diamonds! Oh, baby diamonds! Everything is looking up now with my new Fortune 3 pickaxe. I now have over two dozen diamonds. I'm freaking rich. Oh man, diamond armor may be in my future. Starting working on the skylights for the greenhouse overnight. Wood is actually becoming a real, real, real drag. I know I've said this about 10 times in this vlog, but I really miss vanilla trees. I may need to actually address that. I believe that there are some vanilla trees out there somewhere in just random other biomes, but uh, none near me. But it might be worth a, worth a trip. They're so awesome, these dynamic trees are. They're, you know, the, But the reality is, I planted three spruce trees probably about five or six days ago and they're tiny little bushes if i cut them down now i'd get like one spruce log i know eventually they'll grow nice and big and that would be fine but i have a freaking zombie apocalypse on my hands here i don't have time for this i need a two by two spruce tree is what i really need and about a hundred of them I took a journey today to go find a vanilla sapling. I need a ton of wood, and if I could just find a regular spruce tree, I'd be rolling. Especially now that I can enchant my diamond axe. I stayed out way too long, and I had a scary journey back home. I made it safely, but let me tell you, there's something so nice and calm about rowing the rivers here. Yeah, I know the eels want to suck my blood and zombies want to eat my brains and even goats want to impale my guts with their horns. Yeah, I... Okay, maybe it's not so relaxing, but yeah, just check it out. It's nice. I had spent the early pre-dawn mornings of my 20th day out here in nature mining again. I really want diamond armor to better protect me. Should I get trapped or run down by another freaking boar? Well, it's raining again, but something weird is happening here today. Are the zombies gathered around my wall moving a bit faster? Look, maybe I was just tired from sleeping on my stone floor yet again, but I swear they're moving a decent bit faster than before. If I'm right, this may be a bad thing. I did some more enchanting today and I got lucky. I got efficiency 4 on a diamond axe and silk touch on a new diamond pickaxe. Some combining later and I have two efficiency 4 unbreaking 3 pickaxes, one with silk touch and one with fortune as well as a third pick for just grinding cobble. Look, I am excited to actually gather spruce now. I feel like this is going to be a real game changer for my entire build. It's a new age. Nothing bad can happen now. 
Diamonds are everywhere. I got 30 more diamonds on this mining trip. Now, I actually wouldn't mind a blood moon right now because I need levels now. So maybe I could get them all in my murder hole and just take out their knees again. Just at dusk, I did something kind of dumb. I have an idea for a uh, good wall going around the entire base, and I want to start building it. The problem is zombies found me as I was about halfway done. My old existing walls were breached. I hurried through and got it built up high enough they couldn't get through, but uh, yeah, it was a very close call. Overnight, my newly secured base, I did start to work on a real actual storage building. Now that I have enough stone and a steady source of wood on the way, things are looking up. Today was a big day for me. I went around and reinforced the wall up to higher than I believe any zombie or, well, hopefully any other creature could breach and threw wood slabs on top. Then I felt so good about it, I took down most of the interior walls in my base. I think I'm safe. Well, I suppose we'll test it out. How long ago was I hoping for a blood moon? Because here it is. Let's see if my walls hold up. You know, I had a brilliant idea during this blood moon. Remember that one bucket of lava that I picked up randomly while caving one time? Well, I dug a new five wide murder hole for zombies. And when I felt I was ready, I broke a hole under the zombies. And surely enough, they fell in like a bunch of noobs. I probably burned about a thousand zombies last night. Feels good, man. I spent the entire night and then day and then night again working on my base. It's not my imagination. These zombies are definitely moving faster. They're not close to my speed yet, but it's starting to change, and I surely hope that they don't continue to speed up. The storage building's actually starting to look pretty nice. I think as I was building this and taking the time to really make it look decent, it occurred to me that this is the new world. I don't think there's going to be a coming back from this for humanity. Whatever happened, this is the end times. I may as well not live in a dump. You know, sometimes I think about Bob. I hope he and his family made it through that horde. I need to go check on him soon. Now that I have a house, they might want to come live with me, and I would surely welcome the company. Again, I spent yet another day working on the base. It's so nice to have access to, well, anything that's not cobblestone, to be honest. I would sure love to have another wood type, but you know what? I'm about done with dynamic trees. I had a brilliant idea. Based on the huge success of the five small block wide lava trap, I thought, why not go all the way around the base with it? I'll be honest, though, I was very nervous about digging this narrow hole with no visibility. It is scary. I got the ditch mostly dug and will need to go hard on lava tomorrow. The nether is even more scary for a freak death than zombie hordes at the moment, so I need to be very, very careful. It's a funny thing. I'm exactly one block away from total disaster, and yet I spent a big part of today working at a very relaxed pace on the base. I love bringing all this color in, and well, there's going to be a blood moon again tonight, so I may have a problem, but it doesn't feel that I will. I think as long as I don't do anything dumb, I have a very secure home here. My ditch is dug only too deep all the way around, uh, but there's no lava or anything else. A crap ton of zombies fell in, and, well, I guess they might be there just about forever. I'm going to have to go get to the nether tomorrow and get some lava, and I don't know. Should I just dump it on their heads? It's a crazy world, man. After I get this rolling, I'm absolutely finishing this ditch business. I think it's going to be a great idea, but I'll have to go deeper than I thought before. My little test run with trap doors, well, the trap doors are made of wood and they caught fire from being close to the lava. So not a great start. We'll have to edit the plan just a little bit. After deepening the pit another few blocks, I think I'm ready for some lava. So it's nether time. Well, damn. 
The nether is filled with unholy undead just like the overworld. This is not ideal, but well, I guess I gotta do what I gotta do. I made a path down to the lava lake and took my newly made 12 buckets and went to work. I think it will be okay, but next time I come to the nether, I need to bring slabs and stairs to make sure I don't have a welcoming party waiting for me as my uh, little arrival area. You know, that couple, first couple seconds that you zone into the nether, you are extremely, extremely vulnerable and, well, let's just hope that there's not about 20 zombies standing on the other side of the portal. I got a decent amount of lava set up today and actually ran out of cobblestone, so tonight I'm going to be back to the grind underground. But building has been actually a really nice change of pace. The first 25 days of this, I was just trying to breathe. I was just trying to live and get enough food to continue on to the next day. It's been really nice to put a few things together that actually make me feel like living here in my little town, I guess. The zombies aren't really falling in the mob trap, unfortunately. Well, they do after the mob gets so big that they just kind of push their friends in. But I think some trap doors should do the trick. That's going to be expensive, though, because I'm going to have to either make them out of iron or raise the ground a little bit. I might have an idea, though. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It's going to take some major landscape in the outside. I accidentally spent the entire daylight hours in the mine today. I got a little bit mixed up. By the time I came up, it was nighttime, so I just turned right back around and went back down. I just need a lot of cobblestone. Even after I finish the walls and my current base where it is now, I want to have sort of satellite bases around just in case things get really bad, especially if these zombies continue to mutate and get faster and harder. Yeah, I need a place to go just in case. I finished all the lava surrounding the base in my little zombie pit. I feel like I'm hitting my stride on the base and it's really starting to come together. You know, I realized today that I haven't seen Bob in quite some time. I need to make sure that I go out and see him. Maybe, maybe after I get this base completely secured on the outside as well. I had all the plans of working outside today, but a terrible thunderstorm stole my thunder... Well, anyway, the, with the clouds, I, apparently zombies are out and ready to play, so I'll be staying home safe and secure inside my walls. Weird thing happened though, I swear the zombies are moving faster again. I believe it's been exactly 10 days since the last time I thought about that. Could the virus be changing, evolving, mutating? This is bad. Seems like the possible incubation period between mutations may be about 10 days, and they're not faster than me yet, but they're not that much slower. Also, when I was working, I swear a zombie came up behind me completely silently. I have been counting on their groans to sort of keep me aware of where they are. I can't think of much scarier than a quiet zombie. This is bad. This is really bad. What a beautiful day today was. I used the sunlight to dispatch a few zombies, then worked on leveling outside the walls. I want to put some flowing water that will push any zombies outside into lava. I think this will go uh, all into a secondary wall that I will hope to work on maybe in the upcoming days. I'm feeling so much better about my defenses, even with the horde's increased speed. I think I'm kind of safe. I, so far, I've not seen any sign of them breaching the walls. I started working on the exterior wall today. The more I keep thinking about a breach, the more I keep thinking about adding walls with multiple escape paths. It's a tough one though. If I make a path, that means a horde of zombies could potentially follow that path as well as me. Maybe I need some sort of funneling system. At night when I was caving, I did find a spawner and before I could engage my body recorder, it exploded into a few zombies, a witch, and a couple cave spiders. 
After I killed them, I followed that little cave and found the weirdest thing, a sort of uh, a spider web dungeon. Nice blocks here, though. Maybe I can build with it. And most importantly, I got six string, which equals two bows. And that is wonderful. Not enough for a bed, unfortunately, but at least bows. The funneling system is going to be much, much better than my old system. All the zombies will be directed into one of two different entrances, then flushed right into lava. It's a win-win because I'll also have a second wall for more defense and a walled-in green section for tree harvesting. Boom! I'm really psyched about this change. Additionally, I can reduce my risk of falling in lava and dying a fiery death alongside of my uh, my zombie enemies here by uh, covering most of the work that I've done already, but it's going to be worth it because, uh, well, yeah, lava, I get to fall in it exactly one time, and that will be the end of Old Fix. Not a lot to say about today. I worked on landscaping my funnel system all day and night. Fortunately, I have a ton of dirt saved up from base building, so I could actually start filling in some of these holes. It's weird, actually. I want the zombies to get to my inner wall, but only where it's fortified. I don't want them to get trapped underground and become a real nuisance. Yeah, so about that. Spoiler alert on this. They do get trapped underground and do become a nuisance. It's a real pain in the butt. It finally happened today. When I started playing with lava, I think I always knew in the back of my brain that it was going to end poorly. And, well, this happened. Oh, oh no, 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 block, block, put a block down, block, block, no zombies, no, 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 water, 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 oh, water, 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 oh, crap, crap, man, this fire's never going to out. Oh, uh, water, 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 jeez, holy cow, holy cow, man, holy cow. Yeah, I fell in when I was working on my funnel system. I have no idea how I made it out alive. Man, these days are short. I feel like I get about three minutes of work in during the daylight before the zombies come out and play. Really wish I had a bed about now. Day 36, it's a blood moon, and this is going to be a great chance to test my funnel. I have a few thoughts after seeing this in action. I'm going to build up the walls and cap them with the slab ASAP, then address the water situation. Well, this took ages, but I believe my zombie funneling system is a wild success. By using signs to stop the water, I can keep water flowing a bit faster right up to the edge of the lava. The problem with using the trapdoors on the edge is they fought and fought not to fall in. Now, occasionally when they would build up, they'd sort of push each other, but I need faster deaths. Uh, with the faster water, this should push them right in. Uh, sweet. Awesome. I am grateful for a Blood Moon again, uh, the second night in a row, because I give this a full test here. I want to see if this would hold up under an extreme stress test, and surely this Blood Moon is it. Super fun to see all these undead become, well, uh, quite dead. Tomorrow I'm going to work more on a second gate, and this brings me to another idea, actually. I wonder if it's possible to lure these zombies away, at least a portion of them, before they get even up to the funnel. I got the second funnel all set up, and this is perfect. Water on one side and funnels on two of the others. I am just about totally protected. Well, Blood Moon again tonight. I suppose I should maybe just start calling this just the moon as it's nearly every night. But honestly, other than noise, it's no biggie. Maybe I should, I should play the lottery if there were still a lottery. Well, I worked all night on getting the outer walls lit up and things are going great. Honestly, I am hoping to do some actual building tomorrow, bring in some details and make this less death by cobble and more of a luxury where maybe I can ride out the apocalypse in some, uh, some style. How about that? I did a lot of landscaping outside the main walls today. Uh, you know, okay, I need names for this. It's getting very confusing. Let's call the inside the keep. The middle area is the courtyard. Okay, so I worked all night on landscaping the courtyard. There, that, that feels better. Through the night, I worked on a main concept uh, for towers that I want to start adding all over the place. As long as they're lit up, they should be plenty safe, and it should give me multiple vantage points, and also another little escape place just in case the main courtyard or keep get overrun. Day 40. 
This is the day I've been dreading. You know, when night comes and the hordes come out, where do they go during the daytime? Where are they hiding? Are they getting stronger and faster, harder to kill? I mean, it didn't take long for me to realize that yes, yes to all of that. These guys are moving fast now. If I go out in nature, I am very, very likely to run into real trouble. If they keep getting faster, there won't be any place I can ever go again. I have a lot to think about tonight as I continue to add more towers to the wall. As of yet, I haven't seen a zombie that can climb a ladder though. I'm not sure they can't climb a ladder, but for now, it's what I'm basing a large part of my defense on. It's a bit of a discouraging day. I need to get those pigs back in the safety of my walls ASAP. Tower building all day and blood moon night. Yeah, again, another blood moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thankfully my funnel system is awesome, but I think the numbers are growing each blood moon. I need to find a way to distract them and keep the, at least some of them away. You know, my base is super well lit up for good reason, but I have a feeling the light are pulling these suckers in like moths to a candle. I can't help the light, but perhaps I could work out some sort of system to pull some to another place, maybe another lava trap. I don't know. I, if the hordes keep getting bigger, I need to figure out some way to thin them somewhat so they don't end up just completely surrounding the, uh, the fortress here. I decided that I want to be see a little bit better around me, and my puny little starter lookout tower was, uh, well, let's say a glorified stepladder, basically. So it's time to do some home renovation. I brought the top of the tower up a ton so I could see any huge hordes coming from a long way off, and built the roof using only lower slabs and stairs, which should be safe. Just to be sure, I'll light it up as well. Uh, look, the top looked a little bit silly, I know, a little bit oversized compared to my single log support, so I brought up four more logs to give some extra health to the build. I don't think it's going to win any best in show awards, but you know what? It's functional and hella high right now. I should be pretty safe. I remember that I had a bunch of clay from my early days in this world, and, you know, I could use some color that's not gray or brown in my life, so, hey, brick roads, here we come. I love how vibrant it makes the inside of my base look, and it wants me to bring in even more nature, actually. Speaking of bringing in more nature, actually, I brought my pigs in, finally, and started breeding them up. I think I'll work out a small little bacon and breakfast section here if I could just find some eggs. Man, eggs and bacon in the morning? That'd be a little taste of civilization, I think. I can't believe this. I thought the mushroom biome was so, so, so far away, and with the enhanced mutated speed of the zombies, I had basically written that off forever. I was thinking about how I wanted to add some nature to the base and went out to share some oak birch leaves only to find out that the mushroom biome is just like barely past these trees. I'm such a tool. I managed to run back to the base and get some wheat and actually still had enough time left in the day to bring the slowest and dumbest moving animals in the entire world back inside the safety of my walls. Come on. Come, what? What? No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, you stupid board! Oh, 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 guys, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I feel really bad. We did have a sad moment, though. We were attacked by a damn boar and one mushroom. Well, I will name her Cleo. She sacrificed herself to buy the other three of her family a chance to escape. I managed to kill the boar, but we still mourn Cleo and honor her sacrifice. I spent the day marking little roads and paths for myself within the keep and the courtyard. It feels so much more like an actual planned permanent living situation with the paths, you know? Well, did you hear what I just said? Uh, I, permanent. I guess I'm admitting that maybe this is the permanent world now. There's maybe no help coming. Maybe there's no end to this. Maybe this is all there is. <laughs> paused my voiceover while reality kind of washed over me. I'll admit that I am sad to think that this is it. This is all there is, but you know, then the more I sit here that looking at the replay of my body cam footage from that day, the more I take in all that I've managed to build. If I'm starting to think this is indeed permanent, maybe that's not a terrible thing. Maybe I'm starting to truly believe that I can actually make it here. Fend off the never-ending hordes, plant and grow crops, learn animal husbandry on the fly, Perhaps I can actually do this.
I spent day 46 feeling rejuvenated. I worked on landscaping outside the walls today, and a blood moon rose. I was killing some zombies trapped in a small cave, and I didn't want to leave them alive, but I stayed out too long. I ran like hell to get back to my base, but it was really close. If the virus mutates again in a few days, I don't know that I would have made it back. Oh boy. Oh boy. I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. This is really bad. This is really... Oh man. Oh. Where's my door? Where's my door? Where's my door? Holy cow. Look how many are out here. What am I doing? Oh jeez. That door has a fence, not a gate. Oh! Oh man. I had the brilliant idea of using a note block with redstone. I can't tell if it really works or not, really. If they see me, I'm more of a draw than it. But if they're attracted to it, maybe. I don't know. I can't tell. I need to place it somewhere far outside of my walls. Well, yeah, that idea was a total failure. I waited until night, and the zombies gave absolutely zero craps about my awesome repeating note block plan. Boo on that. I might try a piston just to dot all my I's and cross all my T's, but I'm not really hopeful. I was really, really tired while building this part, and frankly, I have no idea how it actually looks. I'm mostly just surprised that I didn't fall off the ledge and die like a noob. Seriously, I can barely keep my eyes open. Probably looks okay. It's very spawnable, though, and I'm going to need to work quickly before nighttime. I sure wish I could sleep. It's always been a mystery to me how my above-ground waterway thing doesn't collapse, honestly. It has no support and does seem to just be hovering above the ground. But uh, now that I have a decent amount of materials, I address that today. I've had an issue, however. There are a few very, very scary beasts out that way. And every time I've gotten close, I've had to run away. They charge so fast and generally hit me very hard. Uh, I gotta deal with them, though. I now have armor, and I have a decent sword. I think I just gotta take a deep breath and, well, go do it. This guy, you're going down. You are going down. Oh, no. Oh, oh, jeez. Oh, yes! <laughs> See you later, you wolf sucker. See you later. Oh my goodness, I'm so relieved. It has been 49 days. Seven weeks, if my math is right, since I've been basically living in fear of those monsters. I've been more scared of those animals than I, I was, honestly, of the zombies in many cases. These boards, they just, they charge so freaking fast, I can barely get my sword out in time. But look, now that I killed one, I just kept taking out more. And, and I, when I realized that my armor was actually decent enough that they couldn't do that much damage, I lost some of my fear. Though, I took a few more hits than I remember, actually, during the day today. Anyway, the supports that I built, they are fairly basic, but I think they look really nice. I wish the days were longer. To be honest, though, I was out here just for the short amount of time putting up a couple supports and killing a couple of these boars and wolves and stuff. And geez, man, like the day's gone. Now all of a sudden it's time to hide in my, hide in my bunker again or eh, underwater, maybe. Okay, well, these dudes are definitely faster than ever. They're not sprinting fast yet. They're more like mall walker fast, but this is way worse than I thought. I worked all day on adding to the walls. You know, I'd like to have clear and clean overwalks to get around my base, just in case there is a horde of zombies inside. But then it happened. I can't explain this, but somehow three zombies and then a couple more after that got in. Did I leave the gate open? I don't think so. But how did these couple get in? I am very nervous now. I had another break in. What? Gotta get serious here. So I decided to add another wall on every inch of my wall. I guess just the top of it at least. So I could spam torches just everywhere. The only thing I can think is they're going over the wall. Yet I have to actually see that happen. They haven't broken in through the wall I guess they gotta be going either over or under, but I don't know. I continue to work on the top of the wall tonight, mostly lighting it up and really double checking to make sure there aren't any holes for a monster to creep in. I'm kind of realizing these bigger projects are taking longer and longer. You know, when I first started my base, I could do a few different things in a day. Now that the base is fully established, everything I do takes a day or two. I finally got the ground filled in and spent some time today thinking about Bill. I think I'm going to go try to find him tomorrow. You know, he and his family would find a good home here. Yeah, I think tomorrow we're going to head out.
I set sail at first light in road and road and road and road some more, seriously the entire day, but I could not find Bob's village. Did I call him Bill earlier? I think I did. Bob. Bob is his name that I named him. Also, what the heck? Sheep. Finally found sheep. Minus 600, 916. Holy cow. It's been long enough that I just don't remember where he and his family lived. Tomorrow I'll set sail the other way and see if I can track him down, but tonight I somehow made it back to my base by running overland. One plus of living in the zombie apocalypse is my physical endurance is amazingly high. I guess running for your life from the undead can do that to a fella. I failed. For a second consecutive day, I spent every second searching for that village, and for a second consecutive day, I was out way past night, and it was a blood moon. I got back, but it was close again. I don't think I dare go out a third night. Maybe if I could somehow signal Bob, so if he's out of his village, maybe he might see a signal or directions or something and come find me. I'll have to think on that a bit. I woke up today still feeling quite bad about Bob, and looking around the place, even though it was better than it was before, it's still just dreary. I wanted to change that today. The plan was twofold. First, reinforce the walls with some spruce logs. I wouldn't want one of these walls caving in if the zombies push up against it. Secondly, when night falls and zombies are back, I'm going to try to hide lighting under some leaves. I think it'll make the place feel so much more homey if there isn't torch spam all over the ground. Well, look, it'll still be torch spam, but at least not super obvious torch spam. And I'll take that as a win. I began work on my outside wheat fields, and I'm hoping to expand my little family here eventually, so I'm going to need more food than my greenhouse can provide. Let's face it, crops take a lot of space, and I, my original idea from some weeks ago was to plant crops outside the walls, and then I realized how dangerous the zombie hordes really are, and I decided to make a greenhouse instead. Well, that's good for just me, but if I want to have a city of people, hopefully, maybe a survivor city, then I'm going to need a lot of crops. So, we're heading out of the walls. Maybe it's just wishful thinking, but I'm still very hopeful to find Bob, or maybe even other survivors, wandering the wilds. Okay, just get in. Come on, follow the carriage. Just get in. Get in your gate. Just no, just follow the carriage. You are so freaking stubborn. Just get in. Get in the gate. You just got to get in. Just get in the gate. <sighs> Other than trying to move these stupid, stubborn goats, I spent the rest of the day working outside the walls again on the wheat field. It's actually making me think a lot more about my area here. You know, what if I had more locations to work? Like different bases in different areas. Would that enhance the chances of a wandering trader or survivor might find me? Maybe lead them back? And if so, I'm sort of operating under the assumption that any people I find are going to be good and helpful villagers. But who knows if that's true? And I know in Walking Dead, a show I used to watch back before the old zombie apocalypse started here, the biggest danger was actually people, not zombies. And maybe it's something I should be aware of. So maybe i should build some fortifications not just against the undead but maybe against uh, my potential neighbors as well i was thinking about naturing up my base again so i walked over to the swamp nearby today to harvest just a ton of oak leaves and i've been thinking about this road idea all night if i did make a road i'd want it to be fairly safe even at night how would i do that well i need a barrier on both sides of the road maybe a ditch on the other side of the actual barrier maybe I don't know. I think leaves and a ditch on the other side could actually work really well. Just need to make sure that it's at least two meters deep so the zombies can't climb out. Then it hit me. While I was harvesting leaves in the swamp, I came across reeds. They're kind of stringy, right? String, wool, bed. Oh, come on, fix. Are you actually serious? Sure enough, nine reeds will make one wool. I grabbed them and ran back to my base just in time for a blood moon. After 59 days, 59 effing days, I made a bed and hilariously, incredibly, hysterically, I can't sleep because, and I quote, I don't feel tired enough for sleep. I shit you not.
I worked on the path leaving my base today. I finally come up with a very sound plan for a secondary base that should be safe just in case. Look, the thing is, you only get one life, you know. Best waste resources just in case, then hoard them and die with full chests. I ended day 60 with my first sleep in a very long time. What a feeling to awake refreshed. I am probably going to sleep now most nights. What that means is I'll get a lot less done, like, well, half as much, but I'll be more productive and wasting less time away in the mines or just cutting down trees just to pass the night. I spent time working on the path today. I decided I definitely want to ditch on both sides of the hedgerow, so double down on... Um, hey, you know, wait a second. I just thought of something. I don't think I've ever seen a zombie fight water current. Could I set up a water flowing maybe away from my base to keep them solidly seven or eight meters away? How have I not thought of this before? After I finish my path to the ocean, I need to really spend some time thinking about this. Working on this little road is actually so nice. It's like a small taste of the open world that I, well, sadly, don't think I'll ever have again. I worked through the day and most of the night and really hopeful I'll be able to break ground on my backup base soon. Crap, crap, crap. Crap, 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 all oh, this sucks. Um, uh, do I wait them out? Nope, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta run, I gotta run. There are so many behind me and they don't burn in the daytime. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, that's how today started. Not great. I knew I had to jump and run. It was risky though. Look, if I turn an ankle, I'm dead. If I don't make it over their heads on my jump, I'm dead. If I fall and don't get up fast enough, I'm dead. This was my closest brush with death so far, but yet, I live. I started my day with mining and found diamonds, then went out in the middle of this random lake near my base and found my spot. Look, I think this is going to be great. In my head, I'm picturing kind of an oil platform in the middle of the ocean, kind of a singular support maybe with a platform on top. I'm hoping the zombies won't make it this far, but if they do... I will have another surprise for them in mind. More on that later. But I ran out of cobble again, so uh, in the evening of day 64, I returned to the mines and found, well, actually, luckily, more diamonds. It's my lucky day. If the worst thing happens and my base is overrun, I am going to need a quick exit. I think the overhead waterway should work well for that, but there may be a time that I'm out in nature and need to get out of Dodge fast. That's why I think the path is going to be a good addition as well. So at the end of the path, I started working on a simple little boathouse. Uh, my thinking is this way I should be able to calmly collect my gear and get what I need to move to my backup base just in case of total disaster. You know what I'd love? I'd love a bed at my secondary base. So off to collect more cattails I go. Then I realized that these come in two meter tall and one meter tall variants. Thinking maybe if I plant a bunch of the small ones, then they'll grow eventually to be too tall and I can actually harvest these like sugar cane. That'd be nice. Maybe I should look for a full farm idea soon. Also, I decided to get another quick way out of the base on the other side, kind of a backdoor exit. So I had a small boathouse there too. I'm just thinking if I'm over there, maybe playing with the animals or whatever, and a horde is between me and my one exit that I currently have, that's not good. I planted a lot of cattails today. I made a decision I may end up regretting, I'm not sure, but instead of build a fortified greenhouse, I planted them right outside in the sun near the river. I'm hopeful that the extra water and sunlight will help get them growing faster as I could really use a second bed ASAP. I spent a good deal of time this morning just walking around outside my base. I know another mutation is on the way in just a couple days, and frankly, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to walk around out here after that. At the speed they're moving now, it's just a matter of time until a horde can outrun me. The later part of the day, I skipped sleeping again and headed back to the secondary base to work on the escape tunnel. If they can get me up top, I may need another hasty exit. Well, my other base has a roof at least. Not much else, but it's not meant to be home sweet home. If crap hits the fan, this is where I go. The escape tunnel just is about deep enough to ready to be dug, and with the mutation coming tomorrow, yeah, I'm looking forward to spending the entire day underground. Thank you very much.
I spent the next few days and nights digging my final escape tunnel. This is my fallback's fallback. If they come this far, I guess I'll just develop a taste for human flesh and go with the horde. I still think a boat is the best way. If I had endless iron and gold, maybe I'd do rails, but I don't think I have enough for any meaningful distance covered to lose the horde. I continued working on the escape hatch today and had just started clearing trees for my road out of here when the unbelievable happened. Yeah, what? What? Two and a half months out here wishing for a bed, and I find a frickin' spider spawner on day 72. Oh my goodness, I spent what was left of the day starting to clear land for this farm and dealing with an absolutely endless blood moon. The following day, I broke my really good diamond shovel and had to run back to the keep to make a new one and sleep. I did a lot of landscaping on both day 73 and day 74, and we're getting close to actually making this farm, I think. I continued work on this spider spawner for the next three days, and unfortunately I got a blood moon on day 75. You know, I'm noticing that now that I can sleep, how much of an inconvenience and a problem blood moons really are. Since I couldn't sleep for the first 50 or 60 days or whatever, I kind of just got used to staying up all night. And now that I can sleep when you can't, it really stinks. Because often I'm just out in nature with a bed. And uh, yeah, that's not so great. Yeah, I'm no technical expert, uh, and uh, getting this water stream to actually work right, I don't care if this is the most efficient spider spawner farm in the history of time ever, I just want to get a little bit of freaking string so I can make some freaking beds. And Eureka, it actually worked, for the most part. I, uh, I know, it, it, it doesn't matter, you don't look, I got string, woo! I returned to my base with almost two stacks of string after doing very, very little grind time, and I am so happy. I'm going to run around and put beds in all my different possible sleeping locations. Now that I can sleep, it's hard to even imagine going without it. I went to the swamp today and harvested a lot more leaves just so I can bury more torches within my base. Again, I'm looking at another mutation tomorrow and I want to be completely prepared. I got to make sure the zombies aren't going to be spawning inside of my walls. I can handle them outside, I think. But if they spawn inside and catch me not paying attention, they could own me really fast. These guys are hitting really hard and they're moving really fast now. I didn't even need to go outside the walls today to check the zombies. I knew they were faster. I could actually hear them being faster and more deadly than ever before. My mind just wasn't right today. I can't just sit and cower in fear, so I decided to bring some beauty into my little world. You know, planting just a couple of small flower gardens out in the courtyard really does bring a little tiny bit of peace to me. Well, look, the peace is slightly mutated due to the incessant zombie moaning. But yeah, peace. Mostly peace. I came up with the idea of landmines for the zombies. Uh, okay, obviously I don't exactly have a supply of C4, but maybe I can do it with sudden and surprising drops into lava. I'm not sure the trapdoor trick will work on the undead, but we'll test out next Blood Moon and see. Anything I can do to thin out a major horde would be good. I'm chopping trees all day. After gathering a ton of wood for an entire day, I was all set to build my maze of fiery death. I put up two meter high spruce logs all around the compound, making obvious paths to lead these idiots into my lava traps. Time to see if it works. Here they come. Here they come. And are they going to fall in? Oh, come on. Just fall. Yes. 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 Oh, this is perfect. 
I really think I'm onto something here, and almost random pathing system through these logs has worked so great to funnel them into these lava pits. Uh, today I spent a good deal of time slabbing the top of my little log wall to make sure no zombies can get over top, and then I'm just going to farm a bit and maybe take a relaxing stroll through my colorful flowery courtyard. The days here have started to weigh on me these past few weeks. Maybe it's the isolation, maybe the sense of danger around every turn. Regardless though, I want to take one last stab at finding my old friend Bob. If this world is just he and I, neither of us should be living alone. And if the horde did get to him, I'd like to at least pay my respects. Then the unthinkable happened. I was searching across land for Bob's village, and I happened upon another village. At first, I assumed I had come across Bob's village from a different side, but lo and behold, these were new people. Perhaps if there are even a few villages out there, maybe it's not just two single individuals living out in the wild. Perhaps there are even more. Perhaps humanity will find a way to come back from this. On a uh, totally side note, this village turned out to be really, really freaking close to my base, and I really, really wish I had found it earlier. I actually could have boated some of these villagers back in a reasonable amount of time and had a, uh, a full trading hall set up. That would have been nice. I believe after 88 full days in my compound, I have no torch spam remaining after today. Is that a real goal or something? No, eh, maybe. No, not really. But it's something. Blood Moon again tonight means no sleep. My defense is held perfectly. Very few zombies even reached my outer walls. Well, tomorrow is the mutation I have been dreading the most. On day 90, the zombies will be faster than me. My days of simply walking around these hordes are officially over. I went around my base today and took stock in what I had and where I had it. I went over all the defenses in my head as well as escape plans just in case. We'll see how this goes. They have evolved. I don't know how else to say it. Getting faster wasn't enough, I guess. These beasts can now break blocks. Of course, my luck wouldn't be day 90. The day the virus mutates again, I get a blood moon tonight. My base was overrun in the first three minutes of the horde coming. Essentially, all my defenses are worthless. Everything I've done for the past 90 days is for nothing. I took my emergency exit and boated the secondary base to hide out the night. Ugly. This was the worst day. When I returned to my base, it was still overrun. The theory that they would wander off in the daytime that had protected me so well for the past 90 days seems to no longer work. I am screwed. I spent most of the morning trying to thin the herd and then took a hair-raising run back to break through and get back to my base. They were wrecking everything. I had hoped... Well, I suppose that doesn't even matter anymore. I'm going to find a spot to sleep up on top of my wall and try not to think about the future. I hid on my tower and wall all day. I'm not proud, but there's no way out of this mess. I feel as if the walls are closing in on me. Well, after thinking about this all night, I have come to the conclusion that my primary base is total garbage. I am moving to my secondary backup base and hope that somehow I can last. 
food is going to have to be something I'm going to need to consider tomorrow. But for today, I just want to be somewhere that's a little bit more safe. I made a daring run back to the base today. Go, 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 go. Oh, these dudes are so fast. Go, 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 go. Come on. Look at this. Oh, this is so terrible. Uh, okay, easy way into my base. Just get some food. Get some food. Carrots, carrots, carrots. Okay, potatoes. Oh, I brought too much junk. I have too much junk on me. Why did I carry this out? Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. Gotta go. Oh, crap, crap, crap. Gotta go, gotta go. I made it back to the secondary with a whole bunch of carrots and potatoes. I think there's plenty of meat still in the chests, but look, there were so many zombies around me, I didn't care to take time to search. I can feed myself for some time with this. All right, look, if I am going to live here in the secondary base, I need to massively ramp up defenses with all of my harder new information and knowledge on how to defend against the zombie horde. Firstly, I need to pull back any land where zombies can have a faster path to me. They are very, very fast on land, but seem to be fairly slow in the water, so I can use that to my advantage. Secondly, I think we can force water to flow out and away from my base, well, my base's base. I guess, so that the zombies will be forced backward before getting in to break blocks out from and under me. After digging out the temporary dirt platform I placed under the flowing water, it totally worked. I now have about a 7 meter flow pushing away from my base. In your face, zombie jerks. Look, on a side note, this is a win I pretty desperately needed. I was starting to get pretty dark on my future in this world, and this, this little simple thing... I think might actually work to keep me somewhat safe. I would really like to plant some food around here, but I'm not really sure how to handle it. On one hand, maybe away from the base might be a good idea. Zombies haven't shown much interest in my crops before, but on the other hand, the exact same thing could happen here as my last base, where it's totally overrun with zombies and I really don't have a way to get in. I'm going to go chop some wood today and prepare for the final run. I got my new little farm set up today, and I feel pretty good about it. Look, it's not my old greenhouse, to be sure, but I think I could maybe swoop in here, harvest some carrots or potatoes quickly, and get back to my base before any zombies get to me. Blood moon tonight, and... Well, nothing. Literally nothing. I knew the zombies avoided water generally, but I didn't expect absolutely no zombies to attack my base at all. I guess removing these islands actually worked. Things are looking up. Tomorrow's going to be day 100 spent inside this zombie apocalypse, and I can't think of anywhere else I'd rather spend it than back inside my primary base, up on the main tower, and looking out over this world. The trip in was... difficult. Okay, okay, I just gotta get in. I want to go and get as much meat as I can while the zombies are kind of behind me. Uh, but boy, oh boy, they are everywhere. I can just hear them wandering around. And if they find me in this place, I am in big, big, big trouble. Just got to grab whatever is valuable. Leave the redstone. Uh, uh, it's, it's, all, it's all crap. It's all crap. It's all crap. Where's my food? Where's my food? There it is. There's, I'll get all the meat. Get all the meat. Uh, oh, man. I don't know when I'm going to have an animal farm next. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I got to go. I, gotta, I don't have time for this. I got to go. I got to go. Get out of here. Get out of here, fix. Get out of here. I may have gotten a little bit greedy. I spent a little bit too much time in my storage room and didn't really consider that getting up into my tower was going to be a real problem. Even switching blocks on my hotbar with the speed these zombies move, even that was hard. So I'm scaffolding on Lapis, but I messed up. I got too close and these guys are, they can, uh, they can hit me. They can hit me. I could not get up. They knocked me off and I had to run for my life. Despite that amazingly horrifically close call, I did make it back to my tower. As far as I know, I'm safe up here, but 
Oh boy. Well, I'm just gonna wait for the sun to go down. Yep, that is it for me. That's it for me. The Horde has learned how to build. Not only break all the walls and barriers I put up, but then actually use those blocks to build up and eat my brains. After 100 days, I say goodbye to my base forever. I rushed off in a panic to my secondary base, and I just hoped that my meager defenses would hold. I think I somehow lost the Horde. They're not tracking me here, apparently, and I appear to be safe. Well, one last night looking out over the ocean and thinking about my hundred days during a zombie apocalypse. fellow Americans, I've just received confirmation that the enemy has launched a nuclear strike on us. No, no. No, not now. Not now. Oh, what? What's up? Oh, no. No, 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 no! Bob, are you there? Yeah. Dad, what the hell is happening? Our city was hit by a nuclear strike. You are likely the last survivor in Pittsburgh. Dad, how are you... Alive? You died eight years ago. The government. They sent me to a place no one could ever find me. They put me in orbit so no other nation could ever get their hands on me. Sorry, Dad. I'm kind of in the middle of something here. My name is Fred, by the way. What's happening up there? Your mother and I named you Bob after your grandfather. Who I never met anyway. <sighs> Dad, you're a computer, aren't you? An AI, set up to run the terrorist attack bunker simulation. There's no rescue team coming, is there? No, son. In reality, you're likely one of the last people on Earth. Hello? Hello? Testing, one, two... Ho hello? Hi. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Hi, I'm Fred. My name is Fred. Hey, Fred. Uh, I, am, I can't believe I'm actually talking to another human being. Are you in Philadelphia near me? I'm in a bunker down below. No, I'm in a bunker near Pittsburgh. I didn't think anyone else made it through this. No one else? How bad was it? Are there rescue teams? I have a connection to a satellite with a artificial intelligence on board. There's nothing out there. Oh, yeah. Hey, bud. How's it going? I'm not sure. I've heard some very loud sounds outside again. It's below my tiny windows, so I can't see anything. But it's almost like scratching. Could it be an animal? Maybe. I don't know. It's probably my imagination, but I thought I heard a moaning sound. Whoa, whoa, dude, that's creepy. Yeah, you're telling me. Anyway, I'm sure it's nothing. What were we talking about last night? Oh, right. So, why did your dad always call you Bob? Hey, Fred. It's getting too bad here. I was attacked last night. I managed to kill it, but there's more. I can't stay here. I'm gonna have to leave, abandon my bunker, and try to find a safer place. I'm thinking I'll head west. Maybe I head towards Harrisburg? Maybe it wasn't hit by a nuke. If you get this message, well, I'm hoping I'll see you there. Hey, Cal, are you there? Hi, Fred. What's the progress on the radiation sensors? They just landed on the planet. I'm analyzing the results now, actually. That's great. Dom's last message said he's leaving his bunker and headed west. If it's safe, I think I'm going to try to meet him. Fred, the results are strange. There isn't really any radiation. 
No, I don't understand. What What do you mean, no radiation? The nukes fell everywhere. It was my error, apparently. I just assumed on all the modeling your father did, if war broke out, it would be nuclear. That doesn't seem to be the case. So, it's safe to go outside? I'm going to run further analysis, but I think so. Yes? I walked for days. It was slow going. I'm guessing the most dangerous areas might be closer to communities, so I made it a point to steer very close to them and stayed. Then one night, I saw my first monster. I moved a little closer to investigate, and in no time, the horde was on me. They were everywhere. I had to run. I managed to escape with my life, but I lost my pack with everything I had in it. Even my AI glasses were broken. My only form of communication. I had nothing. Nothing but the tattered clothes on my back. I would be out here in the wasteland, alone and starting from scratch. I end up losing the horde by swimming across the river and emerge on the other side in, well, more wasteland. I walked and walked. I had nothing, no food, just a bit of water. No way of getting tools. All the wood here seemed to be just about dead. And then finally, I came across the trees. Uh, they weren't great trees. They looked on their last leg, but it was usable wood, and I could make some tools, and I guess that's a good start. This isn't exactly lush, but you know what? I somehow escaped the apocalypse, at least for the time being. So I made my tools, and, well, I decided this is day one of my new life. I spent the first day harvesting as much wood and stone and food as I can. There are some animals running around, and, well, I, I'm going to need to eat. Seems fairly safe here, but, you know, who knows at night. If I'm honest, I still think about Dom's panic call to me. He was so scared. It must have been a horde of these zombies. I hope it wasn't something worse. I found a bit of exposed coal and was able to make some torches and even a furnace. I used my new torches to light up a small hidey hole underground. Yeah, great, I'm underground again. 200 days in a bunker, and here I am in a hole. That's it. Look, I'm pledging right now I'm not hiding in holes anymore after tonight. I threw up a small wall to protect my hidey hole, and sure enough, they came for me. I thought after losing them at the river, I might have more time, but here they are, first night. Seems like the zombie horde has found my little base. Well, I took my bed and I went into my hole. So, zombies. I might need to reconsider my strategy. I was gonna try to hike basically straight from Pittsburgh to Harrisburg. Best I can tell, that's about a 60 hour walk straight through. I expected my biggest danger to come from maybe a bear, not walking undead. And that's before I lost all my supplies from the bunker. I think I'll hole up here for a couple weeks. Maybe 25 days. And I'll try to get enough supplies to make it about a quarter of the way to Harrisburg after that. Then I'll take all I can carry and move halfway after that and do it again. I'll make four little mini bases or way stations, I guess. That should be enough time to build up some decent defenses and harvest some food for the next leg of the trip, as well as the added perk of having places to rest with Dom on my way back. Alright, so first phase is I need to get some ores and supplies. I headed underground for the rest of the day. I found some diamonds, so that should help a lot to stay alive. <laughs> Another day of gathering materials. I need to start building soon, but before I do, I want to have a huge supply of ores, stone, and probably the hardest to get, wood. I'm thinking the first thing I'm going to have to do in this area is some sort of tower base. Something that should protect me and the crops. And Dom, um, if we manage to make it back this way. I made the beginning of a floating platform today. I think I have plans for a base that should be kind of cool and fairly safe from zombies. It'll have to be stable, so lots of supports. Probably 
mostly wood for now. I have plenty of room for crops as well, which should really get planted soon, so they have time to grow before it's time for me to move on. It was day five that things really took a turn. I was foolishly out past sundown and attacked and almost killed by... I don't know. I don't know. It's a horrible thing. It's so scary. It was a mutant or something. Maybe a, a parasite. It came fast, though. Uh, my walls kept him out, but yeah, that was, that was really creepy. That was really creepy. This thing is fast. I'll be honest. I'm pretty shaken up about those monsters. Zombies, I don't know. I feel like I can wrap my head around them. Maybe too much time watching The Walking Dead. But these things, man, what are these things? I went in the mines all day just to try to forget about what is on the surface. I was attacked today in broad daylight by a terrible monster. I thought I was safe during the day. This thing was so fast. I hit it one time and it exploded. I don't know what. It, was it poison? Is this how it breathes? Is this how it spreads? These things are disgusting. This is getting intense. I was out harvesting trees in midday and ambushed by another parasite. This is so bad. My dreams of having some sort of wooden tower base are long dead. Bring on the giant stone walls. I actually ran out of stone pretty quickly. I didn't have as much as I thought. So I got the stone walls at least high enough. I think I'll be mostly safe and I head down to the mines. I finished the walls of my little house or castle. I don't know. Above ground bunker, I guess. Just in time for the horde to find me. It's crazy. I feel like the entire day goes by in 10 minutes. After that, I was digging down. I'd like to have a ladder so I can have a straight shot to the mining level, and I fell into this big cave. I was running around trying to light up some torches, and I saw a door. That's weird. It's not something you expect to see in a cave. Could this be someone's bunker? Turns out it was an archaeologist. I asked him what he was doing, and he just seemed so oblivious to everything going on. Maybe in shock or something. I don't know. But he just kept muttering, so many bones now. So many bones. Too big to be human. What could they be? He was a weird dude. Anyway, yeah, I, I, I'm out of there. I've been tinkering with my broken AI glasses, and I'm hopeful tomorrow, maybe, I'll be able to contact Cal. Hey, Cal, do you read me? Fred, I've been trying to reach you. Where have you been? I was attacked and broke my glasses. I just now got them fixed and charged enough to call. I have some news. My sensors have discovered a sort of mutagen in the air. It seems the bombs had a different payload. There may be effects on people. Yeah, like zombies? Well, that could be the outcome. No, Cal, that's what I'm telling you. That's what attacked me. Freaking zombies. Well, that is surprising. Yeah, Cal. No sh It's very dispersed now. I, I don't think you're at risk. Still, I would avoid any former populated areas for a good while and allow the mutagen to dissipate. Well, that's not great, seeing as I'm headed to Harrisburg. But, yeah, I've been avoiding populated areas ever since I saw the first. I'll run the numbers and see how long until it should be safe. Okay, I'll charge up my glasses and I'll talk to you soon. I made my first four machines today. I can still hardly believe it. All the stuff I had in my pack, gone. This would have been so easy if I had even a small fraction of what I brought with me from the bunker. But, here we are. I made a coal generator, a crusher, an atomic reconstructor, and a power double furnace. I don't have nearly the energy it's going to take to use those regularly, but for right now, I can toss in some coal and let it work, albeit slowly. The big advantage is, when it's time to move on in 15 days, I can bring any tech I make with me. The next phase will be to plant a lot of food. Should grow the whole time I'm traveling. Uh, I would expect Dom and I to be quite hungry by the time we make it back to this way station. The base is secure. Eh, it's not pretty, but it's secure. Next step, power. There are two things I need to consider. What I can actually do, and what I can pick up and move with me in just a couple weeks. I think canola oil is going to be my best bet. The only problem is, I only have three canola seeds. So I'll have to break a lot more grass and see if I can get more. This damn rain needs to stop. So, to do this, I need a couple farms, and um, probably a lot more later, but let's start with two, ideally. I spent the entire day adding them to the top floor of my base. I went on exploring today. I just wanted to check the surrounding area and make sure that there is no danger lurking just around the corner. But then, yeah, then I found the mother load. I found an abandoned village. I don't know what happened to the people, but, you know, I have an idea. Anyway, I grabbed all the seeds I could handle and returned home. I had a breach. I was very lucky. I just happened to be going outside to get some water and turned around. Yeah, I turned around to see this. Yeah, 
Yeah, that was pretty close. I mean, I know I didn't take any damage, but if I wasn't paying attention or if I was looking the other direction, yeah, I'd be dead. I took care of these zombies easy enough, but I'm not going to take this for granted. Wow. I spent a lot of today dealing with food. I harvested some turkey and checked on my farms. Good news, I actually got a surplus on a few items so I can start eating carrots and potatoes. It's actually pretty huge. No more hunting unless I really want to. I'm gonna need some obsidian for the next phase of machines, so before I headed to the mines, I grabbed a bucket of water and got back inside my fence just fast enough before, yeah, this guy. That's two days in a row that I almost died to a uh, mob that came up behind my back. This is, this is a crazy world. It's a crazy world. It was a crafting day. I made laser item relays and put them on chests. The idea is here I can auto sort items and always have access to them. The advanced kind even have filters, which is uh, super cool. Eventually, way down the road, I want to be able to have a better storage solution, but for right now, this is okay. Attaching these laser item relays is a little more complicated than I thought. I had to make something called a laser wrench to click them, and sure enough, as soon as I did, they connected and my storage is automated. Super sweet. I found a little creature called a worm today. It came from hoeing grass. It's really cool. It can hydrate land without water. Kind of uh, bone meal crops too. It's going to help with the production of my canola as well. I started working on the automatic farming today. I made a canola press to press canola beans into oil and then a fermenting barrel to ferment it into better oil or something. Then an oil generator to power my base. Then I started work on four farmers to do the fields. It'll probably be one field for food for me, one field for hemp and string and stuff like that, and then two fields for canola. But that's when I realized the sheer amount of iron I'm going to need for four farmers. That's 16 blocks. That's a lot. That's like a ton more than I have. So, well, back to the mines. I worked all day long on setting up these farms, and yeah, nothing. Nothing. It's so complicated. But I might be onto something. I took a quick sleep and got back to it the next day. Another day of troubleshooting. I, I got half of it done and actually worked out, which actually is the important half. I got the canola beans going to the press. I can't quite get the wheat, carrots, and potatoes and such going to my storage chests. It's fine. I can manually sort them for now. We'll work this out later. But for now, we have automated power, and that is, that's solid progress. Hey, Cal, you there? Hi, Fred. It takes these glasses ages to charge, but I wanted to contact you before I leave this place. I'm able to track your progress even when the glasses are charging. So, what are you up to? I use my 3D printer to print two additional printers. I have enough materials on board to make a few imaging satellites. I'd like to be able to scan your route and look for heat sources to help you avoid them. Well, that seems very helpful. I hope so. Have you noticed anything else peculiar? Anything other than zombies? Yes, there are some sort of mutants or parasites or something here, too. I wish it was only zombies. I thought so. They have a different heat signature. They run much, much hotter. It does seem like they are gathered. Oh, good. A big group of them. Well, that seems fun. Probably not so fun. Some of these are enormous. Which would you prefer to avoid more? Parasites or zombies? I've got to tell you, Cal, that is a question I did not see coming in my lifetime. I bet. Let's avoid the parasites. The zombies are slower, and I can probably deal with them. Okay, I'll download a map for a route east. Thanks, Cal. I'm leaving this place in just four days to try to get to the halfway point and gather more supplies. I don't feel as though I'm really ready at all, to be honest, so I want to dive into some fortifications for the next few days so things are as safe as possible when, hopefully, we return. I need to think this through, though. If it's going to take me more than 100 days to get to Harrisburg and double that back, on top of that, who knows how long I'll be waiting for Dom, if he even shows up. I might be in bad shape by the time we make our way back here. I'll need things to be safe and have plenty to eat as well. With an enchanting table, the only thing I really wanted was fortune. Everything else can wait. And luckily, amazingly, on my second enchant, I actually got fortune. So, yeah, that's pretty good. That's going to be great for the next diamonds I find. But really, right now, I probably need iron as much as anything else. 
I began work on the walls today. I don't really know why I didn't do this before. It's going to be great to have a safe space sort of outside my door. Man, the days passed so quickly. I only actually got a few meters up before nighttime. I guess I'll come back to this tomorrow. Working more on the walls, I just had to add a few towers. Again, I'm just thinking about my return trip mostly. When I get back, I might want to look around and see if anything's coming. It will have been, well, nearly a quarter or a third of a year. Another flying mutant came at me in the night. Seems like walls may not be the only effective defense that I'm going to need. I need to have some sort of small roofing system too. Hmm. Next base, I'm going to have to rethink that. Getting ready to leave tomorrow, I made something that's going to help the next base a lot. A drill. This thing is awesome. Instead of durability, it uses RF to charge, and it can simply be recharged when it's out. I think I'm just about ready to head out. My body feels rested, I have some food saved up, and... Yeah, I'm ready to make another leg of the journey. I gathered up my things today. Made two more diamond backpacks. It's pretty resource intensive for me right now, but it's going to help in my journey. And after all, I have a fortune pickaxe. It's mixed effort here, though. I want to take everything I'm going to need to set up another way station, but at the same time, leave enough for the return trip. I'll take all my tech. With these new backpacks, I can fit plenty and plant the fields when I get there. I'll take all the extra stuff with me as well. I think I should be ready. walked for days. It is incredibly slow going. I managed to make it about 50 miles before I nearly ran off supplies and energy. That brings me to roughly 100 miles with about 150 miles to go. I avoided most of the zombies and mutants by going far, far around them, hiding in trees and digging small hidey holes, but I still got a few bumps and bruises along the way. I found a nice area in the swamp and decided to set up here and heal, regather my supplies for the next leg of the journey. But on the way, yeah, something kind of weird happened. I, I met someone. Yeah, hello? Hey, I'm Mudflaps. I'm Fred. Did you say Mudflaps? Oh, out here, everyone goes by nicknames or handles. Yeah, it's crazy up here. There's mutants, parasites, zombies, everything. Uh, look, hey, hey, just be careful. Okay, well, hey, be safe out there. Oh, yeah, you too. Uh, just... Okay, well, all right, bye. Huh. Well, that was that was kind of a weird meeting, but regardless, what I, what I need to do first here in my new base is I need to get my farms rolling. I'm going to need canola for power, and I really don't want to wait any longer to do that. On retrospect, it doesn't really seem like raising up my farms really helped me out at all, so I'm going to put these on the ground just with a little bit of a log border around them. It should be good enough to get the farmers going. I have a decent amount of ores with me, but I don't really have any stone, so I'm going to have to think about a mine very soon as well, but first, time to go to bed. Hey, it's storage day again. Having just done this once, I have a much better idea on how I want to lay things out and actually how the whole system works. And plus, I have the materials, so this shouldn't take very long. I already have one canola farm going, and I'll need to set the other, but it seems to have uh, left one of my two farmers at the old base. So I'm not going back. I'm going to have to make another one. But that means I need more iron, which I don't really have. I'm actually going to need a lot more iron because I want to do a total of four farmers. So that means I need to develop three. So that means I need 12 iron blocks, which I absolutely don't have that much. But I did manage to get everything set up in only three days, which leaves me 21 days to continue to work on more tech that I can take with me to the next way station. It's pretty good. I have some ideas of what I want to do, but first I need to hit the mines and hit them hard. I spent the entire day and night in the mines and came up big. I have over two stacks of iron, which should set me up well, especially because I can double it now, as well as over a stack of diamonds thanks to my Fortune 3 pick. It's like starting over, but on steroids. I feel really good about the state of my second way station after only four days. I set up two additional farms today, again one for food and one for utility things like hemp and string. It feels really good to have everything rolling. 
My iron is just taking forever to double and smelt. I'm gonna need to really look into other power sources for this part. These coal generators they have hooked up right now are just not cutting it. I spent the entirety of day 31 on, and yeah, look, this is hard to even say, but yeah, item transport lasers again. I am bound to determine to work this out, but as of yet, it's not really happening yet. I did it. It turns out that either one, the advanced item lasers are not currently working, or two, I'm just too stupid to make them work. I swear I tried everything. I tried whitelist, blacklist, all kinds of different things, filters, the whole bit. But the regular old item laser does seem to work. So I'm in luck. Unfortunately, I had already converted a bunch of my regular item lasers to the advanced ones. So I'm just going to have to craft more. But you know what? That's okay. They largely take redstone. And that is really something I don't find a lot of use for in this world. One thing I'd really like to have a lot of on hand is gunpowder. I made a long dark tube and put trapdoors on top. I think this will allow only creepers to spawn. And then I worked on making a second atomic reconstructor with a lens of certain death. That sounds fun. This should work to kill any creepers that spawn. If I just put on a timer, I think, probably. I think that's how that works. I don't, I, I don't know. I got my creeper killer all hooked up. I, I think it's gonna work great. I put trip wires every other block and I'm thinking that when creepers spawn, they should sort of trip the trip wire, which would give a redstone signal, which should fire the atomic reconstructor with the lens of certain death. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just need to sort of now wait and see if anything actually spawns in it. I made a little bit of dark glass to see inside this thing, but so far still nothing. I searched everywhere for squid as well. No dice at all. I wonder if the zombies ate them all. Regardless, I found some black flowers that actually does make black ink. So, you know, net win, but yeah, I don't know. They're, they're not renewable, so I'm not really sure what the long-term solution to black ink might be. This day went south quickly. I decided I need ender pearls, so I went off to the desert to find some. And I thought, well, at nighttime, I can see really far in the desert. Maybe I'll find some endermen. But yeah, instead, I found this. Yeah, I was kind of close there. So, uh, yeah, enough of that. I just ran home. <laughs> I just ran home. I, I'm not proud, but yeah, I'm alive. But I guess I don't learn lessons very well because as if that spider fight wasn't scary enough. Yeah, then I went to the nether and I need a drop of evil. That's really one. If I just had one drop of evil, then my gunpowder woes and basically all my other woes would be over. But no luck. I had a couple close calls, but... I really need to get a decent bow before I go back to the nether. I did make a bow and enchanted it. I only have one arrow though, and I didn't get an infinity, so yeah. Back to the nether without it, but yeah, I killed a bunch of wither skeletons, but no drop of evil. More nether today, and after a lot of grinding, well, I got a ton of grinding. I got it. I got the one drop of evil. Now I can make cursed earth, and that is going to make all of my mob spawning issues go away. Hallelujah. How's the new base coming, Fred? It's coming along nicely. I need to hurry and get things set up here. I plan to leave in only 10 more days. How far do you hope to make it this next walk? I think I can probably make it 50 miles before my supplies are about run out. Can you scan ahead and find a good place for me to set up? Sure. Do you have a preference on where? Yeah, just as far away from parasites and zombies as I can get. Scanning. I found a spot. I'll mark your map. Do you have any imaging of Harrisburg? No, not yet. I can reroute a satellite to take a look. It'll take a few days to get into position. Okay, great. Sounds good. I will contact you when I get my glasses charged again. I'm very excited. I know it's only nine days until I leave this place, and I still have a bunch of things to do around here, but more than anything, I'm very excited to get some gunpowder before I leave. I do have a plan, and boy, I sure hope it works. It's solid. It's so solid. It actually works. I lined up five atomic reconstructors with kill lenses, and sure enough, it kills everything in front of it. I'll put this thing on a redstone timer after I get a second ender pearl so I can collect the items automatically. I'm so excited about this. I just need to let it run for a while and profit. Also, I worked on my house finally and actually got a second floor up with a roof and everything. I may go get some sand for glass so I can have actually windows. Yeah, that'd be cool.
I got my second Ender Pearl set up and a range collector. Now power needs to come into play a little bit. So I set up a third canola field because I want to have these atomic reconstructors running basically all the time until moving day. I don't have that much time left and I need to get as many resources as I can before I have to travel. I made some diamond armor finally. I hate wasting diamonds on something like this. I mean, look, I guess it's not wasting, but it kind of feels like it. I like to keep my diamonds for either tools or machines or resources, but you know what? I gotta stay alive and, well, this is gonna help to stay alive. The zombies are getting closer. You know, it's funny. When I first left here, I was seeing a lot more parasites than zombies, and now it seems to be about half and half, if not even slightly more zombies. What's going on here? Are they knocking each other off? Today I spent the entire day wiring redstone. Might not be that complicated to a lot of people, but for me, every time I touch this little red dust, it is a headache and a half. But you know what? I got it working, and my uh, atomic green structures are now firing in sequence. It's not too bad, actually. With only a couple days left before moving day, I still don't have silk touch, and the reason why I want that is because I don't want to have to go back to the nether to grind more for uh, drops of evil. So... Yeah, what to do about that? A couple options. The one I'm going to try is I need to get a couple emeralds. I actually need four, but I have two that I found in a chest from that deserted village. So I need to find two more emeralds somewhere. So if I could just find another sort of deserted village somewhere or something or even a mountain biome. So I think I'm going to go exploring. So I dropped off all my stuff, put it all away, and I spent the day exploring looking for a, uh, an emerald somewhere. No luck. No luck at all. I spent all of the day, all of the night looking for a village or a mountain biome and nothing. Nothing at all. So, instead, I went down underground and I spent all of today mining for levels, basically. And, you know, if I get the ores as well, that's kind of nice, too. But, yeah, no luck. No luck. I enchanted with all the levels I had, trying to get Silk Touch on something. And, no, I got a lot of fortune shovels, which are the absolute crappy shovel you can get, unless you want a lot of flint. So yeah, so I'm going back to the mines to get more levels. Finally, after, what, three three days, I guess, mining and looking for emeralds and stuff, I finally got it. I got a silk touch on a shovel. So nice. Now I can pick up my cursed earth and bring it with me. I only really need one block because it will spread once I put it down. It's packing day. I went through all my stuff, picked up everything I think I might need at base number three. I left whatever I should need on my way back to, a lot of food and all that kind of stuff, but... Yeah, my plan is to get a good night's sleep and then head off in the morning and try to get as far as I can. I'm hoping for another 50 miles. I found my new area. I did make it about 50 miles according to Cal's map. It's not really beautiful per se, but it's flat, it has fresh water, and a good line of sight for any zombies or parasites coming my way. I spent the entire day clearing out a spot for my house. My first goal is to get everything set up and farms running within the first three days so I can progress more tech on this stop. I began working on my next way station here. I'm planning for some more major upgrades this stop than I've done the last two, so I want to make sure I have enough room. I think I'll go for kind of a winged approach this time with power gen outside near the farms and then just beam the power into my machines. I also need a lot of basement room for an upcoming storage project that I'm very, very excited about. I finally got all my bags unpacked and placed into chests. It's getting a little bit more challenging as I have more and more stuff to carry with me. That's okay though, I'm showing progress and I don't think that will be a problem after I get started with some refined storage. I will say, I've had absolutely no parasite sightings recently here. I have a working theory that with the demise of man, the parasites and the zombies are sort of at war over the top tier of the food chain. And from what I'm seeing so far, I think the zombies are going to win. All right, this is my third day of official building here, and I got my farm set up. I'm going all four canola farms right now because I need a lot more power for what I've planned. If I get things rolling with storage, I would like to maybe take a look at tier 2 power, but that could wait until the fourth way station as well. I spent the day catching worms. This sounds fun, right? Right? 
it's just a hoe, and you got to hoe grass and get worms, and I'm going to need a lot of them. For four farms, I need nine worms per farm, so that's like 36 worms or something. So, yeah, it took a while, but, yeah, I got them all, so no problem, and all good now. Now we're going to have a lot faster canola growing, and that is good for crops. I am so excited about today. It's time to start refined storage, finally. No more chests, no more storage drawers, no more hunting for the right item. It's all going to be right at my fingertips. Also, for moving, I can just grab my 4K drives that I'm going to be making and throw them in my backpack and take off because everything's going to be there. This is why I need the power. This is why I need all that stuff because I want to do auto crafting. I want to do a lot of storage. Oh, man, it's going to be awesome. And it only took about two days, and I have a functional storage system. Amazing. I am so stoked about what the future is going to hold. Now, I just need to power it up, and we're ready to go. Auto crafting day today. I had to go to the nether to get a whole bunch of quartz, and actually, it wasn't quite as bad. Luckily, I sold my fortune pick, so yeah, it went pretty fast, and I got a whole lot of quartz. Refined storage requires a lot of iron and a lot of quartz, so yeah, you can get both of them pretty easily, just, you know, it's a little grindy. I spent a pretty relaxing day outside looking for sand. One thing refined storage needs in addition to the iron and quartz is it needs a lot of glass, so... Yeah, it was actually pretty nice, and it was nice to get out of the wasteland. I found this green biome and just sort of took a walk. It was, it was actually quite nice. on something new fred oh yeah hey it's good to hear your voice also i had kind of a weird experience on my last walk but yeah you first i've been running my 3d printers basically non-stop i'm starting to run out of materials i'm going to use them to print harvesting satellites okay i'm intrigued tell me more do you have any idea how much space junk is floating around around your planet it's a lot since i don't exactly have the means to start a mining operation i can harvest the satellites I assume no one's going to be using them for the next, oh, few centuries. Okay, well, that's a little dark, but okay, go on. I would like to position satellites over Dom's likely route to give you some warning when he might arrive. Also, some supply drops once you reach Harrisburg may be helpful. Oh, wow, supply drops. I never even thought about something like that. That would be incredibly helpful. Do you have any imaging of Harrisburg yet? I do, and it's bleak. Hmm, how do you mean? Many of the buildings still appear to be standing, but the only life I see appear to be zombies. Hmm. Well, that would confirm my working theory that the zombies are trying to win out. But the planet is not totally devoid of human life. During my last walk, I actually met a small little family. That is surprising. I haven't found any signs of humans in my scans at all. Yeah, to make it even weirder, one of them was actually named Fred. I imagine that was confusing. Yeah, I only stayed with them for a few days, so I just had them call me Bob. But then it got even weirder yet. My first night there, another guy found our little village. He was kind of frantic. Talked about having amnesia and insisted I come live with him in his base. He had a base? I don't know. I hopped in his little boat and we went to go see it, but he got lost and got all turned around. And basically, in all of his confusion, he led a giant zombie horde right to the village. What happened to the other people? I'm not sure. The other dude just took off running. I managed to lead the horde away, and last I saw the other people, they were okay heading for the safety of a little hidey hole. I'm glad you're okay, Fred. Me too, buddy. It's good to hear your voice. I'll contact you in a few days. I'm pretty convinced that advanced item lasers just don't work. After messing with it all day, I decided to just give up and make some more regular versions, which actually worked perfectly fine first try. Maybe I have a setting wrong, but I'm fairly convinced. Yeah, it just doesn't work. I did a few other things of note today. I got an empowerer up and ready to go, but honestly, there's nothing I'm actually kind of dying to empower yet. So it's just sitting there. Then I made something that's going to help a lot, this little magnet ring. I can't imagine all the research I've left sitting on the ground because I didn't notice, but yeah, no more. So I spent the rest of the day chopping trees, sucking up the logs with my magnet ring, and enjoying the profits. A couple other things I'd like to make soon is greenhouse glass, again, just to help crops grow faster in probably the next base. 
Um, it takes a lot of saplings to make. You need four saplings for two pieces of glass, and I don't have nearly that many. So I've just been harvesting spruce and then replanting spruce, hoping to get a big, giant surplus. The big news of the day, though, is I found this little spawner, and it's a wither skeleton spawner, of all things. It's really awesome. So I don't really think I need Curse Earth at this particular stop because my Silk Touch didn't help to pick it up. It just broke it and turned it into regular dirt, so blah, and all the time wasted for that. But it would be super nice to have just a whole bunch of Drops of Evil and Wither Skeleton Skulls just sitting around my inventory for when I inevitably do need them. This thing is amazing. I was walking back from the Wither Skeleton Farm today, and I saw my sad excuse for a house. I decided, hey, let's actually work on the building for a few days. I feel like I'm in a good place, technically. I have some nice upgrades for this phase, and I can use a few days to work on just the aesthetics of this little way station. You know, this place isn't like my bunker, where I kind of thought I'd live there forever. This is just going to be a stop along the road. But even so, I will be spending some time here, and also I'll be showing it off to Dom, and um, come on, I'm going to make a good impression on my friend. So yeah, it's worth it. I finished the roof today, and yeah, it's good. I actually feel pretty good about this house. It's very, very simple, but it looks good, and it does the job. Yeah, this is, this is really nice. I decided I would spend the whole day mining, but before I could even get started, well, this happened. Yeah, it wasn't that close in that the monsters almost killed me, but one knocked me back, and I missed falling in lava by about a centimeter. Yeah, I uh, I got a lot of good stuff mining after that, but that was a really close call. There's no way I would have survived if I fell in lava. I worked on auto crafting all day today. Nothing really major, but a little this, a little that. Just keeping an eye out to the next base. I gotta say, things seem to have really changed. I think the war between zombies and parasites is over. I haven't seen a parasite in weeks now, and the zombies are growing in number. How? I have no idea. Do they reproduce? Ew. Do they mate? Ew. I don't know. Either way, there are a lot of zombies around, and I swear they're starting to get faster. Yeah, it's really, really weird. I couldn't sleep last night, and I finally came to a decision. I'm leaving early. I feel good, I have lots of supplies, I'm very anxious to get to Harrisburg and see if Dom is there yet. There's also a bit that I'm not doing a few things because I don't want to bother when I know I'm only going to be here for another week. So, let's just go. I feel healthy, I have food, I, I'm good. Let's just do it. I made the remainder of my eight 4K uh, storage discs, so I'm good. I spent a lot of time chopping down trees and gathering just all the supplies that I can possibly need to build my sort of final way station. But before I did that, I want to do one more building project at this place, which is a little wall. So I just put up a little easy cobblestone wall around, and I'm going to light up the area inside. Thinking if we come back and maybe there's a horde right on us or whatever, then we can duck inside the wall, and it should be, hypothetically, fairly safe. I haven't seen any of those flying parasites in a long time, so I'm going to go with that. This should be secure, I think. It's packing day. Well, or actually just packing morning, I gotta say. It's a lot easier with these 4K discs. I just grabbed everything I had and just threw it in. Done. The only thing that's going to be a little bit tricky is just making sure I have some power reserve for when I get there because all my stuff is going to be set up. It would be really unfortunate if I didn't think of that step ahead of time. I found the spot. This is by far the furthest I've walked. Combat me out a route to keep me away from most of the major hordes, but is very roundabout. I was close to running out of supplies when I found a small village. There were actually people here. It was close to night and I didn't have time to talk. I threw up my storage system and made a bed quickly before nighttime. I built my first little room. 
There's a tower on an island just beside the village, and I decided that would be a great place for a base. This should be big enough to house my supplies, my storage, my crafting, and all the machines I'm going to need. I need to get my farms up and running soon, but for right now, after a stressful journey, I am happy to have walls and a roof over my head. Inside the tower, there is a staircase going down. I went down to check it out, and it's some sort of weird medieval-looking bunker. I might check that out later, but it's quite dark, and I'm not crazy about the dark these days. Also, honestly, after more than half a year in my bunker, yeah, I'm not too fond of bunkers either. I got my three farms laid out. I know I had four last time, but I'm planning on using greenhouse glass on this one, so I should need less. The only reasonable place to put them is actually across the bridge to the next island mountain area. It's here. It's not ideal, but I think the defensibility against the hordes is worth it. The hordes are getting big and fast. Yeah, I need to keep that in mind while I'm building. I spent the entire day setting up auto crafting. I don't need anything right away, but I'm happy to be able to add to it sort of as I go. This is really good. I would have just been packing at my old base now, and I'm already here, safe, and about half set up. This is solid progress. I need two things very badly. I need ender pearls and gunpowder. I don't wait any longer to get this set up. Thanks to the wither skeleton spawner at the last base, I have plenty of drops of evil, so I just need to build the killing mechanism to get the drops. I carved out a small room under the base, and I have a new idea to actually kill the monsters. I got it working. This is fantastic. The only thing I can't find is my range collector. I wonder if I left it at the old base. I don't know. That's really a drag because I need two ender pearls to make another one. And of course, I can't seem to get any of those. But I have a new machine. It's called a mob grinder, and this should work fine eventually. I think this will get me a lot more ender pearls than my old system for sure. The other thing is now that I am at sort of the final way station here, I really want to work on my power. First, something I already did, the worms. I got to hoe up more worms and then place them in my fields to speed up my canola production. After placing the worms, I started working on my range collector. After a little bit of waiting, I got the two ender pearls that I need and can get the storage automated soon. I spent the rest of the day working on these item relays and again, no luck today. Man, these lighter and laser uh, relay things, they are, they are problematic. After messing with the item laser relays again for an entire day, I finally got it. The thing I was missing was I need a blank blacklist on the range collector. And actually, the block clearly states that. I just can't seem to read instructions. Whatever, this is fine. I got it, and shortly I should be swimming in gunpowder and hopefully ender pearls. Things are looking up. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Oh, yes. It's been a long time, but yeah, hey, zombies, come at me, bro. How was the trip? Uneventful, mostly. Freaking zombies everywhere, but I'm learning how to deal with them. In fact, I may have just made a big upgrade in how to deal with them. Good. Base coming along? It's starting to. Every base I have more tech to set up, but I suppose that's a good thing. It will be so helpful to have all this stuff ready for on our way back. No sign of Dom yet. I have more satellites flying over his area, but as of yet, nothing. I'm starting to get worried, Cal. I hope this whole trip wasn't in vain. He seems like a resourceful person. He made it through the apocalypse, after all. Yeah, probably. At any rate, it's too late to turn back now. I'm going to stay here for a couple weeks and then make the final push. Good luck. Thanks, Cal. I'll call you on the way to Harrisburg. Everything so far has been leading to arriving in Harrisburg. Surviving in nature, that's one thing. Zombies might come at you from time to time, but they're generally so sparse it really isn't a thing. But man, a city full of people who've likely been turned or infected, 
I'm going to need major protection and experience to live. Target practice on animals living near my area is one thing, but yeah, it's time to head down these dungeons and get some real hands-on experience with my new weapon. Hopefully, this will be good training for invading the actual city. I feel much more prepared now, but fun and games aside, it's time to get that greenhouse glass going. First thing, I need a ton of saplings, a 486 total. I don't have that many. So to get as many as I can, I grabbed all the spruce I could, and I just planted everywhere, and now I've been just reharvesting it again, hoping a giant surplus. I feel like I did this already once, but yeah, well, gotta do it again. Next thing, I really need a ton of sand. Luckily, there's actually a desert that I passed through not too far, so I could actually just make a small trip over and just completely fill up both an inventory and a uh, diamond backpack full of sand. Yeah, so pretty easy. It's just going to take a while to smelt all this. I figured it would be an easier thing to set up glass as a auto craft recipe, so I did that, and I ordered a 1,000, and that's going to take a while. So in the meantime, I started work on actually putting up the sort of roof of the farms. The idea is there's still going to be open air, but I'm going to set up a framework to put glass up on top of it. This greenhouse glass, to my knowledge, is really amazing. Like, I don't even know if I'm going to need three canola farms with how just incredibly effective it is. I've got to remember this for the future, kind of go hard and get this rolling soon. Assuming I have Silk Touch, I could have moved it and actually probably dealt with really maybe even only one 9x9 farm. That would have been nice. Another thing I need to make this glass is I need Empowered Palace, and to get that I need Prismarine. It's actually just quartz that's been lasered and cyan dye. Not terrible to get. Time for a desert run for cactus. Oh, cool. I have some quartz, but I don't have tons. I'm going to need to address that soon in the future. But I set my power up on the roof of my base, just the nearest place I had enough space. And yeah, that's fine. I get to look at the look at the sun and the moon whenever I'm crafting. That's, that's fun. I spent an entire day trying to figure out why the Empowered Palace recipe won't work. I was so frustrated. After smashing my head against the wall, I realized I don't need five display stands. It's supposed to be four display stands. Encircling one Empower which is made with a display stand and a few other things. Yeah, again, written clearly in the book, I just can't read it because I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Hey, fun fact, if you read the instructions, everything seems to work out fine. I need to remember that next time I go to Ikea. I mean, when Ikea starts to exist again, if it's not overrun with zombies. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. It actually took two full days of crafting just to get enough greenhouse glass for one of my three crop fields. It's okay, I don't mind the grind, but we may not finish all three before it's time to make that final push. But really, truly, any glass is better than no glass, so that's cool. This is going to be a huge upgrade for me. In preparations for upgrading my power finally, I need to spend a full day crafting just to get enough components to upgrade my power setup. I want to go straight from tier 2, which is where I currently am, right to tier 5. I am mostly out of power at the base, and I'm kind of over that, to be honest. So it's more than time. I started setting up the upgraded seeds today. The idea is I'll take my extra seeds from my canola farms, drop them in refined canola oil, and then that will convert to crystallized canola oil. I can use a fluid machine to pull out the refined canola oil and use that in my oil generator. It's a big boost in RF production, so it's going to be a good thing. It's a complicated setup, though, and I have a feeling this is going to take me some days to work out. I feel like I'm getting closer here, but yeah, this is a real pain to work out. Just a lot of moving parts to this build. Every time I think I'm onto it, something else sort of breaks. Yeah, we'll get there in time, but yeah, another day I spent working on this whole Tier 5 oil production. Okay, I finally got it. Let's talk it through once. Canola beans go into a hopper leading to a canola press. That feeds directly into a canola oil fermenter, which drops into a regular oil furnace. That's the first part and what I've been using to provide startup power. Then, with the extra seeds I'm getting from my farmers, the seeds are dropped into canola oil, which is placed in the world by a fluid placer. With a small redstone circuit, each thing fires one time in cycle. The fluid placer places canola oil. The precision dropper drops crystallized seed into it. Then a fluid collector picks up the new crystallized oil and using a fluid laser, puts it in a new second generator. To get the crystallized seeds, I have another small redstone circuit that will drop a regular canola seed, then file the atomic reconstructor at it, transforming it from regular seed to a crystallized version. Well, I got it all worked out. Now I need to go one step further to get the highest tier. 
Yeah, I knew this day was coming. I'm just about out of quartz. I've been using it so frequently for the refined storage system. And then also, on top of that, I need to use it to make prismarine. So, yeah, time to go to the nether and just spend a good solid day farming quartz. I began the process of actually moving the city today. I know it's still a week off, but first thing and most important thing that I need is I need transportation. I don't want to be in the city on foot if there's a huge horde waiting for me. So today I spent building the infrastructure for Fuelium. See, out here in nature, the hordes are sort of few and far between. It's mostly straggler zombies that I need to deal with. Not a big deal. But going to a place where several million people used to live? Yeah, that's a lot scarier. So I, I want to have a car. That's kind of where we're headed. I want to have a car. I want to have something that I can jump in and get out of Dodge fast if things turn south. I can't believe this. I'm out of power again. I don't know what's causing it. Well, I'm, I'm converting my regular furnace to a crystallized oil. I shouldn't need the regular anymore. For crying out loud, I'm leaving in a few days. I don't want to deal with this anymore. I have most of what I need to make my car. There are cheaper options, but if I want to get Dama and bring him home, that requires two seats, as well as any stuff he and I will be carrying. I took a quick look around the base, and yeah, even with my 4K drives, I'll be carrying quite a bit of stuff. I'm going to need some storage room in my car. The biggest issue I have with only a few days left is iron. I need a ton of it. And I gotta head down to the mines and really come up big here. I spent most of the day just crafting my Jeep and doubling my iron. I have enough supplies, I'm ready to go. I really hope I have enough fuelium though made before it's time to get there and at least get out of town. I don't need to drive the whole way home, but yeah, again, I'm just looking for emergencies here. I'm going to be happy either way to not be on foot for at least a few miles. I filled two jerry cans with enough fuelium that I think I'm going to be able to get to the city and at least get partially back. I don't know what to expect in Harrisburg, though. Will the city be thriving? Cal says he can't detect any humans, but that doesn't mean they're not underground or hidden in their buildings. I don't know. Everything's an unknown. I've gotten used to this nature after about 100 days out here, and I kind of... M1 with it, but once I get to the city, this is uncharted territory for me. I need to be completely prepared. I hope these last 300 days I've lived since the apocalypse have prepared me for what is about to go down. I spent the entire day packing up my things. With any luck, it won't be too long before I'm back here, headed back towards my bunker. I won't lie, though, I have some fears. What if I get there and Dom doesn't make it? Heck, what if he made it already and left? What if everything I've done... Everything I've done for the last 100 days is just for nothing. In the end, though, I need to keep my wits about me and keep my spirits high. I need to pack my things and get a good night of rest. Tomorrow, I drive the last leg of the trip. Fred. I found him. At least, I assume it's him. A single human making his way from Philadelphia, west towards you. Cal, that's fantastic. How far out? At his current speed, probably a couple days. That's amazing. You know, this took me so long, I thought maybe he'd beat us here. He appears to be moving extremely cautiously. There are far more zombies east of you, though, though they seem to be moving closer. Okay, I'll keep an eye out. Hey, when you get the supply drops ready, send them to Dom. To Dom? Yeah, look, I came all this way to find my friend. I would like to find him alive. Sounds good. I'll include a map to your exact location once you get your new base settled. Okay, hey, hold on a second, Cal. I, I can't handle the song. I gotta change the CD track. Oh, oh, no, no! <laughs> Fred? Are you there? Fred? Ugh. Ugh. Is he?
he still out? Yeah, looks like. He'll have a hell of a headache when he wakes up. Yeah, but he should be happy he's still alive. He won't be too happy when he sees we took all his stuff. Eh, he didn't need all that anyway. Possibly happy to have some resupplies. of this six hour long mega movie that I put together for y'all. What I want you to do with no context at all, go down in the comments, even if you already left a comment, which if you did, thank you, but leave another comment with your favorite cartoon ever. No context, don't explain it. I want to confuse the people who didn't make it to the very end and I want to see how many of you got here. The number one question that I get still to this day in comments is where is the next part of Wasteland Road Trip? Because I did leave it on, well, let's say a bit of a cliffhanger. It's true. That is continued in the big mega movie that I just released some weeks ago called 100 Days I Caused the Apocalypse. That will be linked in the description of this video. Very first line. You can just click on it. Boom, right there. It's like a four hour long movie. And at the very end, it explains what happened to Fred. Don't just skip to the end though. Do me a favor. Watch the whole thing. I need it. Also, secondly, what happens after this? After this is the hardcore series. That is tied into canon in this series. If you want to figure out what is going on with that, I have one more smaller mega movie to release that sets up the hardcore series. You can jump straight into that and find out where the story is now. I'm working on 1900 days as we speak. It's going to be huge. I will see you all next time. Thanks so much for spending six hours of your day with me today, and I'll see you in the next one.